Hey you guys how are you so today video aim 300 like what if Naruto was lied with Daidera hurt for him movie. It was sunny in Konoha, kids were out playing, Genins were out doing D rank missions. Everybody in Konoha's 12, minus Sasuke, was doing their usual thing. Shikamaru is staring at the clouds, Ino is working at her family's flower shop, Sakura is doing voluntary work at the hospital, Choji is eating at an unknown restaurant, Tenten is practicing at the training ground with Neji and Lee. Kiba is playing with his now large dog Akamaru. Shino is out categorizing bugs. Sai is reading a book about comforting others. And Naruto is eating a couple bowls of ramen from his favorite restaurant while being stalked by Hinata. It has been three weeks since Team 7 saw Sasuke and everybody was just relaxing for a while. Well Hinata was worried for Naruto while he is worried about Sakura while everybody is worried about both Sakura and Naruto. In the Hokages everything was going the same as usual, the desk was pilled high with papers, the fifth Hokage was writing like a demo, she was trying her best to make the ever so growing piles of paperwork so it was literally flying everywhere. Tsunade was just minute away to ripping her own hair off. Where the hell do all these papers keep coming from? She yelled making both Shizun and her pet pig, Tauntin to jump, up to Shizun's arms for comfort, ah damn it. She yelled as she crumpled a piece of paper and threw it. As the last paper was signed she sighed finally, I need drink. Lady Tsunade you can't. Yelled Shizun at Tsunade, it was regular thing with them, we still have that meeting with have to attend to later. Oh relax Shizun said Tsunade waving her hand and messaging her temples one bottle want hurt as soon as she finished a knock was heard at the door, huh, come in. It was the same decipherer who gave her the bad news about Tsuna being attacked by Akatsuki, Eureka. Lady Hokage. She said as she rushed to the fifth Hokage's desk with a worried look on her face you're going to want to see this she said with a very worried expression. Tsunade took the paper and read it, when she was halfway through the paper she now understood why Eureka was worried, who wouldn't be? All she could hope for was that Danzo hadn't found out about the message and that she can keep it from the council long enough for her to make a decision on where they were going to place their new special Kunoichi. After that, keep her out of Danzo's hands. What is it Tsunade-sama? Asked Shizun seeing Tsunade's troubled look. It seems Takigakure wants to strengthen their alliance with us she said with a calculative look on her face. She then resumed reading and her worried expression grew even more. Damn it then that mean we have to go get her. Wait could this mean that she became a missing nin or that she's aggressive? Damn it. This really complicates things. She thought in her head as her worried expression started to turn into an angry one. Tsunade-sama, said Shizun with a worried look on her face accompanied by the decipherer's face and tauntins as the little pig let out a worried oink. Cat, puppy, sparrow, yelled the fifth Hokage and just as quickly three Anbu agents appeared. Yes Hokage-sama. They all replied in sync, I want you three to gather all of the Konoha eleven right away, oh and Sai, now. Right away Hokage-sama, they disappeared just as fast as when they appeared. Streets of Konoha man that was great dadbeo, Naruto said as he was currently heading to the training grounds to work on his Rasengan, after all he won't be beat by Sasuke, so he figured he would might as well learn how to do the Rasengan with one hand. Naruto Uzumaki said an Anbu agent with the puppy mask, who suddenly appeared in front of him. Ah yes? Hokage-sama has requested your presence immediately, he said before he disappeared. This can't be good thought Naruto has started sprinting off to the fifth Hokage's office. Hokage office Naruto came in bursting into Tsunade's office, I am here Granny Tsunade, he announced catching his breath. Damn it brat! I told you not to call me that! yelled the angered fifth Hokage at Naruto. Naruto looked up to see that everybody was in the room, by everybody I mean Shikamaru, Ino, Choji, Hanada, Kiba, Shino, Tenten, Lee, Ni, and Sakura was in the room. Oh and Sai even though he is not considered one of Konoha's eleven. What an idiot said Shikamaru, well it is Naruto said Ino. Hey! yelled Naruto pointing an accusing figure at them what's that supposed to mean? Earning some chuckles from the rest of the teens except Sai who just fake smiled. All right now that you're all here, I can finally give you guys your mission. Huh, mission? Asked Naruto, as everyone in the room directed their attention to Tsunade with interest. Yes, it's a retrieval mission. Sakura expression brightened a bit are we finally going after Sasuke? 
asked Sakura with a glimmer of hope in her eyes along with Ino's. No. Um Miss Hokage what exactly is our mission? asked Neji. I am glad you asked that Neji. Earlier today we received a message from Takigakure she began but was cut off by Naruto. Taki, isn't that the village Shibuki runs? Yes that is correct and they want to strengthen their alliance with us. How are going to do that? asked Tenten. I was getting to that she said with a hint of venom in her voice. He he sorry said Tenten as she rubbed the back of head. Anyway they have already done it, after saying this she received a lot of ha from everyone as well as confused faces. Taki has given us their special ninja she said, and our mission is to escort that ninja here, correct? asked Shino. Tsunade nodded that's correct where can we find this ninja? asked Shikamaru. This report says that their shinobi is in a village near the border of the land of lighting. Troublesome replied Shikamaru, all right. All of you get ready because you leave in one hour with that said everyone started leaving, but before anybody got to the door Tsunade said a couple of lines that no one would believe. Naruto I need you stay, huh? Naruto, you have to stay, just for now. Ah, uh, what for? Naruto I am going to give you valuable information so that you can personally bring that person here and feel free to do whatever you feel it would take to get person comfortable to come here. Whoa. What's with Naruto all of the sudden I mean wouldn't it make much, much more sense to give that responsibility to Shikamaru or Shino asked Kiba. Hey what that's supposed to mean? Yelled Nordo at Kiba expecting an answer but he was sadly ignored. In all sense yes, but that's not the case replied Tsunade, earning questioning looks from everyone, well except Sai because he just fake smiled, I would have had Naruto go with Yamato or Kakashi, but they're not available at the moment, so that's why I am sending all of you. So this ninja must be very strong concluded Shikamaru. Tsunade only nodded but what makes Naruto so important for this? Sorry I can't exactly tell you that, not yet at least, now you're all excused, you may leave. Now everybody started leaving when Sai spoke up. Um excuse me Hokage-sama but may I ask one question before we leave? Sure, what is it? What exactly does the ninja look like? Tsunade, after hearing this felt like hitting her head, she was about to send them on a retrieval mission without them knowing what their objective looks like. Right I forgot to tell you that, my bad, let's see, hum all it says here is that that person is about 6 feet tall, has shoulder length, mint green hair, has orange eyes and she has a dark skin tone. Wait sorry I thought you said she asked Kiba rising an eyebrow. Yes that's right I did and her name is Fu she replied. You mean we're going through all this trouble just for a girl? yelled Kiba while some people gave their respective opinion like Shikamaru said troublesome. Yes. What's wrong with that? asked Tsunade as she and every Kanoichi in the room started staring at Kiba with snake eyes and a dark sweet smile. Nothing, I just hope she good looking replied Kiba in a meekly manner. Alright now all of you leave I need to talk to Naruto and Naruto only. Yes Mame and yes Hokage-sama was said by the group and they complied with the fifth's order. When the room only contained Tsunade, Shizun, and Naruto the talk continued. Um Granny Tsunade what's so important that only I should know about Fu? Naruto said began the fifth Hokage she's like you. Like like me? At first Naruto didn't get it but when he finally did, his eyes widen you mean she is a? Yes, she is a Jinchuriki just like you, so that's why you want me to bring here personally, because I kinda understand how bad her life was, right? Tsunade nodded in confirmation. Yes that's right, when you see her give her this she said, handing Naruto a sheet of paper. But I thought began Naruto, him you thought? I thought Taki's Jinchuriki was already taken. Huh? Who the hell told you that? Ah one of the Akasuki bastards I beat while trying to save Gara. he said meekly, I got a feeling that what the blonde weirdo with mouth on his hands lied to me thought Naruto. Somewhere on the road Daidera sneezed. Huh someone must have called me a weirdo thought Daidera, hey, Toby he called. Huh? Daidera senpei is talking to me, he yelled while jumping up and down, Daidera let a sweat drop from the back of his head before he gave a mischievous smile. Toby you want to help me out right? Yes, anything Daidera senpei. Toby is a good boy. Alright then, Toby, you'll be my stress reliever said Daidera while putting his hands in his explosive clay pouch. E.H. How would that work? Simple. I blow you up. Okay, D I E D A R A Sempe. Wait, what? Boom. 
Tsunade sighed Naruto, that was probably just a way to get you off your game. I feel really stupid right now said Naruto hanging his head low. You should, but you can make it up by bringing Fu here. Naruto smiled okay. You count on me Dadbeo, he said it while giving her a toothy smile, but I have to ask, do you know which biju, tailed beast, she have sealed inside her? Yes, she has the seven-tailed rhinoceros beetle sealed inside her, Naruto, be very, very careful when you approach her. How what do you mean? I want you to very careful with her Naruto, we don't know what her biju passive ability is yet. Ah, biju passive ability. Yes the ability she has for having a biju sealed inside her. Wait does that mean I have special ability for having damn fox inside me? Yes, wait, what do you mean, don't tell me you haven't noticed. Noticed what? Your biju power. What biju power? Tsunade got really irritated and decided to hit Naruto on the head. Ow my head. What was that for you old bat? She hit him again. Ow. Naruto, don't tell us you haven't noticed your regenerative abilities yet said Shizun trying to end the fight before it got out of hand. Huh, oh I noticed that I just thought everyone like me was a quick healer. No Naruto, as far as we can tell no other Jinchuriki has that ability said the fifth Hokage. I get it, so what biju power that she have? A tick mark just appeared on Tsunade's head and a shadow covering her face, didn't I just tell you that, we didn't know. Gia, s sorry I forgot, please don't hit me, yelled Naruto covering his face in defense. Tsunade sighed and started messaging her temples with her right hand just get ready and go and be at the gates in one hour. Naruto recovered and said yeah sure thing, as he was moving out. Oh and Naruto huh, what is it? Try to make sure no one finds out that she's like you, especially Sai. Naruto understood right away, he nodded him. You can count on me Granny Tsunade, he yelled as he ran out of her office. D-A-N-M brat, I told you not to call me that, she yelled but Naruto was long gone. Hell never change will he Shizun? No replied Shizun, but she began, him, said Tsunade directing her attention at Shizun. I kind of hope he doesn't change. He has changed so many lives by just being himself she finished. You know, me too agreed Tsunade, one hour later everyone was at Kanova's gate. Man where's Naruto at? Asked Kiba, classic Naruto, he's always late said Sakura. Hey guys. Everyone turned to see Naruto sprinting towards them. Sorry I am late guys I he he said Naruto, Naruto it is very unyouthful to keep people waiting, said Lee. Ah Lee can you please not do that? asked Tenten politely. Lee it's not my fault. Granny Tsunade kept in her office, remember? Yeah but it doesn't necessarily take an hour to get ready stated Shikamaru. I concur agreed Shino, good you're all here, they all turned around to see Tsunade and Shizun. Remember your mission is to bring Fu here as comfortable as possible, not hurt her, got it? Yes Mame. They all yelled in unison. Remember this target is very dangerous, so I want you to be in high alert. Yes ma'am. Well bring back Fu before you know it. Just you wait Granny Tsunade. He said in his nice guy pose, let's go he yelled as he started running down the road. Lee, noticing this, decided immediately that he would follow in Naruto's footsteps, huh? I won't be beat by your youthfulness, Naruto. Let's go Neji, Tenten. He yelled while grabbing both of his teammates from their arms and started running to catch up to Naruto. Lee, stop protested Tenten as she was struggling to free herself from Lee's grasp. Lee yelled Neji as he also tried to resist, escape Lee's grasp. Those idiots, they don't even know what village we're heading to said Shikamaru. Right, be sure you get them to the right village, Shikamaru said Tsunade. Will do was his reply, well, what are all of you still doing here? Huh they all asked, this is what you get for running ahead of us without knowing where you're going. Sakura yelled as she continued to slap Naruto side to side, when she was done there was smoke coming out of Naruto's cheeks. Lee approached Sakura while she dropped Naruto on the ground Ah Sakura, don't you think you went a little too Lee never got to finish his question as Sakura grabbed his face and slapped him really hard that he ended up bouncing to where Naruto was and, almost like Naruto, Lee had smoke coming of his right cheek and only his right cheek. And you could have stopped him, okay forehead that's enough don't you think? Ino asked politely. 
Sakura looked at the boys with smoking cheeks then let out a sigh yeah I guess you're right, Eno Pig. As sparks were flying between them, Tenton decided it was best to end a fight before started, come on, let's not fight, we still have a long ways to go to get anywhere near the border of the land of lighting. Shikamaru sighed troublesome but true, oi, Naruto, Lee get up we got to go. A couple of seconds passed and the only thing that happened was that the smoke from their cheeks stopped. Na Naruto, are you Al alright? Hinata asked in her usual shy way. I think you hit them way too hard said Kiba, Sakura sighed give me a second. Minutes later somewhere near the border, in the land of rice patties, the group was making their way to their destination. First was Shikamaru, Ino, and Shoji. Next was Shino, Sai, Kiba and Akamaru. Kiba is ridding Akamaru. Next was Sakura, Naruto, and Lee. Lastly was Hinata. Looks at Naruto then looks away with a blush on her face. Neji and Tenten. They were in the back because they were exhausted so they couldn't keep up the pace as the others. Sakura that really hurt whined Naruto, it's your damn fault for running off like that replied Sakura with her arms crossed. But but why me, I was doing the most youthful thing I could do, asked Lee whilst he was still rubbing his cheek. You could have stopped him, sheesh you're both idiots. Sakura. Both Lee and Naruto whined, Naruto sighed. He couldn't get Sakura to apologize to him. Foo he thought in his head I wonder what kind of person she is. I hope she's not violent because that would make things harder. I should probably think more about this mission when we get to, when we get to two. That's when it hit Naruto crap. I don't know where we're going. Okay don't panic no one knows that you don't know. Just simply ask for the name of the meeting point. That should be enough right? Hey, Shikamaru. Shikamaru turned his head slightly and said what? What's the name of the village we're heading to again? Shikamaru stared at him for a moment before he looked away tch. You have no idea where we're heading to, do you? Naruto nearly fell when he heard Shikamaru's reply, that obvious Naruto asked himself. Ask someone else, what? Why? It's too troublesome for me to repeat something. ARRRG, fine. Hey Kiba do you know where we're going? Ask someone else, what why, I just don't feel like telling you. I bet it's because you don't know, declared Naruto, Kiba just scoffed. Please, I know where we're going, alright then, where are we going? If it will get you stop then it'll tell you, we're heading to, to, god damn it, Naruto. You made me forget where we're going. What, that was all you, you made me forget. A vein started appearing on Shikamaru's forehead, for the love of hey. Shikamaru yelled at Naruto and Kiba. His unusual yelling got everyone to stop moving, we're heading to Kosapur village. Right now we're heading to the northern coast in the land of rice paddies to catch a boat that is leaving tomorrow at 6 o'clock sharp to Kosapur village which also happens to be a port on the border of the land of lighting and frost, we would be at least halfway to the coast by now if two people didn't make us go halfway to Suna, man that was really troublesome. Heh <laughs> sorry, such a drag, anyway continued Shikamaru I can guess that most of us are tired, Tenten and Neji both nodded at this, and so we're going to have to stop at some inn, tomorrow we're going to have to be running to the coast to catch our boat or else we're going to have to wait 4 days for the next one he said as he continued walking, everybody started to do the same, and we have to go through all that trouble just to get this girl, man why couldn't we have met this girl here in the land of rice patties asked Kiba, hey Naruto, you must know why we have to meet this girl in the land of lighting right? Asked Sai in the most polite manner and a weird fake smile on his face. I must know why, so that I can report this to Danzo, that Kanoichi must be very important if Taki I willing to trade her for alliance, it could be a Keke Genke but I don't recall Taki being home to any. Jinshuriki is out of the question because then they would only have the hero's water to protect themselves, it could be that Fu is related Otto someone important in Taki in which case she may be a little to no use for Danzo, or maybe I should nt bother at all thought Sai. Huh? replied Naruto how would know that? Oh yeah that's right, Tsunade told you something important so you must know why said Ino. Naruto stopped suddenly with his head down, everyone quickly caught on to this, she only told me one thing, I have a pretty good guess on why we have to go all the way, I just hope that's not it. So what did she tell you? asked Tenten. Sorry I can't tell you guys said Naruto as he picked his head up and smiled, it's something very personal to her life, if I tell you guys what it is then I think all of you guys, especially Sai, would be worried. Huh, why would we be worried? 
Choji asked as he took out a bag of barbecue-flavored potato chips. Because I am worried, Naruto, worried? That's not good. I think the world is going to end said Tenten as she started to look around. Huh? What's wrong me being worried? Naruto, you tend to rush into thing without a single care in the world said Shino. Naruto you don't complain about a mission because it's hard. You only complain about getting a low class mission. You've never been worried about a mission until it got to the bad part explained Neji. Hey guys it's Naruto we're talking about said Sakura. He could be getting us a stressed for nothing. She's right said Shikamaru. Naruto is the most troublesome person I know. The next words that came out of Naruto's mouth surprised everyone you're probably right. Shikamaru. I guess I might be putting everyone on edge for something that may not be such a big deal. Naruto agreeing to an insult about himself, I think Tenten is right. The world is going to end ha 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 joked around Kiba. Hey. A couple of minutes later the group came to a village. Great, now we can start looking for an inn said Shikamaru in his usual unmotivated voice. That might be a problem to us money wise said Sai. Don't worry about it, Naruto got it covered said Shikamaru. I do. Yep you're going to find us a cheap inn, what, why? Because it's your fault that we're tired and behind schedule. The sun is setting. We can just run to the next village. Again Naruto, we're tired, um Shikamaru, do you think it's a good idea to leave the inn picking to Naruto asked Ino. Yeah, why? You're joking right? You seriously want Naruto to pick an inn? Yeah, what's the big deal? The world really is ending if you can't think straight. Naruto would probably pick an inn that was made for ramen addicts. Your point? My point yelled a white-eyed Ino, waving her arms up and down frantically. We probably won't be able to sleep at night with all the sounds of slurping going on, and I need my beauty sleep. Man, you're so troublesome, fine why don't you do it? Do what? Search for a cheap inn. Um hello we can just pick any inn and make Naruto pay for it. Hey, I won't agree to that yelled Naruto and we can't make him, the Hokage gave us more than enough money for the mission and with Naruto picking the stops and when we go home, we should probably try to use as little as possible just in case something happens along road. Oh, okay then, why don't you find us a cheap inn? 1, it's a drag, 2, it's very troublesome, and 3, it's too much work and so tiring. So basically you're too lazy to do it clarified Sai. Hey come on let's just make Naruto do it said Choji. Wait Choji. Why are you agreeing with Shikamaru asked Tenten. Because Choji is thinking on his stomach yelled Ino, pointing a finger at Choji he wants Naruto to pick it because it would probably have a lot of noodles. Hey this argument isn't getting us anywhere said Sakura but she was ignored, pretty soon it turned into a full blown argument. Normally Naruto would be involved in the argument but seeing as they ignored him most of the time throughout the argument. He thought it would be best to just look for a cheap inn. The argument seemed to be leaning towards Naruto doing it anyway. As Naruto walked the streets he took notes of the village itself. Everything looked so familiar, he suddenly spotted a man he automatically recognized. It was Hanzaki, the man who took charge of the Fuma clan in the land of rice paddies. By the looks of it, the man hasn't changed a bit, at the moment he seemed to be talking to girl he looked very familiar to Naruto. She was about Sakura's height maybe even taller has orange-brown hair that passed her waist, has well-developed breast, she is wearing a purple jacket that seems to be a bit tight and light purple pants, she was wearing a black beanie that Naruto guessed had a couple of holes cut in on purpose she has a ponytail going up before it arches down, after a moment of thinking he finally realized that the girl Hanzaki was talking to was Sasama. His teammates were probably still arguing so he decided that he could go say hi. Hey Sasama yelled Naruto as he started to run to the Fumaduo while waving his hand at them. Sasama and Hanzaki turned their head to see who was calling Sasama. Naruto? Sasama asked herself with a confused look on her face, and then she brightened up with a cheery smile on her face Naruto she called out happily. Hey, how have you guys been? Good, how about you? Asked Hanzaki with a smile on his face. Good replied Naruto, wow. You've really grown said Sasama. Yeah I can say the same about you, I mean look at you said Naruto which made Sasama blush. So are you visiting or passing through? Sasama asked trying to change the subject. Passing, right now I am looking for an inn while all of my teammates are arguing. Arguing, about what? 
whether or not to send me to look for a cheap inn this made both Fuma members sweat drop. Hey Naruto, how many is in your group? asked Hanzaki. Including me, 1212. What mission are you guys doing that you need 12 people to do? asked Sasama with an eyebrow raised. Sorry I can't tell you exactly why, you see we supposed to escort a shinobi to Konoha because Taki gave her to us, but she may be angry about that and I was given a little fact that others don't know about that has me worried, you see this little fact explains it all, the shinobi we're going to escort may want to attack us and this little fact tells me that she is really strong. I see said Hanzaki Naruto if you want, you and your friends could stay the night at our clan compound. Really? Yeah, sure. You and your sensei helped us out a lot said Sasama, and, our clan is being restored to its former glory, little by little though. That's good to hear but, are you sure? I am not gonna lie, we may be more trouble than you bargained for. It's fine, I assure you said Hanzaki, really? Thanks. You're welcome, go ahead and tell your friends while I get everything set up said Hanzaki with a smile on his face. Alright see you later and thanks again said Uruto as he started making his way back to his teammates. Hey wait up! Sasama yelled as she ran to catch up to Naruto. They talked on the way back to Naruto's teammates. Naruto told her about his adventure with the pervy sage. Sasama told him about how the Fuma clan became the protector of the village and how they raided some more of Orochimaru's bases and saved people before they could be used for his experiments and that's how we got away from that trap. That sounds really cool. Sai I wish me and Pervy Sage had more adventures like that, we mostly had to run away from the girls he peeped on, hey, there they are, they made to the group but they were still argument. They're still arguing? It was more of a statement than a question still this made Sasama sweat drop. Yep, hey, guys, Naruto yelled getting their attention, what really caught their attention was the girl standing next to Naruto waving her hand. Hey Naruto who's the babe? asked Kiba earning a blush from the girl. Sasama is that you Sakura asked, yep, wow, you've really grown. That's what I said added in Naruto, everyone this I Sasame, Sasama this is everyone. Hello greeted Sasama as she was greeted back by everyone who gave a proper introduction of themselves then what Naruto did, Naruto then explained how bumped into her and she allowed them to stay at her place for the night. Hey there you guys are everyone turned their heads to see Hanzaki walking towards them, so this is the group, all right follow me to compound. Wow, you're really letting us stay, thanks said Eno. You really don't have to this said Tenten, oh it's quite fine, assure you said Hanzaki leading the group. Really it is reassured Sasama but, what's with that guy Sasama pointed to Sai who turned to her direction hearing his name being called and flashed her his fake creepy smile that made just about everybody sweat drop and slightly edge away from him. Oh Sai, we don't know, it's like he was programmed without emotions said Eno. Without emotions? How is that possible? Who knows said Eno, but, he's real cutie just waiting for me to sink my claws into she said while making some cat-like gestures. I see that said Sasama said laying off a sweat drop while smiling. Here we are said Hanzaki as they stopped in large old Fajian, one story, Japanese mansion. Wow it looks cool. Yeah it does said Sakura while Tenten and Lee nodded in agreement nodded. Kiba was about to open his mouth to say how his clan's compound was so much better when both Hinata and Shino stopped him but were thinking around the same line. He he thanks said Sasama. Hanzaki guided the group to the room where they will be staying at for the night. This is where you will be staying at said Hanzaki as he opened the shoji door letting them in. Thanks again Hanzaki, it's not a problem Naruto, really said Sasama, you guys must be hungry, right? I'll get the kitchen to whip something up. Gee thanks, we're starved right, Akamaru said Kiba and Akamaru barked in agreement. Oh yeah about that. Sorry your dog has to sleep in the courtyard hearing this made Akamaru whimper. Hey it's okay buddy, he'll sleep with you outside tonight said Kiba to comfort his best friend. Asasama, right? Would you mind if took a look around? Asked Neji really interested to see the Majin. Not at all, follow me and he'll give you a tour Sasama left with Neji along with Kiba and Akamaru who went outside to look for a good sleeping spot. And you were worried about Naruit picking the spot we crashed and said Shikamaru already getting comfortable to sleep why couldn't you be less troublesome? Hey I didn't know Naruto Sakura knew anyone from here you know countered but you have point though. Um Naruto. 
Sai said getting Naruto's attention who was currently counting his the money in his wallet. Yeah Sai, I have question, when you said that we would be worried, why would I be worried more? Naruto chuckled sorry I kinda said the wrong thing, what I meant to say was that I would be really worried about you guys. And more worried about me, why? Naruto gave him a strange look before he thought for a moment to come up with a way of saying something nicely, Sai you're not exactly. Not exactly, repeated Sai trying to squeeze an answer from Naruto. You're not exactly a people person Naruto said while sweat was trickling down his face. I am a people person, I know 48 physical methods of torturing someone for information in 4 ways psychologically. Want me to demonstrate? Sai said rather quickly and getting close to Naruto's face. No, that's okay maybe, another time but that's not what I meant Naruto took a step back, what I meant was that you're not, discreet said Naruto putting git in a good way. The last thing he wanted was Sai as an enemy or worst, Sai asking him about how relationships work. Discreet. What he is trying to say is that you suck when it comes to talking to people and you make them mad said Shikamaru trying to get, get Naruto stop already. Gia, Shikamaru either sleep or fully pretend to be asleep or ill. Or you'll what challenge Shikamaru, or ill pull a prank you. Shikamaru's eyes widen as he tried to move his eyes in Naruto's direction to see if he was doing something or thinking a possible way to prank him but he didn't want to risk turning his head letting Naruto know that it bothered him. Sai fine, such a drag he said as calmly as possible. Discreet. Repeated Sai again, he hummed for a moment which caught Naruto's attention, he pulled out about he has been reading about making and improving friendship and another book about social relationships and acquaintances along with a notebook, he started reading and making notes. Oh, okay now that that's over with, I am gonna go ask Sasama if there is a training ground nearby Naruto mumbled to himself. No you're not said Shikamaru with his eyes closed we have to wake up early tomorrow and run at full speed to catch the boat, so save your strength. Damn it you have point, oh and Shikamaru what? Said Shikamaru slightly annoyed that Naruto wasn't letting him sleep. You want no when, I am not gonna tell you when, but it'll get you and it'll get you good. Shikamaru's eyes snapped open and widened damn it why? He thought in his head why did I have to get stuck in this troublesome situation? Why did he even have to open his mouth? What did he care if Naruto was too tired to run in hurry? Naruto then noticed Shino standing in the corner hey Shino what's wrong? Oh nothing, it just seemed that you seemed to recognize everyone in an instant, everyone but me. Again, with that? Shino look at you with the way you're dressed anyone wouldn't recognize you if they haven't seen you for as long as I have said Naruto as he continued to argue with Shino. Meanwhile Ino had gathered girls so what do you girls think has Naruto worried? Remember it's Naruto we're talking about said Sakura. Yeah, but still what could make a carefree guy like him worried or worked over for? Maybe that girl happens to be some long lost relative of Naruto suggested Tenten. BB but but then wouldn't Naruto be happy? asked Hanada in her usual, shy, timid way. Or maybe that girl is supposed to Ino stopped and looked around to see if Naruto was anywhere near them to hear the conversation, what if Naruto is supposed to marry that girl? What? Just about every girl screamed out and the usually shy Hanada screamed. Where's the fire at? Kiba yelled as he ran inside the room followed by Neji and Akamaru. What's wrong? Naruto asked as Shikamaru arose from his possum state and Sai dropped his book and pulled out his tanto. Yes, what has disturbed your youthful evening? said Lee dropping from the ceiling from doing who knows what. Is everything alright asked Neji, guys it's nothing, we're just talking about some gossip I heard going around. Back at the village Ino lied skillfully. Shikamaru let out an annoyed sigh and said girls are so troublesome before you went back to playing dead. So what were you talking about asked Kiba, girl's stuff, now beat, said Ino. Fine I am going said Kiba, Naruto, would you like to join me for a youthful workout? Sorry I can't I have to go buy stuff replied Naruto, Shikamaru silently gulped as he hoped Enseruto was buying tough to prank him with. Hey Naruto called out Ino, huh, what? What you're buying, it wouldn't happen to fit around a finger would it? Ino asked in a sly way making sure not to give up any hints. I guess so said Naruto scratching his head, and does it come in gold color? Yeah and silver too if you can believe it Naruto said as he chuckled. And does it have pretty decoration? Yeah and some weird ones, 
Well later I have to go before they shut down the stores after Naruto left everyone got close to the group of girls. So what were you really talking about? Asked Shikamaru no gossip makes Hinata scream like that and less about Naruto. E.H. WWW what are you talking about? Asked Hinata with a blush on her face while tapping her two index fingers together. Hinata, just about everybody back at the village already knows about your crush on Naruto said Tenten. The only person who doesn't know is Naruto said Shino. Ino sighed at the Hinata's weakness to tell Naruto how she feels about him. We were talking about some possibilities that have Naruto worried about us, and what we come up with is that Naruto might be engaged with this foo girl. You know that's long a shot, right? Stated Shikamaru. Yeah I know but think about it, when you put two and two together it makes sense. How so asked Sai in the background jotting down some notes of his investigation on Fu. It was possibility that had to take into account. Well Tsunade tells Naruto something in private, giving him captain-like power, Naruto being worried, and just now, Naruto buying a ring. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up said Kiba. Okay suppose you're right and he is engaged with this Fu girl, but why him? Why the engagement at all? And what makes you think he is buying a ring? 1. Engagement between two rivaling families to bring peace or strengthen an alliance has always been around since before ninjas existed and 2. By the description Ino gave him said Shikamaru now interested in where this is going, the only question is why him? Well it was Naruto and Sasuke who saved their village, so maybe they see him as a hero? Sakura said, now believing in their idea but feeling sad for Hinata at the same time. Then it's agreed said Ino Naruto is engaged to Fu. Then it's agreed said Ino Naruto is engaged to Fu. Ino, that's only an assumption and our evidence doesn't really support that conclusion, besides Naruto could be buying anything stated Shikamaru. Oh yeah? Ino said in a really low voice then how do you explain everything that's happened so far? I don't. I just stay out of it because it is none of my business was his smart ass reply. But if it does turn out to be an engagement like Ino said, then maybe we should cheer Naruto on, right asked Shino. That is true said Neji, but it's just like Shikamaru said, it's not our business said Tenten. Then how about we help out our friend through this youthful ordeal in the most secretive and youthful manner? Lee suggested in his weird way as usual. Lee's right, it's none of our business but we want to help Naruto so let's do it in secret, I mean seriously how hard would that be asked Kiba. Not hard at all I mean seriously, it is Naruto said Sakura. Shikamaru's left eye started twitching, I have Naruto's prank mark on me, I am forced to do stuff I don't want to thought Shikamaru, and now they expect me to cheer and motivate Naruto. Shikamaru sighed why does my life have to be so goddamn troublesome? As their conversion continued on, Sai, in the background, was copying it down T conversation word for word, he noticed that Hinata wasn't a part of it. She just seemed sad and deep in thought. What emotion causes that? Thought Sai regret. Hatred. Happiness. Wait no that's not a possible answer. It starts with the letter L. Lethargy. No that's not an emotion it's a physiological state. Hum could it be? Love? Could love cause such sadness? Sai shrugged. Understanding emotions are too hard for him. Naruto started heading back to Fuma clan compound. He was lucky. Most of the stores close around 9 or 10, Naruto had gotten what he desired. For the most part, and some other stuff, for Shikamaru, Naruto had gotten a lot of balloons and rubber balls, but the store had only one pack of balloons and it was a small pack so Naruto had to get something the clerk suggested as a substitute. Naruto wanted to improve his Rasengan to the point where he can make one with one hand and no clones. He figured that he would, sadly, have to go back to the basics, so he was looking for balloons that were hard to pop. The clerk was man in his mid-twenties with messy brown hair. Brown eyes and a beard, Naruto asked him if he could see one of the substitutes and the clerk drew on form his pocket, it was a small packet with a ring mark that was clearly from product inside the packet, the clerk opened it up and pulled out something that resembles an uninflated balloon but it seemed like something was supposed to fit inside of it, why did the clerk have one? We all know why and what it is, the kids don't know but we do. Anyway the clerk filled it up with water and showed it to Naruto, it wasn't anywhere near the, or should I say a, desirable shape Naruto was looking for, then the clerk threw it at the wall but it didn't burst, so it was hard to pop, despite the fact that it wasn't round Naruto was looking for, he bought one small box of it because he assumed that he wouldn't have any time to buy one the next day. 
Naruto went to other shops after buying his training materials to buy many different items to make lame pranks with. He knew Shikamaru was smart, smarter than him and anyone else on the team, so Naruto decided that he would make Shikamaru worried and overcautious then give him a false sense of security by setting up noticeable, lame, obvious pranks that wouldn't work on him, then when he was overconfident to the point that he can predict Naruto's next prank, Naruto would hit him hard with a big prank, sure Shikamaru would outsmart him in just about anything. But pranking was Naruto's game, his passion, his art. Wow, it's been years since I made a good prank Naruto told himself, so doing this makes me feel really good inside Dadbeo. Sorry, better luck next time kids Naruto let out him before he turned his attention to a stand that had three children with sad, disappointed faces. Two boys and one girl. They seemed to be around the age of 7 or 8, from the looks of it, they were playing game where you throw a ball and knock down a bunch of stacked up glass milk bottles, it seems that the owner of the stand was already stacking them up into three neat stacks, Naruto, being who he was, decided to go find out what was wrong. Hey what's wrong? Why are you guys sad? All the kids turned up to look at the said blonde who called them. We want to win one of those the girl of the group said as they all pointed at the samurai action figures hanging above the stand. They didn't look like your average cheap toys that you usually find at stands like these, but they didn't that pricey either. The samurais were in all color and sizes and one of the toys seemed to be a female samurai with really decorative, hot pink, armor. Alright. How's about I win them for you offered Naruto. Really, all three of the children looked at him with gleaming eyes. You bet, Dadbeo, Naruto said as he grinned at them. Hold on said the owner of the stand. He seemed to be around 50 or so, brown hair, no facial hair besides his eyebrows and well-toned muscles, judging from your headband, you're a ninja, a shinobi right? Yeah that's right, I am a ninja he said grinning at the man while giving him a thumbs up, yep, his usual nice guy pose. Sorry no ninjas allowed he said as he folded his arm. What why dadbeo, kid, you're ninja, you guys use that genjutsu or whatever and make me think you knocked it down. Genjutsu corrected Naruto and I can't use Genjutsu, I have so much chakra that I can't control it enough to be capable of using it, I can't even use the simplest of all Genjutsu, beside I don't even know the hand seals for any of them said Naruto which seemed to have confused the man. Hand seals? What do you need those for? Oh you see, in order to do a ninjutsu or a Genjutsu you need to do some sort of hand seal with your hands to concentrate and mold chakra for the technique Naruto wasn't sure that was the accurate reason but he couldn't remember what Sakura said in the land of waves, so he winged it. I see, fine you can play, but no funny ninja stuff, alright? Alright but, I don't see why I would use a jutsu for this, how much does it cost to play? Naruto said as he took out his wallet. 75 Rio per game Naruto took out 225 Rio and paid for the game. A couple of minutes later all three kids started heading home with smiles on their faces and samurai toys in their arms as both the owner of the game establishment and Naruto saw them go with smiles on their faces. You're nice young fella, you know that right said the man to Naruto. Yeah, I hate it when I see someone feeling sad like that. Why's that? Naruto shrugged I when I was little I used to be sad all the time and barely anyone would try to cheer me up, so if I can help anyone who needs, even if it's something like this, it'll do it. I see, so where are you heading? Naruto turned to look at him with a face that spelled question on it, no ninja would bother wasting their time here unless they have something, not pretty to do. I see, well at the moment my friends and I are going north to the port to catch a boat to Kosapur village. Kosapur village eh. I heard a couple of days ago that Kosapur village was going to be busy this time around. Really? That makes things a little harder, huh, how so? You see I have to escort a girl who's going to be there back to the village I am from, and I can do whatever I see necessary to make sure that she doesn't feel too bad about moving to a different village. I see, I can tell that you'll do just fine if you're this charitable said the old man. Huh, really? Him nodded the man. Actions speak louder than words and your actions just now told me all that I need to know, you're a kind person and to be a ninja, that's really something you know. Gee, thanks mister said Naruto as he smiled and rubbed the back of his head, well later I have to go Naruto said already waving and moving. Hold on, ha huh? asked Naruto as he stopped in his tracks. What kind of manner is that? This confused Naruto, he knew people told him to learn manner s but what did he do wrong? to leave without giving me your name said the man smiling. 
Oh sorry about that. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Dadbeo. Naruto huh? Well then, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Hiro Midori. He then reached into his pocket and pulled out a blue coin. Here take this he said as he used his thumb to toss the blue coin to Naruto and it made a whistling noise on its way to Naruto. Naruto caught it but stumbled a bit as he almost let it drop. When Naruto finally had the coin secured in his hand, he studied it, there was a symbol. No crest is a better word, engraved on it. A blue whirlpool, the same one on the back of his jacket. Ah, said Naruto as he was confused, when isn't he? Keep it. This thing has saved my life many times I am sure it will save yours one day and it can also help you out if you use it right, besides I think it belongs to you. Huh? How so? The woman who gave me that, was named Megumi Uzumaki, Naruto's eyes lit up upon hearing the last name, she died a long time ago and she didn't have any relatives almost immediately, Naruto's spirit fell, don't be sad kid, she died of old age and she lived many long years with a smile on her face. I see. Well thanks but I have to get going said Naruto as he recovered his smile. I see, well good night Naruto said Hiro as he waved his arm. As the Naruto left, he failed to notice two shady guys hiding nearby listening into their conversion, so that's Naruto Uzumaki, why would Otogakure put such a high bounty on this idiot? Asked the tallest guy, who seemed to be about Shino's height and a muscular build up, at the moment he seemed to be playing with a knife he was wearing a black cloak and had black gloves on. Yeah, especially on a guy who's still a genin said the other guy as he took glances at Naruto and the bingo book in his hand. Huh, how about that he said as the taller man looked at him. What is it? It seems that he is apprenticed to Jiraiya, the toad Sanin. Tisk what a bunch of started off the older man but was cut off by the shorter guy. It's Otogakure brother, Oto's leader is Orochimaru, the snake Sanin. I did background checks and their information on people, nation and or ninja village is almost more accurate than the info that is offered at Jomi village, lock village. This Sanin must hate this genin so much to offer such a high bounty on him. Blah 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 said the older man, you always do talk a lot about unimportant stuff little brother, sudden live tall man chuckled when I hear this kid's name all I can hear is money. If all you hear is money then how do you hear his name and how does money have sound? jabbed the little brother with a smirk on his face. No one likes a smart ass Akira responded the tall guy with an annoyed voice. No one likes a money grubber die countered Akira. Whatever Akira, so what's the plan this time? That group he was with earlier. If I remember correctly one had most of his facial and body features covered. Two had pale eyes, one had a dog, one was pink headed. One has large eyebrows and a bowl haircut. One had a giant scroll with her hair tied into hair buns. One looked lazy but there was a wise air about him. One was fat as hell. The last girl has blonde hair and the last member was pale skinned. By order of elimination and from what we know about Konoha there are two Hyugas. One Inazuka. One Nara. One Akamichi and with those two around and hearing their first name I am gonna take a guess and say blondie girl is a Yamanaka. What in the world made you think that? Ino Shikacho dumbass. Don't interrupt, rude. And there is possibly one Aburame. As far as clans go, that's the only ones I can think of that probably in that group. The other don't seem to be from a clan, but I can't tell much about them. Akira finished the end of his last sentence in a rather bitter tone. And it frustrates you to no end finished die for his little brother. Sai yep. The plan is to knock the Inazuka and his mud out first, then we repeat the same process with the rest as quickly as possible when they're asleep. With your Kekai Jenke, bloodline limit, it should be easy said Dai. And with yours we should be able to deal with any, unforeseen problems said Akira. Right you were little brother, now let's follow him impatient as always Dai. Just relax and remember he can still sense our killer intent. With this much reward at stake for him, then he must be more than ordinary, or very annoying, one of the two. I guess you're right, no one can beat us though, we're the Sokugani brothers. The two shaded brothers started following Naruto revealing their faces. Dai was tall, tanned, brown eyes and has some hair on his chin and a scar on his lip. He also has messy brown hair. Akira was around Kiba's height, has a smooth face, green eyes, and dirty blonde straight hair with similar but different hairstyle that Lee has. Akira also looked like he was light on his feet. Naruto opened the shoji doors and said I am back before his eyes widen. In front of him were lots of empty plates and shoji still eating what seemed to be pork cutlets and a stick of yakitori. 
Oi Naruto you're late said Shikamaru from his sleeping spot. We would have saved you some food but Choji was still hungry said Kiba as he used Akamaru's side as a pillow. Sorry, Naruto said Choji as he finished with the pork cutlets and started with yakitori stick. You don't need to apologize Choji, Naruto has to learn responsibility, isn't that right, Naruto? Ino asked, but it was more of statement than a question. Huh, what do you mean? Ino jumped a little at that question because she still had the idea of Naruto getting married in mind oh ah well ah. Naruto if you want to be a chunin, like us, you have to learn responsibility Sakura said, from her sleeping spot, earning a disappointed look from Naruto and a thank you look from Ino. I guess, so where is Lee at? Naruto ASKD noticing that just about everybody was getting ready to sleep and that Lee wasn't among them. He went to the bathroom answered Sai who was jutting stuff down on his little notebook. I see, hey check it out, there's one stick of yakitori left. Both Ino and Shikamaru gasped a little as they turned to see Naruto reaching out to grab the last stick of yakitori and at the same time Choji finished his stick. Naruto picked up the stick up with his index finger and thumb and with a smile on his face, he then felt something grab his arm making Naruto let out of him and look up only to stare into at Choji's eye. The last stick of yakitori, I will savor it just how I would savor a victory. That is why I can let you have it, Choji said it with a serious tone in his voice. I see, but Choji, I didn't eat dinner, Naruto said it with the same tone in his voice. Everyone looked at them, Naruto and Choji were at a standoff. Choji's concentration rested solely on the chick on the stick while Naruto's was directed at Choji's arms. Kiba started whistling. He was whistling the song you normally hear in a cowboy movie when two cowboys are at a standoff while tapping a chop stick on the wooden floorboard in a slow rhythm. A trickle of sweat came down Naruto's cheek, it fell off and on its way down, everything seemed to slow down, Naruto's eyes hardened in determination, Choji's mouth started to water. Seipen just tapped his notebook, and the only thing left to end this would be the yakitori stick, the drop of sweat finally hit the ground making that drop noise. Naruto used his fingers to launch the stick in the air and Choji tried to grab it. Choji launched both his hands in the air to attempt grab it but failed to notice that the hand that was holding the stick was pulled back and launched directly at his face. Choji was sent back flying and Naruto jumped in the air securing the stick and greedily took off a piece of chicken and began to chew. Choji recovered and began charging Naruto letting out a battle cry. Naruto quickly swallowed and sent the stick spinning through the air in Choji's direction. As Choji jumped to reach the stick Naruto ran through some hand seals and yelled shadow clone jutsu. A split second later a clone came into existence. Naruto grabbed the clone by the arm and did a spin and threw his clone at Choji. Choji was hit and was sent back flying letting out an umph on impact with the ground. Naruto again grabbed the stick and took two more pieces of chicken and started chewing as fast as he could, after he swallowed he let an awe. Because Choji threw his clone right back at him, the clone popped out of existence and the stick was sent spinning in the air before it followed gravity's law and headed back down. Choji did a power slide and caught the stick but it was kicked out of his hand, ow. Yelled Choji as he let out another UMPFF when he was kicked the side of his head and sent rolling to the wall. Choji sat up straight and moaned as he rubbed his cheek, suddenly a wooden stick was embedded into the floorboard right in front of him. Choji looked up and saw Naruto swallow with a smirk on his face. Choji's face got red with anger. He jumped in the air yelling that should have been mine and only inches away from Naruto a comical fight cloud revealing Naruto and Choji's angry white-eyed faces, arms, fist, and legs every once in a while. Then Lee came back into the room and saw the fight a youthful spar. Why didn't anyone tell me? In an instant, Lee ran forward, jumped in the air and did a little spin before he dived down into the comical fight cloud which now revealed his determined face, arms and feet and fist. Classic said Shikamaru with a bored expression on his face as he fell back to sleep. Ha ha that was great said Kiba as he clapped his hands nothing like a show after dinner. Sakura sighed and said why couldn't they be more mature, she noticed how Sai stood up and proceeded to walk toward the fight cloud Sai what are doing? She asked. Well my book says to join activities others are doing so I am going to join them was his reply as he pointed his thumb at the fight cloud which seemed to be getting close to him. Um I don't think that counts, it doesn't? Sai asked as he was sucked into the fight cloud and now only his face with the usual bland expressions started to appear. Sakura sighed as she stood up, 
cracked her knuckles walked to the fight cloud and yelled chyia followed by punching noises that sounded like talk 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 so this is where they're staying said dai with the fuma clan continued akira they have good friends that's for sure so what now i have the nighty night smoke bombs ready patience we have to strike ladder when they're asleep that should nt be too hard it isn't but we have to knock out the inazuka and his mud before they can alert the others so where are they staying let's go akamaru we have to sleep in the courtyard remember a voice yelled from inside the compound followed by a bark from a dog that was surprisingly easy said akira i mean are these people even good ninjas who cares said die money is money i suppose you're right so now we play the waiting game Indeed, the moon was out in all its glory, reflecting the sun's light that pierced through the shroud of darkness and lights up the night. Akamaru woke up to see the moon. He always wondered what the moon was for. He looked at the little pond in front of him. Reflecting the image of the moon, when he was a pup he would try to reach the moon by jumping into the water but it never worked. Akamaru was about to howl when his keen dog since picked up the sounds of footsteps. Akamaru turned his head in the direction where the noise was coming from and was just a quarter second away from growling when a ball hit him, exploding into a small light purple mist putting him to sleep. All right. Two in one whispered Akira wearing the typical ninja uniform, noticing how the mist covered Akamaru and Kiba. Akira then ran at unimaginable speeds around the Fuma clan compound throwing nighty night smoke bombs in every room and at every one he saw before he went back outside to the courtyard in front of the door that opened to the room the Konoha group was staying in. Phew he said I almost hit the corners. Then maybe you should slow down Akira turned his head to see Dai walking up to him. And be a slowpoke like you, big brother. No thanks replied Akira as Dai rolled his eyes. Is it done? Akira nodded we're only missing this room, are you ready? Always replied Dai. Akira nodded as he walked up to the sliding shoji doors, he grabbed hold of the handle and slammed the shoji door open and threw many nighty night smoke bombs in and they exploded. Some of the people tried to get up from their sleeping spots but fell back to sleep. Akira then shut the door, all done. We just have to wait for the smoke to vent while avoiding it. I see this was a piece of C.A. Dai was going to say cake but the shoji door suddenly slammed open revealing Naruto with his eyes closed and, a swollen cheek. Well look who it is. Naruto Uzumaki said Akira. Otto has placed a high bounty on you both Akira and Dai placed themselves in a battle stance. Kid. Listen we have an edge, you don't, so just surrender and save us the trouble Dai said in the simplest way possible. Dai. He is one of those never surrender without a fight type of guy. And where the hell do you get off calling him kid? We're only a year older than him. I hate you, I know that, jerk. Before Dai could respond Naruto let a loud snore. Um are you suggesting that we are boring you? Dai laughed out loud he 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 you think you can take us on? You're in for a surprise brat. I have Kekai Jenke, bloodline limit, called steel release. With it I can make my body as hard as steel. Dai you idiot. You don't tell the enemy that, oh well, I might as well join in, I too have a Kekai Jenke, bloodline limit, but mine is swift release which allows me to move at top speed faster than the body flicker jutsu. Do you really think that you have a chance against us? Akira waited for a reply but Naruto just snored, you seem to underestimate us, you're about to see that we're not to be underestimated. Dai started charging at Naruto Akira you talk too much. He then ran through some HND seals before yelling steel release, Titan's punch jutsu. Dai's hands suddenly changed into a black ones and he clenched them into fist, as soon as he was close enough, he threw a punch forward only for Naruto to sidestep and grab the fist, without wasting a moment Dai turned and tried to an uppercut with his left hand but Naruto stepped back thus avoiding the blow, this gave Dai the chance to slip away from Naruto's grasp, he then yelled steel release, copperhead jutsu. Dai's head suddenly changed into a metallic orange red one and tried to headbutt Naruto, but Naruto fell back and his knee ended up pushing Dai's elbow up making him punch himself in the chin. Ow! yelled Dai as he deactivated his jutsu and rubbed his chin. Naruto got up headbutted Dai in the gut making him to fall back on a rock that hit his spine causing him to yell in pain. Dai you idiot! You had the right idea, but we don't know his skills. So it's better dodge and observe then to go in recklessly and get hurt. I guess it's my turn. Akira did some hand seals similar to the body flicker jutsu and suddenly ran at top speed. It was funny to him, 
every time he moved fast and wherever he was running at this speed. Everything started to slow down for him, when he was younger, when he ran at this speed, it created a tunneling effect that bothered him to no end, he didn't have all the details of his surroundings which got him hurt, but now everything slows down and it infuriates him, he trained his eyes to take in every detail of his surroundings so that he would know where to move, but it ended up making everything slow, this made him feel as if he was moving slowly. As he approached Naruto he was forced to stop otherwise he would have ran into Naruto's fist. What? Akira yelled as he jumped back, did he see me coming? No that's impossible, there's no way he could have saw me. Akira thought as he charged at top speed again but Naruto seemed to have moved just in time for Akira's attacks, most of the time they were four mere decimeters. How is he doing that? Akira yelled in his head, is this why there's such a high bounty on him? Could Orochimaru have gotten irritated like I am? Please don't tell me we got more than what we bargained for. Akira kept throwing blows but Naruto seemed to escape most of them, some only left him with scratches, Akira noticed something from his last attack, Naruto's eyes are still closed. How are you doing this? Your eyes aren't even open, Akira yelled and pointed at Naruto but found that it was useless, Naruto didn't do anything but move around and wiggle but nothing was attacking, at some point the snored. There was a sweat drop on the back of Akira's head why is he doing that? Akira thought out loud could be some sort of future prediction technique? Naruto turned around and Akira saw an opportunity he charged at full speed and attempted to deliver a high kick directed at his back. But Naruto started turning almost there thought Akira, as he got closer and closer to Naruto with his high kick in place as he got closer he something that made him wish he didn't make a move, as Naruto turned, at the other side was Dai and Fist heading towards Naruto or at least it was but now it was going in Akira's direction. Akira only ended up scratching Naruto's back causing the sole of his foot to collide with Deus' metallic fist and Naruto avoided it, again. He did again, is this how powerful he is or am I really too weak? Thought Akira as his foot collided with Deus' foot, ow! They both yelled as Dai rubbed his hand and Akira started hopping on one foot while grabbing the other. What the hell is it with this guy? He's so elusive, how is he able to dodge our attack and make us fight ourselves? yelled Dai as Akira repositioned himself in comfortable form I don't know. Akira yelled back, Naruto snored again but loudly. This guy is looking down on us, Dai yelled as he head let out some steam. You're kidding me, he's not even looking at all, that bastard, Akira let's do that jutsu. But I don't think that jutsu would Akira began but was cut off. Chadd up already, let's do it, Akira thought for a moment before he yelled fine. Both brothers started doing some hand seals before both brothers yelled Sokugani collaboration jutsu, swift punch. Deus' hand suddenly turned into a silver fist and Akira grabbed him by the arm with the sliver fist while Dai used his left hand to secure himself on Akira's back and they both charged Naruto. Dai used his arm for power and Akira was used for speed, as they both charged Naruto he suddenly kicked a rock at their basic direction which almost hit Akira but he moved to the side which caused him and Dai to go rolling over and stop just 4 feet away from Naruto. Akira and Dai groaned as that they struggled to get up. Suddenly they heard poof sound and saw a clone of Naruto. Naruto then held out his hand and the clone started running his hands into it. Suddenly chakra started coming out and taking the form of a sphere and started spiraling. Naruto then started charging at them. Dai tried to move but he ended up tripping over Akira. Hey you can stay up all night for as long as you want but you would still be tired for not sleeping. Both of them yelled aw. As Naruto hit them both with the sphere ad yelled Rasengan. Both men were sent flying into the air and hit a tree in the courtyard, where Kiba and Akamaru were sleeping, knocking both men out. Akira was the first of the two brothers to wake up, ah, uh, we where am I? Akira said as he started to open his eyes. His eyes were still in that hazy state where everything is appears to be first he could only make out reddish pink light blocked by a couple of shadows, he blinked before his vision became clear, in front of him unveils the beautiful scenery of a pink sunrise from the distance and the shine of the sun reflected off sharp glares and steel of the arrows pointed straight at his brother Dai and him. Ah uh, crap, Akira said, he tried to move but he couldn't, he got a better look of his surrounds and noticed that both he and Dai had their backs against a tree. This told Akira that they were somehow tied up to the tree, also, their arms were below their waist, apart from each other meaning neither of them could use a jutsu, knowing about the Fuma clan located in the land of rice paddies, 
Akira came to the conclusion that they were tied up with chakra strings. Sanavabich Akira said loud enough to cause his brother to wake up. Uh, Akira what happened? Dai asked. He then let out a huh as he started to take in his surroundings. Oh crap. He then tried to move but then realized that he couldn't. O-C-R-A-P. Dai yelled as he struggled to get out of the bindings ever so desperately mean while his brother Akira was cool as Ice Cube as he mumbled idiot as he could feel the vibrations caused by his brother's frantic struggle to escape their invisible bindings. Sheesh, one guy was enough. How troublesome said a guy with hairstyle that resembled a pineapple and was currently wearing green boxers and a white undershirt. Behind him was Hanzaki with his clothes on, and a bunch of other Fuma clan members wearing a variety of boxers from hearts to skulls and pointing arrows at them. Sakura, Tenten, Hanada, and Ino were also there along with Choji. Neji, Lee, Sai, Shino, Kiba, and Akamaru. Sakura was wearing pink PJs that was slightly darker than her hair and consisted of a matching shirt and PJ pants. Tenten was wearing your typical Chinese green gown. Hanada was wearing the same thing as Sakura only hers was light blue and it looked like her breast would rip out of her shirt at any second. Ino was wearing the same thing only hers was light purple and it was a little more revealing. Also they had their hands crossed. Lee, Choji, Sai, Shino, and Kiba are wearing the same clothes they had on the day before. Neji was, like Shikamaru, was wearing only a dark blue boxer. You you you're that group from Konoha, right? Akira asked but it was more of a statement. He then turned to look at his brother who looked at him. They both nodded and turned back to their captors and cried out we're sorry we're sorry we're sorry we're sorry. They cried out with a river of cartoony tears running down their faces. Sheesh, at least of some dignity Kiba said as he crossed his arms. Shikamaru sighed how troublesome, look, just tell us what you guys were after. We 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 were after your friend replied Dai tears still running down his face. He he had a high bounty on him continued Akira who calmed down a little, but he taught us a lesson, we 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 promise to leave you guys alone, I swear, so please let us go. Oh hell no. Ino yelled while she waved her arms up and down, look at what you did to my blouse. Ino pulled out her purple blouse and it had barbecue stain on it, I was about to put this in my backpack when you opened the door and threw those smoke bombs in, I fell asleep and when I woke up I found it on a plate that still had barbecue sauce on it. Eno it was probably just the wind, there was a strong breeze last night and the window was open, so your blouse was blown onto the plate said Sakura. Still, it's their fault, if they hadn't knocked me out I could have prevented this from happening. Man, girls are so troublesome, it's like they can't live without makeup or stupid articles of clothing said Shikamaru. We heard that, yelled both Sakura and Eno in unison at Shikamaru with blocky mouths and white eyes as Shikamaru said troublesome. Shikamaru sighed again look, just tell us who you guys were after, almost as if to answer his question, someone woke up and headed outside and said. Good morning. Yelled a cheery voice as everybody turned to see Naruto walking into the courtyard wearing the same clothes he had on the day before, he then noticed the air and realized the situation, eh, who the heck are those guys dad bail? He's the one we were going to kidnap, yelled Dai but tears were still flowing down. But he taught us a lesson. Akira yelled after he stopped crying. Um, do I know you guys? Naruto asked as he scratched the back of his head. There was a bounty on him? Kiba asked before a smirk formed on his face let me guess, 20 Ryo? Actually it's that times a hundred thousand replied Akira. It took everyone a little while before it sunk in what, everyone yelled making that white-eyed blocky mouth faces. Naruto, who the hell did you piss off? Kiba yelled while pointing a finger at him menacingly. I don't know, responded Naruto as he grabbed Akira by the shoulders and started shaking him back and forth causing the back of his head to collide with the tree hey who put the bounty on me. Tell me tell me tell me tell me. Naruto, stop Shino said as he grabbed Naruto on the shoulder causing him to turn around look, Naruto did as Shino told him and saw that Akira was out with the whites in his eyes. Okay. You Naruto said he directed side to die who put the bounty on me. We don't know, all we know is that it came from Otogakir. Otto. I thought no one knew where their bases were Hanzaki stated. Only Orochimaru's loyal men know everyone cringed at the name that was mentioned there's guy who travels around and gives every merc nin he sees a bingo book. Wait isn't that dangerous? 
Shikamaru asked isn't he scared that he might get ambushed from real hidden ninja villages to extract information from him? The guy probably has a seal on him that prevents him from talking, or he's mute, he never tells us anything, he just hands us the book and finds us when we have one of the guys with the bounty on their heads and gives us our reward. I see said Hanzaki still, this is useful information. For both of us said Shikamaru, so we can find Sasuke this way right? Sakura asked with that little gleam of hope in her eyes. Yeah we should tell Tsunade this after the mission and we can set up a trap said Ino. Wait why can't we just Sakura was going to finish by saying go after him now when Shino cut her off. Sakura, we are on mission, he's right said Ino as much as I would like to go after. Sasuke, Ino let out a dreamy sigh before it was replaced with a depressed one. We have a mission to do and we are nowhere near the land of lighting to make a detour. Yo you're right, Sakura said before she frowned and moved her head down. That was also around the time Akira snapped out of his comatose state. Don't worry Sakura Naruto said making everyone direct their attention towards him. I promised that I would bring him back, didn't I? Naruto was still facing the tree when he said that. They noticed how his right hand clenched in a fist. And that's exactly what he'll do, Naruto said with a strong voice and determination. Naruto turned around and smashed his fist into his left palm which backed up his words and determination. This also caused a smirk to appear on their faces. Now let's untie them Naruto said pointing his thumb at Akira and Dai with thankful tears coming down their faces. What? Hell no. Ino yelled while she waved her arms in a frantic manner. Those bastards ruined my blouse. How? They knocked me out and I so they knocked you out, but nothing happened. Yeah but but they were after me and they won't try that anymore, right guys? Naruto asked only to be answered by Dai and Akira's frantic nod. Naruto, you can be serious. Ino yelled put her hands on her hips, she then noticed Naruto's eyes, how his irises weren't partially concealed by his eyelids, instead they were floating in the middle of the pupil, those are his serious eyes, crap he is serious thought Ino, no, no, no way, no way, Naruto, no way, no way in hell, no fucking way, under any circumstances, am I going to let them go free Ino said in a low, strict, menacing voice. Ino, they didn't do anything, it's the right thing to do Naruto and Ino were at standoff where they were staring at each other before Ino puffed her cheeks and turned away with her arms folded and said fine, let them go. Naruto smiled then looked at Hanzaki, Hanzaki nodded and lifted both of his hands and applied chakra through it revealing the chakra strings that had both Dai and Akira tied up, Hanzaki cut the chakra flow thus making the chakra string tied around Dai and Akira disappear, both guys fell to the floor. Their breathing started to calm down as a result of being freed. By the way, who are you guys? Naruto asked them. I am Akira Sokugame, and this is my brother Dai. Nice to meet you guys, my name Naruto Uzumaki, Dadbeo Naruto said in a very enthusiastic, by the way, how did you guys end up tied to a tree? Akamaru and I found them passed out said Kiba we went around and saw people knocked out as well so we woke them up and came back and tied them up Kiba explained. Oh I see, but how did they end up being knocked out? Huh? Both brothers yelled, you don't remember? Akira yelled out loud. You're the one who knocked us out, continued Dai, he also yelled out his sentence. I did? Naruto asked while he scratched his head, I don't Naruto began was cut off. You were very elusive. Every time I attacked, you dodged it by mere decimeters. Yeah and every time I tried to punch you. I ended up punching Akira or myself. And then you finished us off with that Rasengan of your. Really, I did all of that? Because I don't remember anything except fighting Choji, Lee and somehow Sai got involved and then something punched me in the face Naruto said. Whoa whoa, hold on said Kiba as he brought this arms up and motions for stop, what makes you sure it was him he pointed at Naruto who beat you guys? It was said Neji because I don't recall him having his jacket torn before being knocked out. Huh? Torn? Where? And who knocked me out? Naruto yelled as he started tugging and pulling his jacket for any sign of cut in his favorite article of clothing. Naruto, calm down, Sakura was the one who knocked you out said Tenten and it's on your back. Huh said Naruto as he tried to look at the back of his shirt by tagging and pulling and turning around again but it obviously failed, he then decided to unzip his jacket, just as he was about to unzip Akira spoke up, much to Hinata's disappointment. Wait, so you don't remember fighting us at all? Oh, uh, no, I don't. 
Um excuse me but can you ask those guys if they can lower their arrows Dai asked as he pointed the Fuma clan member that still had their bows up and arrows pointed at them. Hanzaki rubbed his temples men, you may leave after he said that they all looked at him with blank stares just go. All the men retracted their arrows and bowed their heads and left, much to the comfort of Dai and Akira. So all you remember is fighting one of your companions then getting knocked out by another then waking up this morning? Yep, I mean, I really don't feel like I fought anything at all, but it has always been like that, after good night's sleep, I am good to go. Wait, so if Naruto beat you guys said Shikamaru, and if he doesn't remember? Ah crap, don't tell me said Akira leaving everybody lost. Did he do anything out of the ordinary? He beat with his eyes closed and he snored and wiggled around Akira said as he bended his body forward. Sorry, that just confirms it, okay I am lost said you know what the hell are you guys talking about? Akira, first you started talking too much, now you're talking without making sense, I hope this doesn't become a regular thing said Dai. Dai, Akira said as he dropped to his knees, he dropped his head so that no one could see it, Naruto, he beat us. Dai lifted an eyebrow at his brother's comment that made everybody confused. Ah, we all knew that said Tenten as Dai got closer to Akira. Oi, Akira, you alright? Talking too much and talking without making sense is annoying enough, but stating something everybody already knew and being fully aware of it, that's just pretty annoying ya yeah, no. It was silent for a moment before Akira finally said Dai, he beat us, in his sleep, Deus' eyes widen as he let out a muffled gasp. Buahahahaha. Kiba laughed out loud as Dai fell to his knees with his head hanging low right next to Kira. You guys got beat by him in his sleep. You guys must be pathetic. Kiba yelled as he continued to laugh before he got elbowed on the side by Tentanao. What the hell was that for? Kiba yelled with his eyes white and his fist shaking up and down in the air menacingly. Just read the air, Kiba said Eno. How what do you mean? Asked Kiba as Shino pointed at Dai and Akira who were currently kneeled down in front of Naruto with their heads hung low and bodies trembling. Ah geez said Kiba as he started feeling bad about his previous actions. Naruto said Akira as him and Dai started to lift their arms, causing everybody but Naruto to tense up, you. You, said Dai or a god they yelled in unison as they started making motions that are usually used in worship. What the hell? Everyone but Hinata. She really wanted to go join them. Lee clueless as to what is going on, Neji, but he had his mouth open, and Shikamaru, thought it was too troublesome to say too much in the morning, please make us your disciples they both yelled in unison causing everyone sweat drop, Ah, uh, come on guys, cut it out Naruto said with his eyes closed, making pushing motions while backing up but they followed even though they were still kneeling and worshipping him I am no god, even though I am awesome he said with a smile on his face, great, said Sakura in a sarcastic voice, He's flattering himself now said Shikamaru with a bored expression on his face. Hey! Kiba yelled at Akira and Dai to get their attention and it worked, and as not only them but Naruto as well, directed their attention at him, he just beat you guys in his sleep, how the hell does that make him a god? Look in Azuka said Akira in an annoyed tone it's hard to beat us while being awake as it is due to our Keke Jenke, bloodline limit, and to beat us while being asleep, what else can he be but a god? Keke Jenke bloodline limit. Let me guess it's suck release, right? Kiba asked as he continued to laugh. You bastard. Dai yelled as he pointed an accusing finger at Kiba don't even compare me to those Yugakir women. After Dai said this, the courtyard was awkwardly silent. What? Ah, uh, you were saying that my Keke Jenke, bloodline limit, was suck release from the Takayashi clan of Yugakir, Dai said as his voice began to grow meeker by the minute. There's actually Keke Jenke bloodline limit called that shikamaru asked in a skeptical manner Ooh, yeah the way it works is that it alters their mouths and throats for short period of time to be able to suck die began but was cut off by sakura don't even finish that you pervert sakura yelled with blushed filled face at him so hard that it actually made his hair fly around what he said in a confused manner but it's true Akira contributed to the subject their mouths and throats are altered for short period time to be able to suck chakra out of their opponent from short distance along with other elements like air, water and so on, because of that it doesn't classify as dark release Akira clarified making all perverted thoughts go away. Oh really? U said Sakura with a light blush on her cheeks. Sue what were you thinking of? 
asked Dai with a smirk on his face that was soon met with rock. Ow! What the hell? Dai yelled back in response with a swelling on his nose. Dai knock it off. We are enough trouble as it is Akira said to Dai before he directed his attention to the Konoha group steel release. His Keke Jenke, bloodline limit, is steel release and I have swift release. Wait said Shikamaru those are two different Keke Jenkes, bloodline limit, and you two are brothers? Adopted said Akira we adopted each other after we helped each other out in the past and it sort of happened. We changed our last names and become brothers, that's all there is to it. Okay, said Shikamaru, it was silent for a moment before Naruto spoke up and said is that it? What about your childhoods? Our childhoods? Normally I would not talk about that, but for you, oh great god, I will. Akira yelled with so much passing burning in his eyes, Dai and I had the similar childhood. We were both under the tyranny of the clan's rule. In the land of lighting I was one of seven sons amongst ten children of the head of the clan I used to belong to Akira distaste towards his origin was expressed with the anger that was in his tone of his voice and the way his face crippled when he mentioned his father. Same here, only I never knew who my parents were. Our clan is ruled by the clan elders through and Dai. The elders thought it was better for a kid not to know who his parents are in order to practice filial piety toward everyone and most importantly to the elders he said with so much distaste in his mouth that he actually spit away the memories on the gown. But I was ignored. In our clan we use a system based on the skill of each individual son or daughter and the top rank was worthy enough to spend time with our father. In this way it forces us to be more competitive so that we hone our skills and talents faster but even then our father ignored us and for us to forget about it we were given our own servants and a weekly allowance of 2000 ryos. I guessed one day I got tired of all the bullshit and left. Same here said Dai, what bullshit are these guys talking about? They had a freaking silver spoons in their mouths and plus they didn't have to see their parents and deal with all the dramatic bullshit and they left from that. Thought Shikamaru as other thought around the same line of silver spoons in their mouths. Oh I see where you're coming from said Naruto who pretty much shocked everyone, you do. Everyone asked, hm, replied Naruto oblivious to everyone's reasoning, I mean if I was in place like that I would feel like I was just a weapon, like a knife that sits in a drawer that's only taken out when it needs to be used, or better yet it's something that you need or something very helpful yet you don't appreciate it or even want to know it's there unless you really need it, I guess if I had life like that, I would run away too. When you think about it actually makes sense. There were empires in the past that used their princes as a tool to bring two empires together traded her for peace, but other than that they were useless due to the belief that women were incapable of ruling an empire Hanzaki said. Oh great god. We knew you would understand, Akira and Dai both yelled unison as they resumed their worshipping motions. Come on guys cut it out Naruto said as he resumed his backup motions, I am just a human just like you guys so come on just stand up and stop calling me god, just call me Naruto. Dadbeo. Dai and Akira nodding their heads frantically and complied with his instructions and got up when a new voice feminine voice said, Are you two Dao and Akira? It's Dai and Akira. Who wants to know? Dai and Akira turned around to see a girl wearing a pajama that looked more like a dress and it was completely covered in mud even her light burnt orange hair has mud stuck in it. In fact the menacing shadow created by her hair, masking her glare was actually amplified by the mud in it leaving not even a slight space for light to disrupt the shadow. It only made it darker, well? Dai asked as he and Akira observed the girl while Naruto walked beside Akira. All of the sudden she yelled water style. Chakra string water whip. In a flash she lashed out her arms and blue strings coated in water came out of her index fingers. Widdick. 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 The guys told me it was you two who knocked me out. The girl lifted her face to reveal Sasama face. I was walking back to my room after getting a glass of water and suddenly I fell asleep and when I woke up I was in a puddle of mud. I can wheeze understand wheeze asterisk that Akira struggled to say as he was holding the area where his grapes while resting on his side on the grass. Damn it my balls hurts yelled Dai as he too was holding his grapes only he was lying on his back. But why did you hit me? Naruto struggled as he too was holding his grapes but he was still standing up before fell to one of his knees before he was fully on his side. Realizing her mistake, Sasama yelled Naruto. Before she and everybody ran to the three downed ninjas, are you alright? Nnnn no. Naruto struggled to say, why'd I suddenly feel like I have to pee? He thought in his head. A couple of minutes later are you fine, Naruto? 
Sasama asked with a worried expression. Relax I am fine Naruto said with smile as he was resting his back against a tree, by the way what was that jutsu you use? Oh that? It's just a jutsu I came up with Sasama said with a prideful look, by combining my talent with chakra strings and with my water affinity I can create a similar but a much more painful version of the water whip jutsu, it only hits the pain receptors so it doesn't leave bruises that much making it a good interrogation tool Sasama explained. I see said Sai as he had his right hand covering his chin and you don't seem to require hand seals. Well, talk about being skilled said Shikamaru with an analytical look combining chakra strings with water infinity isn't exactly an easy thing to pull off. Cool said Naruto by the way Naruto said catching Sasama's and Shikamaru's attention, what's an avinity? Naruto noticed how everyone kept staring at him what? First of all, it's called affinity and two. We learned about it a day before the genin exams back at the academy, remember? Ino sighed he wasn't there that day, he was too busy off painting the Hokage monument, which by the way, how the hell did you get away with that? I don't know was Naruto answer. Shikamaru sighed in annoyance what a drag, there are five elements, fire, earth, air, lighting and water, these elements are part of the nature transformation part of jutsu. When you say that you have water affinity it just means that you have an affinity to water Naruto just stared at Shikamaru blinking every once in a while. It means they can use water jutsus a better than you can with earth and fire said Akira as he stood up and walked to his bag. Oh, I see said Naruto smiling at the simplified explanation, wait if they taught us about it in the academy. And let us find out what our affinity is added Sakura. Right, so, why can't you guys use elemental jutsu? Too troublesome. It's such a long process and it's too time consuming and it's a lot of work said Shikamaru. I can't exactly use chakra responded Lee but my taijutsu solves the problem youthfully. I don't have time to juggle the training for it with my clan techniques training along with my chore, career, and free time responded Ino. Umnanomnam was the noise that came out of Choji's mouth as he ate a bag of potato chips. Hanada and I are taijutsu experts. To suddenly try and learn ninjutsu would be against the training we have had since before we entered the academy said Neji. Soccer aside like Ino don't have much time to practice to control my fire affinity because of my chores at the hospital, training as Tsunade-sama's apprentice and my free time. I might accidentally hurt Akamaru while trying to combing my affinity with our combo moves said Kiba as Akamaru barked. My bugs are constantly eating my chakra making it impossible for me to perform any particular, strong and useful elemental jutsu said Shino. I am ninja tools expert, so I don't really need to learn hose types of jutsus, but I am actually trying to master my earth affinity so that I can use chakra flow on my weapons to make them last longer and deal more damage said Tenten. I see said Naruto as he turned to Sai what about you Sai? Oh you see. I use a bit of water affinity in order to use my ink jutsus but it's not enough to cast a water style jutsu responded Sai with his fake smile. Okay. So how do you know what affinity you have? With this said Akira walking back to Naruto with a sheet of paper here this is a leftover from our last bounty he said as he handed Naruto the paper. This paper is made from a special tree with a property that causes it to react to even the slightest bit of chakra. Okay I see. So all I have to do is just focus chakra into it, right? Naruto said as he started pushing his chakra into the paper and then a second later the paper split into two pieces. Ah crap sorry. I didn't mean to do that, Dad Bayo. Naruto said as he freaked out about the paper. Calm down said Sakura that just means you have wind affinity. Yeah, to tell you the truth, that's actually pretty rare even in the land of wind said Tenten as she grimaced as the memory of Tamari beating her badly in the Chunin exam came to her mind. Huh but how do you know? Naruto asked as he picked up the two pieces of paper. Naruto, the paper acts differently towards every element, Shino spoke up to say as the sunlight flashed in glasses, the paper gets ignited and turned to ash when you have fire infinity, the paper wrinkles if you have lighting, it turns to dirt and crumbles away if it's earth affinity, it either gets wet or damp if you have water affinity. That was my case said Sai with his fake smile mine turned damp. Right, and if the paper splits, like yours did, then you have wind affinity. Wind, huh said Naruto as he started to remember his fight with Sasuke at the Valley of the End and how he met up with Sasuke recently, that's when Naruto decided that if he was ever going to catch up to Sasuke anytime soon, he would need to learn how to use his wind affinity, how exactly do I train to control my affinity? 
Shikamaru sensing what Naruto was thinking spoke first it's not something that happens overnight, or a month for that matter, in fact, training to even control your affinity could take a whole year. Actually it took me a little bit more than a year and a half to master mine said Sasama. Then I'll learn how to control it in less than half a year, just give me three months and instructions on how to do it Naruto said with a grin and determined look on his face. This guy the first swear thought Shikamaru he going to prank me and he expects me to tell him how to train. What and wait a minute. Maybe I can bargain Naruto out of pranking his thoughts were interrupted when Choji spoke up. Asuma sensei has the same type of affinity. He said something about splitting a leaf with your wind chakra. He also said something about making it as thin and sharp as you can. God damn it. Thought Shikamaru as bead sweat trickled down his face. That doesn't sound too hard said Naruto as he got up. Trust me it's harder than you think said Sasama. The first exercise I had to do was move water around using only my chakra. Hey I had to that in order to learn the Rasengan so wouldn't that mean that I have water affinity? Oh, no, that first exercise was just a warm up, anyone can do it. Next I had to fill a glass with water made completely from my chakra. Then I had to move water around in the air without it dropping on the ground. Then. Sorry it's such a long process Sasama said as she rubbed her temples at the memory. I see, wait what about wind? What exercises do I have to do besides just cutting up leaf with my chakra? Actually I think that's about it said Sai in his thinking position I mean you just have to cut a bunch inanimate objects with and only with your chakra. I see, I got this in the bag, no problem, Dad Bayo. Naruto said with a grin in his face before he realized something. Ever since the talk about water something specific was stuck in his mind but he couldn't figure it out until now, oh crap. What is Naruto? Kiba asked did you find your brain? No the boat. And I had my brain to begin with. After that all the chunins and the special janin started making realization faces before they all started rushing to the room, except Kiba and Akamaru whose stuff were outside. Tack. 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 All the boys whose stuff were in the room were punched out by Sakura who had an angry look on her face before forced some steam out her nose and she slammed shut the sliding door. Naruto unzipped his jacket and saw the tear in it, it wasn't exactly that big but it was noticeable. Naruto then noticed a leaf floating down in front of him. Hum. Let out Naruto as he opened the palm of his right hand and allowed the leaf to land on it. A grin appeared on his face. So I just split the leaf in half ha Naruto started channeling his chakra into the leaf demanding it cut the leaf alright here I go. TCH. Look at him said Shikamaru with his usual bored expression fitted on his face. He's getting all pumped with just a leaf. Well what do you expect? Said Choji who was eating his bag of chips that's Naruto for ya. Um num 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 he gives 100% in just about everything he does. Hum. Naruto is so youthful. Lee yelled his enthusiasm to the sky, much to everyone's annoyance. Hey guys how do I fix my jacket? Naruto called out to the other guys as he was still focusing on cutting the leaf. Hanzaki and Sasama already left. Hanzaki had stuff he had to do in town and Sasama was keeping an eye on Akira and Dai as she made them fix some stuff around the compound or move some stuff around Das compensation for knocking everyone out. Oh just ask Tenton said Neji her parents owns an old fashioned tailor shop and they do more than just stitch clothes up, they also wash and remove stains that most thought it was impossible to remove, she might know something, she actually fixed my clothes on our last mission when it got torn. Wait, Tenton? Naruto asked in disbelief as he lost his concentration and let the leaf get taken away by a light breeze. Yeah, Tenton. Is there anything wrong with that, Naruto? Well no, it's just well. I don't see it, I mean with all the weapons she has and how she knows how to use them so skillfully, I mean I would've believed that her parents owned a weapon shop or a forge or something related to weapons, or even her having part time job at a weapon shop or something. Gee, that's very judgmental Naruto said Neji as he turned his back on Naruto and gave him a glare making Naruto twitch and sweat. You never judge a book by its cover because it is so unyouthful. Lee yelled pumping his hand in the air. You always read the first chapter to get a feel of how youthful the book is. That, kind of makes sense but not really said Naruto while he scratched his head, but what about you? Ha Naruto pointed to Neji, during the Chunin exams you judge both me and Hinata and talk shit about not being able to change destiny or fate. That was different. 
Neji disputed as he turned around to face Naruto I was immature back then and I let my hatred for my clan get the best of me. Whatever, I bet Naruto was about to continue when Shikamaru cut him off. Hey cut it out already everyone was startled to find out that it was Shikamaru who snapped at them. Listen we have to be ready to move and get our stuff and do whatever we need to do because, as troublesome as it sounds, we have to be on that boat to Kusapur village. Right, Sari said Neji as he positioned himself to run. Hmm, keeping people waiting is very unyouthful, said Lee as he tightened his headband. Yeah and that girl, Fu, might get pretty pissed off if we make her wait a week, right said Naruto, or she might feel that we don't want her or that she's nothing more than a tool to us or worse, she may think that we see her as a monster Naruto thought in his head, Fu, we are not mindless tools or monsters, I hope you know that. The sliding door opened to reveal the females of the group looking fresh and with their bags over their shoulder all ready to go. Alright you guys go in now said Sakura but before she was finished. Neji, Lee, and oddly. Shikamaru rushed past her an instant. Choji and Sai followed behind as well as Naruto. Naruto stopped by Tenten while he was jacketless and had his fishnet armor shirt on. Uh, Tenten, Neji said that you might know how to fix this Naruto showed her his torn jacket. She grabbed it for him and observed the tear she even pushed her pinky through the tear. Yeah I can fix, I give it back to you later said Tenten as she flashed him a smile. Thanks Tenten, I guess I owe you one, oh, it's fine, don't worry about it said Tenten as she just waved him to go. Gee thanks Tenten Naruto said before he ran to get his stuff. A couple of minutes later everyone was leaving the Fuma clan compound. Hey you guys are leaving already said Sasama who was still wearing her PJs and covered in mud. Yeah sorry we have a boat to catch said Sakura with an apologetic look. But we can't just leave a mess here said Neji, I know said Naruto as he made some familiar hand seals and yelled shadow clone jutsu. And with a puff of smoke a clone of Naruto appeared, clean up and do whatever she says he told his clone before he turned to Sasama while moving backwards sorry we have to leave soon Naruto said the last part out loud as he fell down due to tripping on a rock, but he recovered and got back up. It's alright. Just remember to come and visit, k? Okay? okay, well come and visit again. By Sasama. Naruto and every else yelled waving their arms. Before the fight between Naruto against Dai and Akira. Well cover me impressed Kakashi. You were supposed to be in recovery for the next two weeks, but there you are said Tsunade sitting in her desk with a half-empty bottle of sake and four empty ones. Shizun and Tonton, who was being held by Shizun, were standing by her side eyeing her bottles of sake. The sun had gone down four hours ago and standing before Tsunade was Kakashi Hitaki. Why thank you Tsunade-sama, but I still feel sore though. Tsunade nodded take it easy then, even though you are out of the hospital it doesn't mean you are fully healed. Thank you, oh by the way where is Naruto and Sakura? I didn't see Sakura in the hospital or Naruto camping in the bed beside me. Oh, about that, I sent them on an S rank mission, you what? Kakashi yelled out loud with his uncovered eye widen. Ooh relax Kakashi said Tsunade while waving her hand up and down before she took another swig of from her sake bottle, straight from the bottle, and when she was done she let out an awe as both Shizun and Tonton shook their heads at her. It's not like I sent them alone or on a particularly dangerous mission. Tsunade sama. Kakashi said in confusion, I sent them along with Team 8, Ten and Guy's squad as well. You sent all of them on this S rank mission? Hum nodded Tsunade, I sent them on a retrieval mission. Retrieval? Are they going after Sasuke? No, it's actually worse than that? Worse? Kakashi asked in a skeptical manner. Suande was silent for a moment before she said I sent them to retrieve Taki's Jinchuriki. Kakashi's uncovered eye widened again I see, so Taki's Jinchuriki wasn't captured after all. I am going to assume that both you and Naruto fought the same guy, no their Jinchuriki wasn't. I figured he was lying to enrage Naruto, but I also had to take into consideration that if news like that got out, other hidden villages might resume locating the entrance to Taki and destroy them. I see. Well it's good to know that Naruto didn't get the assumption from your influence, but had I known that you would be on your feet today, I would have sent them tomorrow with you. Tomorrow? You sent them out today, I take it? Well I am going to take a guess and say that no matter who went, Naruto is supposed to go one way or the other, because of how he reformed K's cage dono right? Yep. 
I also gave them information about the port located at the coast of the land of rice paddies to hitch a ferry to the land of lighting. You have been to that port? No but I have the mission report from when Jiraiya and your two students went there, so I did my best and put the information together and gave them a large sum of money. They went to the port? Jiraiya never told me that. Sure they did, it says so right here Tsunade said holding up a folder. Ah uh, can I see that? Shizun asked as Tsunade handed her the folder. Kakashi turned into a thinking pose while Shizun scanned the contents of the folder. Not even 30 seconds passed before Shizun said ah, Tsunade-sama? What is it Shizun? Tsunade asked as she took another swig from her sake bottle leaving her cheeks pink. This isn't the report from when Jiraiya took Naruto and Sakura to the land of rice paddies, it's the mission report from when Kakashi, Naruto, Sakura, and Lee went to the land of the moon. Oh, said Tsunade as the room got uncomfortably quiet, at one point the wind blew in from the window. One, two, three, aye. Tsunade-sama you gave them the wrong information. Crap, I should really stop drinking on the job Tsunade said as she eyed her bottle of sake. One, two, three. Tsunade just took another swig from the bottle. Tsunade-sama, how can you be so calm? Oh relax Shizun. Most of them chunins and one is a special janin. I am sure they can figure something out and besides, I gave them a large sum of money which is as much of a solution by itself. Don't you mean that money is the problem? Shizun sighed commented as Tantan agreed by saying ui. Um Tsunade Sama said Kakashi, catching both Tsunade and Shizun's attention, I've been thinking. Sure everything that man from Akatsaki said was probably a lie, but there is one lie that I am not so sure about, the man said that Taki's Jinchuriki loathed humanity, that might have been a lie, but the way Jinchurikis are treated, I am not so sure, and besides that, I am sure Akatsuki would at least gather information about their targets. I see Tsunade this could turn out to be very troublesome for Naruto, and this is completely different compared to Gara. Well besides the fact that this Jinchuriki is more powerful. Ah, how so Shizun asked she then noticed how Kakashi was scratching his cheeks and has his uncovered eye in the form of a smile. Tsunade put her hands together, interlocking her fingers using them to hide her mouth, she was still facing Kakashi when she said, Shizun if you were alone in the world and you figured out that some one of the opposing sex was the same as you, what would you do? Um, I guess I would try to be friends with that person Shizun said with her index finger on her chin looking up as if she was searching something. Alright, let me put it to you this way, if you put two animals of the same species and opposite sex alone, together, in the same room, what would happen? Well they would Shizun gasped in realization of what her master was getting at, you don't mean. Yes Shizun. Tsunade yelled as she pushed her chair back and stood up, that girl would more than likely try to claim Naruto as her mate if that's the case. She would sharpen his pencil, sheath and unsheathe his sword repeatedly, polish his tool, steal his innocence, make his ducky squirt in her damp cavern, hide his meaty pickle inside her fleshy jar, pop her cherry with cocky doodle doo, use his meaty kanai to carve herself the big O, taste his tootsie roll, ride his meaty shaft, drive his pipe into her damp sanctum of innocence, deflower him through moral breaking acts, put his fleshy stick in her wet hole, and all the above. Gia. Suande sama that's too much, Shizun yelled as she covered her blush filled face. That brat is really lucky. If that's the case, he is put in a win-win situation, if he surrenders to the temptation then he becomes a man, if he resist, hell learn how to resist a Kanoichi's greatest weapon, her sex appeal. Tsunade yelled as she put her hand in the air showing much amiable emotion. Uh, I think she drank a little too much Shizun Kakashi side commented, suddenly Tsunade fell to her desk and started snoring, well at least something like that won't happen again, for tonight anyway. Oh by the way Shizun Shizun looked at Kakashi, how did Tsunade keep this knowledge from Danzo and keep him from being curious enough to send his route to spy on the group? She, she also sent Sai with them. Sai? Shizun nodded yes he is a part of Danzo's route. Tsunade figured that if she sent Sai with them, Danzo wouldn't get too suspicious of this mission. I see and I also heard that Tenzo filled in the spot for me so why didn't he go? He is unavailable at the moment. Tsunade sent him on a mission to Land of the Sea to collect the report from ninjas. I see, well you should probably send an apology letter to Naruto and the others. Already on it said Shizun as she began writing a letter, oh and does Naruto know what he word loathed mean? 
Um I am not sure about that one to be honest said Kakashi scratching each cheek. Why do you ask? To give Naruto a heads up before he gets into the situation Tsunade Sama described. I see, well in that case, you better just put the definition of the word I am sure Sai won't know what it means, but the others would. Oh uh, about that, only Naruto is aware that they are retrieving a Jinshuriki. Only Naruto knows. All the same, stick to the definition I am sure he'll figure it out eventually, how long do you think it'll take before he tells them? Hopefully, by the end of the mission if everything goes smoothly. Okay. Fair enough I guess, do you need any help before I go home? Uh, yeah actually, could you arrange those files in order for me please? Shizune asked as she pointed to a large stack of folders that made Naruto's stuffed wallet look like child's play. Sure, no problem he said as he began his ordeal, present time. Hey guys, I can see the sea the sea, Naruto yelled as the group was running. Soon we will be able to stop running and just ride the boat the rest of the way said Ino with a smile on her face. Yeah and maybe well get something to eat Choji said with drool coming out of his mouth. Quit thinking on your stomach, Ino yelled at Choji as they continued to run at normal, for ninjas, speed. I can't help it, we didn't eat breakfast before we left and we didn't eat that much when we stopped for a break, Choji said as his stomach rumbled. But you ate two bags of chips in the morning, and we didn't eat anything yet no one but you complained. When we stopped and ate some of our rations, while Tenton refilled our canteens, you ate the most Ino yelled back. But still, Choji said with a sad look as his stomach rumbled again. PP please don't start arguing Hinata said just loud enough for them to listen, I mean we can eat something when we get there, right? Hinata said but she was sadly ignored as Ino kept telling Choji how he should improve and lose weight. Hey Shikamaru what time does the boat leave again? Naruto called out. At 6 in the afternoon Shikamaru called back, judging by the position of the sun, I'd say we are at least an hour early. Really? That's great. Why is that Ino asked taking a break from Choji as she looked at Naruto with a sly look on her face, come on give us a hint Ino thought come on tell us that you are getting married already. Well it's just, I don't want to keep Fu waiting, it might make her feel bad or something, I don't really want to give her the impression that we're bad people in any sort of way. Bingo. You never care that much because you always end up proving to someone that you're more than just mindless idiot, oh I see Ino said out loud I bet you can't wait to get there, huh? Yep replied Naruto with a smile oblivious to whatever Ino was hinting at. Success. Thought Ino once again this should prove that you are engaged to Fu. I bet I can beat you guys to the boat, Naruto yelled as he ran ahead of the group. Yosh. I will meet your challenge Naruto, Lee yelled as he followed behind. How the hell can these guys run any faster, Shikamaru muttered under his breath what a drag. The group had ended up running just about all day. They have been running under the hot sun and they had only taken one break and that was to have a small quick lunch and some food pills refilled their canteens with water, after that they began running again to get to the port before the ferry left. As the group made it to town they saw that it was a kind of busy town, there were markets to their left and rights, most of the building were two stories while some were three and took of the space of two store, there were cheap in her and there, as the group progressed they found Naruto and Lee standing in front of the sea at the edge of the city but for some reason both of them were looking around frantically for something, almost desperately. Oi Naruto what's wrong Kiba called out do you think you finally found? The boat Naruto yelled back, effectively cutting Kiba off I don't see it anywhere. What? There's supposed to be a boat here, Shikamaru yelled as he dashed up with the rest of the group in pursuit behind him, when he made it to the clearing where Naruto and Lee where he looked around to find that he couldn't find the ferry anywhere? Hey isn't that it? He heard Ino say, he turned to around to look at Ino to find that she was pointing to his left, he turned to see modern looking boat with sails on it, he looked at the name that was printed on the hull of the vessel. Umi no ya, Ocean's Arrow. Trust me I took a while to find the alternate translations in order for the Japanese name to be short, and then he noticed the nets. Ino that's a fishing boat not a ferry said Shikamaru as he looked around and found a chubby brunette with a clipboard on her hands and a pencil resting on her ear. Her hair was tied back into a bun and she had red lipstick on that matched her outfit. Not that it fit her that much, green pearl like earrings, and to much eyeliners and a mole under her the right edge of her lip. Walking in their direction, ah excuse me Shikamaru called out to her. Hum, 
She said as she stopped and looked at him then out the group in whole before she diverted her attention back to him what do y'all want, kid? She asked in very gruff voice as she continued to scan through the contents on her clipboard. Um we were wondering about what happened to the fairy that was here. Which one? She asked without wasting a glance at him as she flipped a page back on her clipboard. We have three fairies. One takes you to the land of earth and the land of waterfalls. Another takes you to the land of hot water and the land of frost. The last one takes you to the land of lighting and that one. Shikamaru said cutting her off that's the one. Land of lighting. Kosapur village. Oh that one? Sorry kid it left about four days ago she said as she pushed all the papers she had on her clipboard back and said no wait three days ago. What but right here it says Shikamaru said as he took out a folder that was stuffed up just like Naruto's wallet he was about to take out something that was inside the folder when a sharp cry of bird broke the atmosphere. Naruto looked up like everyone else and stated that's messenger bird he then put up his right arm. The bird came down and perched on his arm. Shikamaru retrieved the note from the bird's leg and quickly scanned through it. Uh never mind, when does the boat back come back? Shikamaru said he lifted his arms to let the bird know that it could leave and did. Let's see said the chubby lady as she quickly scanned through the page she was on. Well if everything goes well they might be back in maybe 8 days. What? Eno yelled but they left 3 days ago so wouldn't it be around 5 days since it takes about 4 days to get there. Eno the information we received was actually wrong. As it turns out that Tsunade Sama used the wrong report to make the information for us. Therefore any information we have about the fairy is probably wrong. Good call said the chubby lady it's actually about 6 day to get there, 5 if you're lucky, 8 if you have bad luck to get stuck in ridiculous weather. I see, then that means we have no choice but to wait said Shino as both Shikamaru and the women nodded. Uh man, but that means it'll be 2 weeks before we get to Kosapur village Naruto complained. Hey are you guys heading to Kosapur village? A voice said behind the group. Every turned their heads to see a little boy at the age of nine or so with spiky blonde hair, wearing sandals and beige colored pants and a white shirt. I heard that the boat ever there he pointed to the boat that Ino pointed at earlier is heading there. Really Naruto asked with hope in his eyes as the little boy nodded to him. Hold on, Naruto, what makes you think they would take us there, free or not said Shikamaru with a stern look. They probably wouldn't do it for free the chubby lady said as the group turned their attention back to her but the reason they're heading the Kosapur village is because they need a crew. I see, so we can offer them our help for a ride to Kosapur village right? Said Tenten asked. Yeah, it's beats waiting two whole weeks Naruto said as he already starting making his way to the boats. Damn, I just wanted to be lazy Shikamaru muttered under his breath as the rest of the group started heading in the same direction. He sucked the in the salty air and sighed. Why couldn't I be a cloud? Shikamaru asked as he started running to catch up with the group. But why did the note say to tell Naruto that loathed means? To dislike someone or something greatly? Foo. I have troublesome feeling about you Shikamaru thought in his head as he sucked in air. Great now I am late for my appointment said the chubby lady as she too began running only she was heading into town. The little boy just stood there for a moment before he said I wonder if they have anything do with that green haired girl. I guess not they wouldn't waste their time on her, right? Why would they? A girl blonde hair and blues wearing a tomboyish get up behind him said, just because they're ninjas, it doesn't mean that the ninjas we saw three days ago have something to do with them she said with her arms folded, in any case it's not our business and besides the boy turned his head around to look at her, you're supposed to take me out on a date, right she said with a smile on her face as she walked to the town. The boy sighed yeah I guess, so do you want to try out the new ice cream? Yes. I've been trying to tell ask you that the entire day but it's like your mind was gone. He <laughs> he sorry, well let's go he said as he went running into town. Huh? H h hey. Wait up she yelled as she changed her pace. The duo ran past the chubby lady who was now jogging. Ah young love, there's nothing cuter she said as she tried to run a little faster. Somewhere out on the sea. I fucking hate that bitch you asshole. A guy with silver hair yelled letting her live for little while longer was bad enough my for religion, but this, I have to fucking inject her every 15 hours? I fucking hate you, you piece of shit. Look there's a high bounty on her in the land of earth and there is no way I am going to let that bounty get past me. A man wearing a turban wrapped around his face said as both he and the silver haired man are both wearing black cloaks with red clouds on it, and not just injecting her with the serum. 
You also have to rough her up so that she remains weak. Fuck that. I just want to fucking kill her. Why didn't we let Zetsu take her fucking body? I mean just being around her is making me feel fucking sinful. You that religion of yours, it annoys me, oh yeah, your fucking money obsession annoys the fuck out of me you money grabbing asshole. If there's a god the man in the turban thought in his head as he mindlessly looked at companions cursing at him, please kill this nuisance for me. At the port where Konoha 11 and Sai are currently in. Here we are said Naruto as the group finally caught up to him. Naruto you should nt run ahead of us like that Sakura said as she caught her breath and scowled at him. He he sorry he said as he rubbed the back of his head with an apologetic smile on his face. Well let's ask if we can Naruto suddenly stop dead in his tracks which earned a few stares from his friends. NN Naruto are you okay? Hanada a she looked at him with a very worried look on her face. Gia. Naruto screamed as he grabbed his head and put hand to his face as blood started to come out of his nose gashing out rapidly as he fell to the ground. What's with this image? What's with this weird feeling in my mouth Naruto thought as he started to lose consciousness. First his sight went out as soon as he hit the ground his hearing started to become impaired. He couldn't tell what people were saying or who said them. All he heard was Buruto. Dwat happened. Fuat Fuaz wabbly bwasta BWC clash ofu shradro kum sutsu. After that he gained his sight back but it was still fuzzy he tried to get up to stand on one knee but he was forced back down. Vont Fuv. Yast stay still he heard someone say as he was forced against the ground. Why did that image come to my head? Why did it feel like I did it? Naruto thought as he felt the tightness in his pants. Just this once was he glad that he was forced onto the ground. Shadow clone the shadow clone that Naruto left behind had cleaned up the mess him and his friends made and helped Dai and Akira fix some stuff as well. He did some manual labor that wouldn't destroy him. In fact he had done nothing but physical jobs all day and, sadly, Sasama hasn't had the time to take a shower all day until 20 minutes ago. Naruto was sure she was already dressed and changed because it didn't take that long for him to get dressed so he assumed that it was the same for everyone. It took him while to find the room but he was out of breath for a moment the clone almost made himself disappear but he thought it would be rude to Sasama so he refrained from doing so. Nowadays, most people would knock on the door to a bathroom, room, and or front door of a house before they just walk in. But Naruto being Naruto, even if it was a clone, just walked into Sasama's room. Hey Sasama Naruto said as he entered the room with his eyes closed and closed the door shut behind him I finished the last chore already Naruto said as he continued to walk forward with his eyes closed, is there anything else you want me to do? Naruto asked as he opened his eyes, as soon as he did his eyes widen as he stood witness to the view before him. There before him was Sasama in her birthday suit that that mother nature gave her. Her body was facing away from him so he could mostly see her back but her torso turned in his direction. Revealing her breast in all their glory but her nipples were covered by her arms as they were reaching up to her hair that had somehow reached a brighter shade of orange, but what really got Naruto besides her cute butt was her face. She stared at him with the most innocent look in the world. Suddenly a ray of light from her window touched her and her body began dazzle him as droplets that were still on her body began to glimmer make her look like a fallen arcane angel, maybe she forgot. Gia, NNN Naruto. She yelled as her face got red whilst she used her left arm to cover her breast and she used her right hand to cover her sanctum of purity. Naruto, having finally realized his predicament blushed red, SSSSS Naruto wants to sorry but he kept saying SSS he really didn't know what to do in a situation like this. Naruto looked away but he really couldn't help his desire to take another peek. When he finally found the right words Naruto moved forward while looking away. Sasama I am sorry, I didn't mean to do the -e is. Naruto sad as she slipped on a puddle of water, Naruto regained balance but slipped again, and for some reason this kept going on. Naruto said Sasama as she moved forward before she slipped on the water that trickled off her body wa. She yelled as she slipped and her foot went forward sending her body down backwards. Sasama. Naruto called out as he heard her scream as she tried to move forward whoa. Naruto yelled as he slipped once again and was sent airborne. Thump. Smack. Uh Naruto said but he really didn't feel any pain because something broke his fall, whatever he fell on it was soft, wet and warm, despite the wetness Naruto kind of liked it, he licked his lips or at least he tried to but he ended up licking something fleshy, soon afterwards he heard a hua. Come out from a voice ahead of him, he opened his eyes to find a nipple and not only that but it was Sasama's nipple, 
Naruto quickly backed up to find that he had landed on top of her. SS sorry I didn't mean to do that after her said that he got a better look her body. She way she lying down on her back, the she way her face look innocent even with a blush. The way her nipples hardened caused Naruto to breathe a little heavier. Naruto's nose felt weird, his heart started beating faster and harder. Naruto grabbed his nose and hit his erecting kanai with his arm as he felt his pants get a little tight. Naruto looked at Sasama again and noticed the way she was breathing, every time she exhaled there were cracks in it and how her opulent chest mimicked the rhythm of the way she sucked in air and release it, God, the way she looked cute and innocent had a great affect on Naruto as he started breathing even heaver and started having cracks in his voice, Sasama opened her eyes and looked at him fats when Naruto couldn't take it anymore. Sorry, he yelled with blush filled face as she poofed out of existence. Sasama lied there for a while before she calmed her breath down, she sat upright and touched the boob that Naruto licked. Last time he just grabbed she said in her mind this time he licked my nipple, what's next? She thought in her head as she smiled, she got up and walked to her window and peered out as she thought Naruto. The man with silver hair stared at the girl who was chained to the hull of boat. He was crouched down with his chin in between his thumb and index figure, he wasn't the only one staring at the female. There were three guys along with him and one girl who were around the age of 17, all the men were well toned and with a good looking farmer's tan, two had red hair while the other was blonde and they all came with eyes that would woo any a girl they came across. They also had a face that you could trust in the same height, the red heads had a bowl like haircut that came down to the ends of their noses and was cut into an upside down V to allow one eye to be visible, one had the left eye visible while the other had the right one visible. The blonde just had his short hair combed back to allow a clear view of his well-formed chin and shades, the girl had a well-toned body. She wasn't as tanned as the men were but she was kind of tanned. She had smooth black hair that cascaded past her waist, she wasn't exactly small or tall, she was the middle man, air woman, her bust were average and she also had green emerald eyes that would grab the attention of any men, all in all. She was the type of girl that would make a guy feel like he wasn't dating someone out of his league or that he just got lucky, that he ended up with the one, the missing piece to a big puzzle called life. Exalted one said one of the men catching the silver-haired Mont's attention. The fuck you want? He replied without looking at him, his whole concentration was focused on the women in front of him. Is it okay to leave her alive? I mean I feel like a sinner just being around her. I also feel the same way. He Dan Sempe said the petite teenage girl next to him, I feel, bad around her, and not in the good way. Your shitty feelings are spot on replied He Dan in a bored manner for a bunch of fucking pledges you guys aren't half bad, no, it's not fucking right to leave her alive, that's why I ordered you pieces of shit. Not to touch her, if you guys touch her you will have to purify yourself which is a real pain in the ass because of how fucking long it is for me teach and perform he replied. Then why let her live? Asked another one of the pledges, one of the red-headed look-alike. And what is the purification for ask the other red-headed look-alike? He Dan sighed now this is one of the reasons why I hate being immortal he muttered under his breath. The purification is for you guys not to get involved in my sin because if you get involved it would require you motherfuckers to kill her at the same time I do and I fucking hate sharing kills. This only applies for victims who have been alive for more than three days after being allowed to live by one of us. The reason why I let her live for now, it's part of my fucking job and it's mostly because of my fucking asshole of a partner, he dan sighed again what a fucking pain in the ass. Quit complaining a man in turban said and, to be exact, it was a hot pink turban. Yeah yeah, just shut the fuck up and go make you shitty or a pinker or something you fucking jackass. Pink huh? What about you and that pink robe of yours the man in the pink turban returned? Fuck you Kakuzu. I am only wearing this because you want the fucking bounty, you money grubbing asshole. And besides, it's kinda growing on me he said whispered the last part to the girl. Look as Akatsuki's treasurer I must collect the funds for our expenses, like say the pink turban and your pink robe. What a waste of money Kakuzu said as he fixed his turban. Money. You used my money to the buy the pink pieces of shit, and no one calls you our fucking treasurer. I do said a voice that come from the section of the hull of ship that was on top of Hidan. Fucking shut it, Zetsu. No one asked you, Hidan yelled at the voice above him. A grayish white body emerged from above the group's head directly from the hull of the ship, Utachi, 
Looks like the pink robe made you bitchier ha 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 the white Zetsu laughed. Hey hey, fuck you Zetsu. Why are you even here? Well, 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 the robe makes you forgetful too ha 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 ha. I am here to help make sure nothing happens to Biju, remember how we told you guys to leave the Jinchuriki to us. Well Kakuzu said there was a large bounty on her in Iwagakir, village hidden by the rocks. We said it would be too much of a hassle but Kakuzu kept insisting while you kept bitching. So we came to a compromise, you took the Jinchuriki but you must be wearing a pink robe or turban. I am here too for extra security and that you stick to your end of deal Zetsu finished much to Hidan's nerve. Why can't both you and the other Zetsu be here? Kakuzu asked as he observes the weird man. Fuck that. I don't want either of the two here, Hidan yelled but he was quickly ignored as he was being watched by the pledges. Neither of them are here, I am just a clone ha 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 ha, how's that for a shocker? The white Zetsu clone laughed out. What good would a clone do us? Kakuzu asked as he started moving to the other end of the room. Oh, I am a special clone, you see, oh, I am sure Kakuzu said with a sarcastic tone in his voice as he reached his destination and grabbed a silver-colored briefcase and opened it. Some sort of mist or vapor came out of it with a sizzling sound when it was opened, but it didn't stop Kakuzu from reaching inside, it's time isn't? Kakuzu asked without looking it's time to give her the dose. That's why you appeared before us, correct? Kakuzu said as he took out syringe with a pale liquid that contained a few tinges of green. Haha you read my mind, you're both fucking annoying Hidan said yelled as he turned to leave. And where do you think you're going Kakuzu asked as he watched Hidan leave. If I have to fucking touch that fucking sin bitch one more time Hidan said but was cut off by Zetsu. Don't ya mean fucking queen? The clone said with that weird smile plastered on its face that for some reason doesn't seem to change. Fuck you. I am out. Pledges beat the fucking bitch Hidan said as he directed his attention the J pledges but he was cut off by Zetsu again. Queen. Fucking shut it. Just beat the bitch up. It'll do the ritual later, and you better pay attention cause ain't teaching it again. Back at the poor Dao. What the heck was that? Naruto said as a pair of hands now helped him instead of pushing him down to the ground. Naruto, what happened? He heard the familiar voice of Sakura say behind him. I don't know Naruto said as sat up straight and rubbed his head, my head started hurting, it was like something was banging my head with a hammer from the inside and then my vision started fading away along with my hearing and then I Naruto cut himself off, there was no way in hell he was going to tell Sakura, and everybody else, about the things he somehow felt he did with Sasama. And then you, Sakura continued thinking Naruto forgot to get him to remember whatever he was about to say. Nope, that's about it Naruto said rather fast as he felt his face get hotter. You sure Sakura said as she wasn't entirely convinced because the symptoms you described Eren enough to cause bleeding from the Sakura was about to say nose but Naruto cut her off. Nope, nothing else. It must have been something caused by the fight last night Naruto said rather quickly again as he stood but he felt kinda of dizzy and started swaying a bit before he recomposed himself. But that was almost a day ago Sakura pointed out. Well relax, it was just some weird headache and it now it's over so I guess it's all good right? Uh, Naruto said Tenten that sounds really irresponsible. Yeah, what if it's serious Eno added. Hanada also wanted to say something but she was too shy to say anything. She had Eno's crazy idea stuck in her head, she just felt like she barely even breath around him unless she knew whether or not the idea was a reality. Naruto getting married, another girl, taking her dream. Yeah Naruto said Sakura as her face formed scowl I can't just let this slide, I need to much to Naruto's relief, Sakura was interrupted. Um excuse me a female voice said, the group turned to see a woman light brown smooth hair that seemed to reach her neck, she had red bandana with fish decor covering her neck and her left ear had a piercing of a white cat with orange and brown spots with its right paw up, she also has light brown eyes, the lady couldn't be more than 25 years old, her breasts are of a regular size and her lips looked so soft and she had tan that some girls would kill for, is everything alright? Yeah, everything's fine Naruto said while he scratched the back of his head I just had a major headache that's all Naruto began to sweat a little as he felt Sakura's glare on him. Oh I see she said with a smile as she to walk towards the fishing boat that sat at the dock. Um excuse Shikamaru called out to lady as she let out a him, and turned around to look at the him you wouldn't happen to know where we can find the captain of that fishing boat would you? 
I do she said as she began to observe the group with a raised eyebrow now what would a group of ninjas want with the captain? Nothing of violence and sorts, we heard that the vessel set a course to Kosapur village Shino said we also heard that the ship was still in need of a crew and therefore cannot fish properly at the moment, so we were hoping that we could offer our services in return for ride to Kosapur village. Oh she said as before she began smiling well lucky for you guys, you all can stop looking, because you're looking at the captain. Wow really? Naruto said in surprise, yeah, really the brunette said in tone full of venom whilst she put her hands on her hips got a problem with it? The entire group stiffened at Naruto's action. Oh sorry Naruto said as he scratched the back of his head I was just surprised that a little boy was captain of a ship already. Huh she said in surprise as she raised an eyebrow, then she felt a tug on her shirt, she looked down and to see a kid with same colored eyes as hers and messy brown hair that was darker than hers, he was tan wearing shorts and a green shirt with a blue lightning bolt on it, oh she said what is it, Nishi, what's the matter? Is it almost time to go? he asked as he looked at her with gleaming eyes. Almost but not yet she said with a sweet smile on her face just go wait on the boat, okay? Okay he said as he smiled back and made his way back to the boat. So how about it? Shikamaru asked as he caught her attention in exchange for a lift, we'll be your temporary crew. That way you can fish on your way to Kosapur village and therefore earn some profit. Before she responded it was silent as she pondered while she stared them down him sounds like a good offer she said as she smiled which really lightened the mood but she said as she once again stiffened the group slightly you are going to have to buy your own food. We have only enough for our small crew that includes the reserves for emergency she said as she kept smiling and that mud better be potty trained she said as she pointed at Akamaru. Kiba got tick mark and was about to yell at the lady about Akamaru being full blood but Shino and Hinata already had his mouth and his arms restrained, she resumed her smile and said welcome aboard, my name is Ryo Sango, but you can all call me Captain Sango, the ship leaves in 30 minutes so you better be ready she said as she turned around and headed to the boat, Naruto smiled before he felt the familiar sensation of pain on his head and let out an OW. He was punched. The punch had enough force to put him down into his knees what was that for? Naruto asked as he looked at the attacker which happened to be Sakura. You idiot! Why on earth could have made you think that, that little boy was the captain? Sakura bellowed. Sorry, it's just that when she said you're looking at the captain I saw the little boy walk up to her, so, Naruto trailed off as Shikamaru gave off a lazy sigh. Naruto he said usually when someone says that, they are referring to themselves. Well sorry but how was I supposed to know? It's called common sense, you should learn it sometime. A throat clearing could be heard behind the two, Shikamaru and Sakura turned around to find Sai smiling in his usual way uh. I hope I am not interrupting any important lectures but the fishing vessel leaves in half an hour, so instead of arguing should Antiwi collect some provisions for the trip? Shikamaru sighed why does everything have to be so troublesome, okay, anybody have some basic ideas of what we should get? Well it's a ride that will last for at least a week if we're lucky Shino started so maybe fruit to start it off because. Well later guys Naruto said as he started to wave a goodbye as he headed back into town. Naruto, where do you think you're going? Shino asked as he angrily pushed up his shades. Oh, I am going to get some stuff, and well you guys obviously don't need my help so. But you can't leave right now, why? Because this is a team discussion, meaning, it involves all of us. Shino argued as our blonde shinobi continued to walk. Well if you want my say in it, get a bunch of instant ramen, this kinda ticked Shino off since Naruto wasn't taking it seriously, or rather, he wasn't taking Shino seriously, and besides Shikamaru probably knows a lot of stuff about the dangers of the sea and Sakura should know what we should get for any medical reasons, right? Naruto asked as he turned his around to look at Shino. Shino was about to say something else but unfortunately a blonde girl named Ino covered his mouth. Go right head Naruto, just remember to be back here in 20 minutes, so don't take too long Ino said with a, fake, sweet smile as well as an eye smile while she continued to cover Shino's mouth while trying to shake off some bugs that were crawling up her arm at the same time. Alright, later. The blonde called back before he stopped in his tracks and rushed back to where Shikamaru was standing right almost forgot. Shikamaru can you look over my bag? I don't think carrying it around with me would be the best idea because I could easily forget it somewhere. The explanation seemed decent, 
He had an innocent smile on and it really did seem to be the best option available. Shikamaru just stared at Naruto as his right eye twitched a couple of times, instead of the innocent smile Naruto had on his whiskered face. Shikamaru saw a deviant and sly grin with dark clouds in the background with the occasional lighting here and there then the big loud crackle of thunder. A bead of sweat started to trail down his neck. No he said calmly, he didn't want to give Naruto the impression that he was, in any way, scared of his pranks. E.H. Why not? Naruto whined as his face was quickly replaced with shock and confusion. What do I look like to you, a babysitter? Ah, oh, but what if I lose my backpack? Naruto argued as he tried to convince Shikamaru to get the load off his back. Then just don't take it off Shikamaru said in a rather cold manner. Ah oh man, but I really didn't feel like carrying it around Naruto whined as he once again turned around and started heading back into town. Shikamaru took out his canteen of water, opened it and brought to his lips. For some reason he just could drink the water until he knew Naruto was out of his sight, when Naruto was finally out of sight he started as the water was sliding down his esophagus a certain blonde smacked him hard on his back, that caused the water to gush out of his mouth in manner where the person felt like he was puking and water gushed out of his nose. Shikamaru coughed a lot thanks to the irritation left in his throat, he turned to look at his attacker, Ino. What the hell? Shikamaru yelled as he grabbed the canteen, dropped his head backward and drank a lot of water, the irritation disappeared. But Shikamaru was still catching his breath. Shikamaru. Ino said with that menacing mother tone, Naruto is getting married might be Shikamaru quickly added before he continued drinking water, we have to be supportive remember. Yeah Sakura said it's probably not marriage but, something is making Naruto act weird and secretive. E.H. Ino said as she raised an eyebrow what's make you say it's not marriage? Well besides the fact that Tsunade-sama said to be careful and be on high alert and who could forget your target is dangerous Sakura stated, for all we know, it's probably someone Naruto knows and is on bad terms with, so maybe he has to do whatever it takes to make that Kanoichi comfortable as possible so that he could get on good terms with her. Oh Ino said with a less hearted resolve that's right, that could also be another theory, but I still think he's getting married. Well I don't know about marriage but he doesn't seem to know who this foo girl is Sai said with a fake smile as he interrupted their conversation. His face then changed into a serious one as well as his tone. When Tsunade Same gave us the description, he didn't react at all, so it's more than likely that Naruto is not on bad terms with this person as well as a good one. But Naruto is still in possession of information that makes him worried about our well-being and wants me be careful of what I say around this girl as to not upset her, he said. Then his seriousness disappeared almost immediately as he began to smile again oh would anyone be interested in hearing my theory? I am happy to share Sai said as he kept smiling his usual way. Yeah sure, why not Shikamaru said just keep on adding to the pile, we're bound to figure out what exactly is Naruto's relation with Fu before he tells us, right? Shikamaru said in a very sarcastic way to the point where everyone knew it was sarcasm. Unfortunately, Sai didn't pick up on this one. Well, it's good to see you're very optimistic about this, Shikamaru Sai said as he still healed the smile, but it'll tell you another time, right now we have to collect provisions for the trip and well, something actually piqued my interest, so, Sai trailed off as he began walking in the same direction Naruto went. Right said Sakura let's go Shikamaru as she started heading for the closest market. Right, be with ya yeah in a second Shikamaru said, well if you say so Sakura said as she shrugged. Hey Ino Tenten said maybe you're right, I mean Naruto is starting to act a bit more mature. How so, Tenten Ino asked, well, he's been trying too hard to keep everyone's spirits up, remember what he did when we took that break earlier today? Yeah I remember he told jokes and whatnot. yeah and not only that, since I am fixing his jacket I thought he would have done me a favor, so when he offered to fill the canteens, he told me that he would repay his debt some other way instead of just doing that. So maybe he's trying to save me a favor or he's trying to Tenten would have continued but Shikamaru, who was close enough to hear their conversation, interrupted them. Wait, hold on, Naruto refilled the canteens? Shikamaru asked, he seemed a little pale. Yeah he did Tenten said, come on, Sakura yelled as she was far ahead Tenten, Ino, Hanada. I need your help, I can't carry everything ya know, same goes for you guys. Coming. Shikamaru just stood there, he slowly put his head down to stare at the empty canteen in his hand, he didn't seem to have any expression, 
He just stared at the canteen hoping to find something, a clue maybe? A signal? Maybe some sort of sign that would let him know what was in it besides the water, it was clear that he was never going to know, so he did the most logical thing any could do in his situation, he walked over to the docks, he looked at his wavy reflection in the water, he put finger in mouth and tried to reach his throat. So what do you guys think Kiba asked what do you think Naruto has to do with all of this? Hum Lee hummed as he closed his eyes and touched his chin I hate to do assumptions because of how unyouthful they can turn out to be, but he suddenly nodded head but Eno's conclusions sounds very reasonable. I agree Neji said just as they heard sounds of puking, they all whipped their head around to see Shikamaru kneeling over the dock puking his guts out. Oi Shikamaru, you okay? Choji yelled as he rushed to his side. Shikamaru stopped puking for a while, taking in large intakes of air before he muttered so goddamn troublesome before he made a very uncomfortably noise, grabbed his mouth and puked blurred. Sai was walking the streets looking for Naruto, he was sure no one noticed what he noticed so he knew he had to take this opportunity to investigate while nobody knew, when Naruto was leaving he was able to catch a glimpse of Naruto smirking from the one of the windows of one of building near the docks, it seemed that Naruto did not intend for Shikamaru to guard his bag, Say assumption is that Naruto offered the bag fully knowing that Shikamaru would not accept, for what reason though? Sai didn't know, but he knew that Naruto knew that if he offered his bag it would make people a little less curious about what's inside, now the question is, what are you hiding Uzumaki? Sai muttered under his breath, he scanned the area for the said blonde but he didn't find a single trace of the person anywhere, actually there wasn't a single soul around, where are you? Sai said as he continued looking. Hey buddy Sai heard man say. Hum Sai said as he stopped in his track and turned left to, to see who called out to him. It was man in a dark alleyway. His body was covered in shadows but his eyes were clearly visible. I got whatcha need, he said in a low voice. Sai looked around and then pointed to himself and the shaded man nodded. Sai shrugged and walked in the dark alleyway to see exactly what the man was offering. Thank you, please come again said the clerk lady as Naruto walked out of a store with more items in his backpack. You're welcome Naruto said back with a smile on his face, since he had the chance he went back to the shops he found and decided to buy some proper training balloons, and he got it a discount too. The clerk lady was about year older than him and she tried flirting with him but she quickly found that he was oblivious to it and it was only balloons so she said she would give him a 10% discount for a kiss on the cheek. Naruto happily said yes. He's done it a lot of time during his training trip with Jiraiya, seeing how the said person always used his money so, he had to save up, as he headed back to the boat he started pondering one question now what do I do with those weird balloons? He wondered out loud, they were all in a box wrapped in separate packages, he read the box and all it said was fits any size, it feels like nothing's there, guaranteed maximum pleasure, safest there is and what not, what the hell is it for anyway? Where did you get that scroll? Hum Naruto said as he turned his head right to an alleyway where a couple of guys were playing a game of cards. They had a table set up right outside a door to a building, Naruto figured it was some sort of bar because there was a lot of empty bottle neatly stacked outside, mostly sake bottles but there were other brands too. There were four guys playing cards while one was just standing by the door looking tough, he also looked kind of intimidating, he wore shades, had black spiky hair and loose business suit, the only thing he was missing was tie. I got it off the Merc Nin said a man who had a scroll in his hands with a green seal on it, he was wearing black slacks, and some sort silk button up shirt with tropical decorations, he looked old, his hair lost its coloration but it was still neck length. Would that be the one that tried to kill you or the one that you hired? Asked another man who was younger than the one with scroll, actually he looked like the youngest one out of all of them, he had more elegant look to him, he had black laid back hair. A little stash growing on his lips and he is wearing a dark blue button up shirt. It was definitely the one that tried to kill him, I mean think about it, Sonny, would a live mercenary ninja give up a ninjutsu scroll to a rich man without taking a big portion his money? This guy was wearing oval shades, has a brown goat beard and he is bold, he is wearing dull red suit. Hmm, I guess you point there, what do you think Kato? Said the young guy as he turned his head to another guy who seemed to have it low. His suit was a mess, his blonde hair was messy as hell, and he looked kinda pale. Hum? Sorry what he said as he looked up from his cards. Where do you think there got the scroll from? The Merc Nin who tried to kill him or the one who he hired? The one he hired, Fold he said as he put his card down. Now what would make you say that asked the man in the red suit? 
Cuz, I don't think I have anything good to bet on. No not the reason why you folded, I am talking about the scroll. Oh, because the Merc Nin he hired tried to kill him, so he killed the Merc Nin. No really, Onegiri asked the young guy as he tried not to laugh. It's true nodded turns out that some pissed off prick from demon country didn't like how I ended out little business relationship, so he hired a Merc Nin to kill me, I caught wind of it, hired a Merc as extra protection. And would you believe it? I hired the same damn guy who was hired to kill me. Huh, how about that? It's a good thing that you're always prepared said the man in the red suit. Yeah, I swear you have the worst luck with Merc Nin the young guy laughed out. Alright show M the man in the red suit said as everyone showed their cards, ha, huh, three of kind, I win. He said as he brought the winnings that was at the center of the table to him. There seemed to be a mixture of money, golden jewelry, some valuable stones and whatnot, there was even a cool looking knife that seemed more for show rather than cutting. What kind of ninjutsu is it anyway? asked the young guy. An elemental one, um, a wind style one, wait did you say it was wind affinity jutsu? Naruto asked as everyone at the table turned their attention to Naruto. The guy who was just standing by the door just become more intimidating as he directed his shade covered eyes at him. Who the fuck are you? Oh I am Naruto began as he moved a bit closer offering his hand to the shake but the guard blocked his path as cut him off. It was a rhetorical question, dumb ass, I don't give a shit about who you are, now scram. Jeez, all I wanted to do was see if I can buy that scroll. This scroll he asked as he shook the said scroll, Naruto nodded you, want it, you gotta win it in game of poker, kid. Naruto shrugged and said okay, fine by me, he was about to move to the table when the guard stopped him again. Hold on, it's a private game he said, what, but he said. I know what he said, he said that if you want that ninjutsu scroll you got win it in a game of poker, but he never said you could play. The young guy snickered as he shook his head it's alright Genma. Let him play, I like a new player once in a while, what do you guys say? The man in the red suit shrugged it's alright with me if he's got something bet with. I am yeah I got my money with me Naruto said as he began to reach out for some thing. Genma stiffened and was about to react in some way but Naruto held out a hand in a stopping motion as he slowly pulled his toad wallet to show them. Damn that thing looks stuffed Genma said before he nodded his head at it how much you got in there. A lot. I haven't even counted it yet Naruto said as he carefully opened it and took a handful of notes out and showed them that it was just small notes, instead they were a high number. Hey kid said Kato judging by your forehead protector, you're a Konoha ninja, so tell us, what rank are you? Um, Naruto began to say but he was a little hesitant well, okay he was really hesitant to tell them I am still a genin, they all stood there watching him. How does a genin make a lot of money, trust me, I take a lot missions. Granny Sunde actually wants me to take a break, but you know, I want to buy myself some new things for my apartment like a better microwave or new bed. You live alone? The young guy asked as he raised an eyebrow. Yeah, I am an orphan, my parents died when I was little. The guy nodded sorry to hear that, I too lost my parents when I was little, luckily I had an uncle and he raised me, but he wasn't around much so I know what it's like to be alone. He taught me early on about responsibility so some chores that I had to do could be, quite difficult. Naruto smiled yeah, but I guess the good thing about it is the experience, right? Right the guy said as he smiled, he pulled up a chair and motioned Naruto to the seat have a seat, um. Naruto he said as he sat down Naruto Uzumaki huh, nice to meet ya fishcake he chuckled as everyone followed along. Hey, it means maelstrom, okay, ha ha, okay. Okay calm down, Imhiro started pointing around the table the sloppy guy there is Kaide he pointed to the guy in red he's aoi. Aoi? Naruto asked as he eyed the guy, yeah, aoi, something wrong with it? Aoi asked in an angered tone. Oh I mean nothing by it Naruto said quickly it's just your name means blue but you're wearing red. Yeah my name also means the name of some flashy colorful plant and red is kinda flashy. Right said Hiro and this is a wow but we all call him Mr. Onegiri, a hint to what his business is. I see, so what's the game? Five card draw said and don't try cast a genjutsu, these cards are even better than the ones the casinos have. Meaning followed up aoi they're very expensive, so don't ruin them, also there is no chance in hell for any of us will fall for genjutsu. 
And besides that the young guy said as he motioned a hand at the Genma Genma here as Ninja Genma gave a sadistic smirk at Naruto giving him the creeps so don't try anything funny, clear? Crystal Naruto said in acknowledgement, so who's shuffling? That would be me a feminine voice said out of the shadowy part of the alleyway. Ha Naruto said as he turned to see a tanned woman with red neck length hair walking out of the shadows, there was thing on her face that caught Naruto's attention. It was a scar that began at her at the left her of her bottom lip and it trailed down her to her jaw. Her eyes were wearing a tight black suit that wrapped her body so tightly, I mean you could tell she wasn't even wearing a bra, and that she was, excited. I am shuffling she said with a smile on her face as she picked up the deck of cards sitting on the table and began to shuffle. Hisoka is also ninja the man in the red suit said and my personal bodyguard. Uh huh Naruto said obliviously not impressed, what? I am not good enough for ya she said as she pouted. It's not that, it's just that I am in a rush Naruto explained. To where Aoi asked, yeah, I am not going to tell you he said as five cards were tossed at him face down. In one swift movement he placed his entire wallet at the center of the table and said all in. Everyone stared at him, the guards in a surprise. Kaide was awestruck, but the rest had that creepy amused look on their faces. The thing is, Naruto hasn't even looked at his cards. A few days later Naruto woke up feeling a little dizzy and disoriented, sleeping in a boat can do that to yaw once in a while, he yawned as he got up his bed. Bump! Ow he said as he hit head on the top part of the bunk bed, whose damn idea was it put bunk beds in the boat anyway. Sure they were secured to the wall, hell, it was probably part of it, but still, why? Naruto put his orange pants on as he looked for his jacket, he found them near the door to the room, he then heard a metallic knock on door. Na na Naruto from the voice and speech pattern he could tell it's Hanada, you have the night shift. Thanks Hanada he said loud enough for her to hear it, he could hear her faint metallic footsteps disappearing as he put his jacket over his head, he straightened it out so that it would fit comfortably on him, why does night shift suck so much? He asked himself as he left. All I am saying is. Who leaves a coin in the middle of room? Kiba asked as he was on the floor trying to pick up a coin that had a lot in value. Anyone who dropped it Shikamaru said in a bored tone, he was currently sitting on the table finishing his dinner. Yeah well either this boat is magnetic or someone used super glue Kiba said as he gritted his teeth as he tried to scrap said coin off the floor. Probably Naruto Shikamaru muttered to himself, hey pass me a fork or something Kiba said as he continued to try and get the coin. Here Shikamaru said as he tossed him spoon, thistle do Kiba said as he began his attempt to scrape off the coin. It's pointless you know Choji said as he sat down and began his second round, I tried that but it wouldn't come off. Yeah yeah Kiba said as he placed the tip of the spoon under the coin and began his next attempt to get his prize, Trauk. What the hell? Kiba lifted the spoon and saw that the tip broke. Oh, looks like Captain Sango is gonna be mad Sai said as he ate. Ah crap he said seriously who glued this shit? Because whoever it was is going to pay not me. Jeez Sakura said as she washed the dishes getting all worked up for a coin. Hey, the guy didn't have to use some insane super glue. Why do you even want the coin anyway? Ino asked as she dried and put the dishes away. It's not just any coin, Ino Kiba said as both girl turned their heads to give him the look Kiba just sighed and said okay it is, but look, haven't you heard of the myth? If you find one of these kinds of coins right side up, you get this charm that makes girls get all attracted to you and stuff. Um I heard that that could actually be bad thing if you attract girls with psychopathic tendencies Sai said with a fake smile. Well it's not true because Shino began in order for the myth to even be considered, it must have fallen off unintentionally, this was done intentionally because it's glued to the ground. Yeah well, whoever gets that coin is a lucky bastard Kiba said as he sat down, he looked at his dinner, please tell me Hinata cooked this he said as he pointed at the food. Okay. Sakura yelled as she turned around yes, my cooking is not to everyone's taste, but damn it, if you got nothing good to say keep it to yourself. Dooley noted he said as he poked his food, it has some vegetables that looked, kinda overcooked and fish that seemed fried, stir fried with some spices and a couple of bisque, all of it looked just like what Sakura cooked for them on their very first night on the ship, and well, let's just say some people lost their appetite and most of their stomach contents. Relax Ino said me and Mari cooked dinner tonight. Sakura was the one who set the table. Huh, I didn't think that Brad could cook Kiba said as he stabbed his food and began eating. 
Well she can't but she's better than Sakura, my cooking is not that bad, Sakura yelled. Morning. Naruto yawned out loudly as he walked in. Shut up. Naruto flinched as some weird shivered ran through his body. ARRG. He heard her yell as she stormed out the room mumbling stuff about cooking. What happened to her? He asked as he found himself staring at the coin on the ground. Oh you just caught her off at bad time Ino said with a smile oh and you mean good night. Riite Naruto said ah who dropped a coin? Who knows Shikamaru said all we know is that someone glued it to the floor. Um super glued where it breaks stuff or where it's so sticky that you can pull it out slightly but it doesn't come off. The first one Kiba said as he lifted the broken spoon. Right Naruto said as he knelt by the coin and grabbed and turned it clockwise and with a plup it came off. Classic magnetic coin trick Naruto said as he took off some sort of black plastic off the coin. Trust me this is so hard to get and to make. Funny how you know about it Shikamaru said as he stared at him while Kiba looked at him menacingly. Remember how Uruka sensei had bandages on his fingers during the nature walk? Ah oh yeah and he made you do a bunch chores he would do, right? Kiba asked. Well let's just say power outlets and magnetic coins don't mix, they all looked at him and thought he was psycho what? Naruto, how exactly does that thing work Sai asked as he gave his plate to Ino, not caring what was on everybody's mind. Oh well this is special plastic that is made with a good amount of ferrofluid. Um that would be the black stuff on the plastic Naruto said as he waved the black plastic around. Someone found a way to make this thing with that chemical or whatever, but you also need another chemical that was created with both chakra and a special chakra mineral to make the ferrofluid switch its special property of being drawn to magnetic items to making others objects magnetic so that it can be used as some sort of median to magnetically connect two metallic objects together. Everyone just ended up looking at him, what? That has got to be the smartest thing I have ever heard you say, even if only half of it is right Shikamaru said as everyone slowly nodded. Hey come on, I am the number one prankster of Konoha, even I had to look up some stuff and for some reason this got stuck in my head. Wait, if that plastic's so good, then why isn't it not in use for stuff like Ino began but Shikamaru answered for Naruto. Because ferrofluid is actually poisonous substance, therefore, it was quickly taken off the market. Yeah Naruto said as he walked to the window that's why it made me happy to see this thing he smiled all good times he said as he let the wind take black plastic and float away onto the sea. Um Naruto, are you sure that was a good idea you know asked. Yeah, why? Well you know that could pollute the environment, right? Oh relax it just a small piece Naruto said as he took up a seat, hey, how bad is out there tonight? Cloudy, lot of wind, and a chance of rain Kiba said. Well that sucks Naruto said as he stabbed his food and took a bite, hey did Sakura cook this? My cooking is not that bad, they all heard Sakura yell form whatever room she was in. Relax, me and Mari cooked dinner tonight, wow, Mari really is sweet isn't she Naruto said as he happily ate. I know, right Ino said with a smile, sweet girl my ass Kiba muttered. Neji walked the halls of the boat with the orange jacket, which he borrowed from Naruto that was now soaking wet from being plashed a lot by the waves, he then walked into his room which he shared with Lee, hey Lee, how are you holding up? Neji asked as he took off the jacket, Lee just replied by giving a weak groan, their room was just like Naruto's, there was a bunk bed against the wall, Lee was resting on the bottom bunk as Neji approached him. GG good I think, hmm, blue blue he began as fish to back it before he let out a blurg and puked into the bucket. Neji sighed hang in there Lee, just a few more days and we'll be there, the weather seems to be clearing up, so the ride should be getting easier. No 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 sooner, hmm, he said as he grabbed his face and once again emptied his stomach constants into a bucket. Right, um it'll get you something for your seasickness Neji said as he put his shirt on. No need said a feminine voice from the door as the figure showed a bottle of anti-seasickness pills, it was a girl with black smooth hair that reached just below her mid-back who was maybe a couple of years younger than Naruto. IT was tied up in a ponytail and she had a bang going down in the middle of her face just above her nose and two bang on the sides that covered her ears. She has brown eyes and she was dressed in her pink PJs that covered her entire body. Oh, Mari Neji said as he noticed her sweet smile. She kept smiling and said why don't you go and get something to eat. I can look after Lee Kun for a while she said as she remained in her spot. 
Oh how kind of you Neji said as he smiled but Lee paled as he tried to tell Neji no while he shook his head desperately but his unfortunate need to puke his guts out came first. You have been looking after Lee a lot lately. Yeah, I actually think he enjoys my company Lee wanted to say something but damn it was he green. Well, it'll leave him in your hands then if it's not a problem. Oh it's not problem at all she said as she walked towards Lee. Well I guess it'll leave you to it then Neji said as she left Leg got up and tried to reach him but it was no good. Neji has already left the room and let the door shut. Lee left his green mouth open as he stared at the door hoping Neji would come back. What's the matter Lee Kuhn? She asked with a sweet voice as well as closed but confused look don't you want to be with me she asked in a dark voice as she opened her eyes as she lowered her head to look a bit more intimidating as shadowed creeped upon her face reaching her the end of her nose. Nnn no Lee said as he laid back in his bead and trembled. Sorry I didn't hear you correctly she said in a venomous but playful voice. N no Mari sama oh and why not she asked sounding a little hurt as she shook the bottle again. Oh, by the looks of it, it seems like two pills won't do it this time. Five would probably do the trick she said as she grinned. Lee couldn't control his body anymore. He trembled as his fears took over. Mari began moving towards Lee making her footstep very audible as she as her dark grin got darker and darker. With each step Lee trembled even more, Mari loved this, it was like watching a ninja dog squirm, now we're going to play my favorite game, it's called Mari says, but of course you already know how it goes she said as she sat by the bed as she wiped away a few strands of hair, same rule, if you follow my instructions you get a pill, after all, why are you the only one who gets to feel better right? Lee only had one phrase stuck in head as he trembled, protect me, Gai sensei. Man that was great, Naruto said as he handed his plate to Ino who smiled thanks then she grabbed a small wrapped package and handed it to Naruto here, in case you get hungry. Oh, thanks Ino, I really appreciated Naruto said as he got up, well, I better go Naruto said. Yeah you should, it's gonna start raining cats and dogs outside Ino said as she put some plates away. Crap you serious? Yep. Oh man this sucks. Naruto said as he walked outside. Well, you were the last one on the boat Ino called out. Yeah yeah could be heard through the halls. Then a man walked in, sort of, he's 22 years old, brown hair. Little beard had the usual fishing attire, and was smoking. He must be a piece of work. I mean you should quit working with a guy like that. Those cancer sticks must be piece of work for your lung. You should quit smoking them like that she threw back. He shrugged as he nodded his head from side to side I respect that, but I can't quit now, after all, being 10 from when it started to today, that d be too much of a hassle he explained. Really? Since you were 10, show? Hey, it cools the nerves he said, Eno just rolled her eyes, sides working the engine is a nightmare, a real beauty but with claws and shrieks. I feel sorry Tajim, working with a guy who smokes all the time down there. Peef, please, she loves it. Well later Kiba said I am gonna check on Akamaru. Naruto was halfway up to the nest, man he wished boats had radars or something. Sure, it was easy climbing up to the mast but the weather, Naruto was finally on the nest, he sighed as he dropped his backpack, he sat down, as he looked at the moon in the distance, he wasn't sure if it was disappearing or filling but part of it was missing, he sighed, he was glad no one noticed, sure it was childish but he didn't want anybody worrying about him, he pulled his bag closer to him, unzipped it, and pulled out a water balloon. Crack. He snapped his head to the moon, the dark clouds were making themselves visible, they started covering the moon. Naruto looked at his water balloon and frowned, tonight's going to be another long one, he put the balloon aside and pulled out a scroll with a green seal on it, he unrolled out and read the name out loud for what would be the hundredth time wind release. Burst blow, from what Naruto could tell. It was a C-class technique where the user inhales air and spits out in either short burst of air or a big a stream that could potentially knock the user off his, her feet. Naruto has practice a lot and all he can manage was a pathetic puff of air that had blown the previous rain off their pattern, but that was about it. His sudden renewal training of the Rasengan was easier but still hard to master. At least his arms didn't feel like worthless jelly hanging off his body like the first time. As for paper cutting, cause there's no leaves out in the sea that wasn't algae. It was difficult, especially when it was raining. Crack. Another thunder sounded off. Yep it was going to be another long night. He thanked whatever deity was out there that he could sleep in. He looked at the scroll again. 
He smiled before he let a breath of amusement slip through his mouth as he thought of how he won it. Kid, you sure all I asked you haven't looked at your cards? Should I Naruto asked I mean we practically real lying on luck so. Yeah you're right said but, kid, blind luck is dumb luck. So, Naruto asked with a shrug, Hiro laughed I like this kid he said. Like I said I am in a hurry Naruto argued if blind luck gets it done then who am I to complain? Mr. Onigiri smiled, he pulled out the scroll and tossed it in the pot, middle of the table well if you're doing it so am I. Whoa whoa hold on Aoi said you're actually going with this? Sure why not? Either way it always comes down to luck. Yeah well count me out Aoi said as he tossed his cards face set up. Same here Kaide said as he placed his cards down. As fun as it looks Hiro said count me out, I've been having bad luck recently. Alright so you and me are the only ones in Naruto said. Right mister, Onigiri said with a smile. Well Hiro began because you two are in this then I guess you have to show him. Right, you first kid, Naruto nodded he grabbed all five of his cards and he placed them upward with a smile on his face, then he began to pale, what he had was a bunch of junk, mister, Onigiri looked him in the eye. Too bad, kid he said looks like luck is on my side he said with a smirk as he flipped over his cards and as he looked at them he crunched his face. It was also junk, in fact it was almost a replica of what Naruto had, almost, Naruto has a king in the pile while he has a jack instead, Hiro checked his cards and he had a two pairs of low numbers, Aoi checked his, one strong pair, Kaide flipped his cards over and muttered of course because he had four queens, he would have won if he had played. Looks like I win Naruto said with a toothy grin. Naruto laughed at the memory, crack, crack, crack. Naruto smiled at the clouds, the world could throw whatever it wants at Naruto, no matter what it is, he will always stand the next day. Fu he thought in his head I wonder what you're like. In dark room somewhere, a girl woke up, she had her back against the wall, a bit of the moonlight sipped in through the wooden walls and shined on her, reflecting off on her mint green hair, she was having trouble breathing. It actually felt as if she couldn't breathe, she cried, she was helpless, she was wasting space, that was all she was good for, she kept crying until everything went dark. The entire Konoha group, minus Lee and Naruto, was sitting down in a small rest area while the rest of crew was who knows where, either asleep or doing their jobs, they were mostly in a circle, Neji, Kiba and Shino sitting on the ground next to the door, ignoring the way the boat swayed from side to side, Tenten, Sakura, and Ino were all sitting at a table making sure their drinks doesn't spill. Hanada, Shikamaru, and Sai were up against the wall. Few Ino said were finally free, yet Tenten agreed by the way Sakura, how's Nishi doing? Oh he's fine. His fever should wear off in a day or so, but still a sudden fever right after we left. Yeah, we know, it's strange, and it's especially shocking that he got sick after he ate your nutritious meal Shikamaru said with sarcasm. Then he ducked when Sakura threw an apple at him, and then that was it, no one had anything to else to say, they all sat in silence just waiting for someone OT say something that didn't involve Sakura's cooking. Oh sighed Tenten said as she broke the silence, in a sense. Yes he said with that lovely fake smile, something has been bothering me, before we left, you said you had a theory, and all the evidence you gave that day that disproved all the big theories we had about Naruto and that girl Fu. Maybe. Ino quickly added in, and I just want to hear your theory. Osai said I never got around to saying it, did I? My bad, he said with the ever-present smile. Well my theory is that maybe Fu, is actually a relative of Naruto. What? Ino yelled out what the hell made you come to that conclusion? Actually, that's the most reasonable theory I've heard so far Shikamaru said. Sai, how exactly did you come to that conclusion? Neji asked because I don't recall any piece of information that leads to that conclusion. Same here Tenten said as she looked around giving everyone her contact Tsunade Sama never gave any details or hints that leads to that conclusion. Shikamaru sighed what a drag he said slowly as he rubbed his face the reason he came to his conclusion is not because of the information we were given, it's because of what we weren't given. But Shikamaru Choji began where do we even begin guessing what Hokage Sama didn't tell us, I mean, there's a lot thing we should know, like what she eats, any allergies, and food dislike. And besides that, Naruto seemed a bit worried, so she might be dangerous to even make him worried, we have no idea where to even begin. No Choji, 
think, while she was briefing us on how to find her what didn't she tell us? Hum Cho Ji hummed as he began to think, the same could go for everyone else. Come on it's not that hard, what piece of her identity didn't we receive? Shikamaru stated the question so that they could begin thinking around that question. Her her last name a shy voice stuttered out, every turn to Hinata who looked a little less shy than what her voice lead on, actually it kinda seemed like she was maybe, desperate a bit. Tsunade Sama never gave us her last name, only her first. Oh yeah that's right, why were we only given her first name and not her surname Tenten asked. Because Fu could actually be part of Naruto's family Neji said now getting the conclusion, if he found out that he could actually have a relative, I guess I can see why he, s worried. Wait but Naruto is an orphan and there was no civilian that had any resemblance to him beside Ino's family Sakura said, and we haven't even heard the name Uzumaki anywhere, and besides, we can't forget about the other descriptions. You're right Ino said happily those descriptions are far off from Naruto's. Yeah but didn't you have a cousin who was completely different compared to the rest of your clan? Shino asked. Ah well yeah, but, Ino began, she really didn't want to be wrong. No excuse Ino Shikamaru said, fair is fair, she could be a distant relative of Naruto, and besides, Naruto himself doesn't know if he really is related. Tsunade probably wanted to break it to him first so that there wouldn't be any surprises for him and if it turned out that they're not related. He'd be able to handle it better Tenten said catching on poor guy, he's worried that the first trace of his family might not actually be his family. But why didn't Tsunade Sama tell all of us this Sai asked. Because we're not in position to help Naruto Shino answered, like Sakura said, Naruto was an orphan from day one of his life. In contrast all of us have had family members and relatives we see every day, if Naruto got depressed because his family wasn't his family, we'd have no way to help properly. Hence, the reason why Tsunade-sama only told Naruto began Shikamaru, that way the shock wouldn't be too painful. So Naruto is not getting married? Hinata asked with a tinge of hope in her voice. Not necessarily, there is always the possibility that could happen Sai said it's just that in my theory. The chances of marriage can either increase or decrease, in the end it all breaks down to how Naruto feels about it. Right Hinata said a little meeker than usual, that's right, Tsunade wouldn't make Naruto do something he doesn't want to do, well, at least not something like that Sakura said. Yeah but I wouldn't count on it Ino said I mean you guys saved their village, and you said it yourself, even the leader of the village respects him, so maybe they want Naruto to marry her and get comfortable with living with her before they move to her village that's probably why he seemed off. I am sure Tsunade-sama would never do that, otherwise Naruto would raise hell over it Kiba said. That's because of Naruto's dream of becoming Hokage, right? Shino asked. Right, maybe they're scared that Konoha might attack them Neji suggested. Probably Sakura said I mean Naruto, Sasuke, and I know the secret entrance, but I think they changed it. Wait, I thought it was a natural secret entrance Tenten said. It probably is but natural or not it can always be changed Shino said, because. We know why Kiba said, but still, why is Naruto so important in all of this? That's what we've been trying to figure out Shino said, a little upset but rather calm. Throughout this Ino noticed the way Hinata was, she was sad. Shire, more than usual and especially around Naruto, and was looking down at the floor, all of these theories were affecting her. Sure it was overstatement saying that the entire village knew about her crush on Naruto, only the military portion knew about it, and it was only a small group. Say about, 30 people at most and they are not gossipers, plus, she has evidence that Naruto was up to something, even if it isn't marriage it has something to do with a girl. All right Ino said as she stood and put her hands on her hips, emergency meeting, she yelled. The entire group just looked at her. We're all here Ino Shikamaru said there is really no reason whatsoever for you to say that. Ino huffed and pouted before she yelled okay, emergency girl meeting, so you guys better get out. All the guys just stared at her, Nokiba said, we finally have time off in the most comfortable room in the ship and you want us to leave? Tajim, a girl with the height of Shizun was calmly walking to her room, she rubbed her oil stained left cheek and made sure that her right one still had a bandage there, she was close to the comfort room. Maybe she should drop in for a snack? The door was a few feet away, she could just slip in, grab a snack from the mini fridge, maybe relax for a while. In flash the door opened and one by one guys were thrown out of the room, first Kiba, then Shikamaru, Sai, 
Shino, Choji, and lastly Neji. All of them hit the wall and then landed on top of each other. On second thought, it's better to just keep on walking. Okay, Ino Sakura said now, what's all this about? Okay, despite what all of you believe, Naruto is up to something, if not on this boat then when we meet this Fu girl. Okay why is that? Tenten asked, and then she regretted it, Ino put on a creepy smile and made some weird laughing noises. Ino are you Oki? Oh I am fine Kukakuku that was really creepy. Um Hinata began shyly what is the evidence? This, she yelled as she pulled out box seemingly out of nowhere, it was a box of. Ino where'd you get that? Sakura yelled with her eyes so wide they were practically white, Tenten was in the same condition with slack jaw and a flushed face. Hanada just stared with black eyes and a concealed flush face. From Naruto's bag Ino said smugly, Um, Tenten began are you sure he didn't just confuse it as a weird type of balloon? Come on there is an instruction pamphlet inside for idiots or beginners, plus, there are descriptions on the box so give him some credit. Okay but was it open Sakura asked, Ino sucked in air where the SSSS part of it stood out more, yeah, no, but don't be quick to sell him out just yet. Okay sure. Say he did get them with full intentions of using them the right way Tenten said with a firm voice. Which he as Eno said, right but, I am kinda worried about who he plans to do it with after she said that they both turned to look at Sakura. Sakura blushed if that idiot lays finger on me she began threat. Don't worry Eno said ill lock our door, Eno, Naruto is a ninja like us and not only that, he trained with a sage, though a pervy and idiotic one, but nevertheless a sage and he is a reformed prankster of Konoha Sakura said like a plain fact. Okay, well rig our rooms with traps, that's not the point. Yeah what about all the other girls on the ship Hinata said meekly, as usual, with a fully flushed face with sweat trickling down her neck. There are only three other and besides that, we only need a good bait Ino said as she stood with her index finger in the air. Bait they all yelled, yes that's right, bait, and our willing bait is. Hanada Ino said as she pointed at said person. Eh eh eh, me. Hanada said as her face got redder and more sweat started pouring it, it was almost comical. Wait you don't mean, Tenten began, of course she does Sakura as she rubbed her temples. That's right Ino said with a creepy smile, all Hanada has to do is leave her door slightly open, Tenten has the night shift again tomorrow night so she'll be alone, and when Naruto comes in and sees a perfectly good victim, Hell get right down to business. Plus, it's a good way for Hinata to bag in Naruto as her boyfriend, it's a win a win situation for everybody. A thump was heard all girls directed their attention to Hinata who fainted and was practically covered in sweat. Hinata, are you alright Tenten asked, no reply, as usual. Sakura sighed ill check her pulse, well, this sucks Kiba said, Akamaru's lucky, he's probably asleep with Nishi by now. Well that's about all he can do Choji said act like one of those medic dogs and give him company. Yep Shikamaru said as he sipped some tea, at the moment, all the guys who were kicked out of the most comfortable room on the ship were sitting at the table where they recently ate dinner. This tea taste odd Neji said as he looked at it with caution. I agree, Sai Shino asked exactly what kind of tea is this, because it is not of any kind of I have had the pleasure of sampling. Oh, it's mint tea he replied with a smile though he himself also found the tea odd too, though I admit that it's the missing flavor. Yeah you're right it's not minty at all Kiba said, but he sipped his tea regardless, still what could have been so important that they had to kick us out they were actually punched out but you get it. It's probably about Naruto Choji said, as usual Neji said as sipped the tea cautiously. Yeah well, why does everything revolve around him all of the sudden? Kiba. We can talk all night long and we would get nowhere Shikamaru said calmly as he drank the tea, hoping it would cool his nerves down. This tea is very odd Shino said once more, um, don't you mean very? Shikamaru asked. That's what I said, right, Sai. Where did you get this tea from again? Oh, I got from a nice man back at the port, he told me this was a good way to get closer with my friends he said as he smiled and poured more tea into his cup drop one in boiled water and then wait for the fun, his words Sai said with a smile. Well that's an odd set of instructions Neji stated as he sipped the tea and raised an eyebrow both the instructions and the tea are very odd. Ah, do you mind if I see one of those tea things Choji asked. Sure, 
Yugo Sai said as he passed a bag with a mint inside, the mint that was two and a half inches in diameter. Um you forgot the here in you sentence Shikamaru said. Sorry what Sai asked, um I said, what I say Shikamaru asked himself more confused now. Nothing important Neji said as he stared at his tea, something is very odd with this tea. It's the tea, because it's not minty Shino stated, right. Um I think I am too tired Kiba said as he rubbed his head. Then go to sleep, should I? I mean I am seeing doubles here. You're probably just seasick Shikamaru said, and then he eyed the candy Choji had, hey Choji, let me see that for second, Choji wasn't paying attention Choji. Huh, oh sorry what, he said as he looked at Shino. Choji, I called you Shikamaru, huh, oh sorry he said as he looked at Shikamaru. Right, can I see the ah, the ah mint he said as he pointed at the said item. Yeah, short Choji replied as he threw the mint at Shikamaru. Thanks Shikamaru said as he caught it and then he looked at it, his mouth slowly opened before he closed it and swallowed, he dropped the mint and looked at Sai, hey Sai, this woman who sold you these mints. Man corrected Sai, man repeated Shikamaru he didn't happen to be shady looking, had yellow teeth with cracks here and there and some missing, talked in a kinda secretive way did she? He, and yes, exactly like that he replied making the egg stand out more. Right. And this boy man corrected Sai once more. Man repeated Shikamaru he didn't happen to sell you these mints in some dark alleyway did he? Why yes he did. Actually Sai replied and then he smiled oh don't worry he waved his hand I pulled a random one out and made him try it. He took whole one in a single cup so it should be fine. Okay. But I wasn't asking to make sure it wasn't poisonous. Ah Shikamaru Kiba asked as he and everybody else looked at him what does this all add up to? Shikamaru sighed I got bad news, good news and some more bad news. Okay Neji said what are they? The bad news is that this mint isn't for tea. Crap you mean? Kiba said not wanting to finish the question as he and everybody else, minus Shino and Sai, grimaced in fear. No that's the good news, it's not poison, they all sighed for a moment there they thought they were goners. What's the bad news both Sai and Shino asked almost simultaneously. They're drugs. I remember reading it in one of the reports, this is a fairly new drug that surpasses benzoylmethylectinine, an old drug, we have reason to believe that they're selling it in plain sight through everyday items, like mints. Wait so you mean Choji began, it's running inside of all bodies Shikamaru replied bluntly. Wait a minute, I also remember reading about this drug, apparently it gets the user intoxicated easily. Especially if you are on an empty stomach Neji said that is unless you're a well-trained ninja, in that case, the effects take a while to kick in and is almost unnoticeable. So then we're not completely under the influence at the moment Shino stated but he was ignored. But the mortality rate of these drugs is actually higher than benzoylmethylectinine. Right Kiba said calmly then what the hell are we sitting around for? We have to get it out of our systems. Almost instantly all four guys run to the windows and began their greatest attempt to puke out their guts, yummy. Shino and Sai, however, remained calm at the table drinking the drug tea, I am guessing you read the latest report Sai said as he saw the other guys try to puke. Crap. Nothing's coming out. Why yes, I have Shino said the more of the drug you take at a time the more your immune systems have to work, this drug is a mixture of chemicals, most of which we are still trying to determine what they are and one of the chemicals has been recognized as anti-regurgitation medicine. Sai nodded it is also reported that the cause of death is not because of a single use of the drug, the mixture of chemicals actually causes the human body to become more resistant to it, though it disappears in a few days, it can actually work as an antitoxin for itself. Which of course causes the users addicted to it to take such a vast quantity at once, the result of such a large intake that the immune system begins to fail and the users die of common illnesses. Though that stage may not have been reached, it can still cause users to become unconscious for a good while after they fall asleep. So the more you ingest, moderately of course, the more unlikely you are to experience the effects afterwards, that is if your body has had any physical training that resembles that of military. Right Shino said as he sipped his tea, Shikamaru I can't puke. Should we tell them Sai asked as he turned to look at Shino. Shino turned to look at him they'll be fine. They've been on edge lately, because we aren't used to these kinds of work and with the mystery revolving around Naruto, he sipped his tea I good rest will do them good. Sai shrugged and smiled if you say so, more tea. 
Why yes thank you Shino passed him his cup, I think I'll add sugar to mine, I find the flavor very odd. Don't you mean very? Sai asked as he passed Shino the spiky tea. That's what I said Shino said as he put a few lumps of sugar into said tea. Right, Buggy Sai said as he went back to watching the guys try to puke their guts out. Sakura just rubbed her angry forehead, in front of her was a bunch of passed out guys and in her left hand was a note written by Sai while her right had the box of drugged mints that didn't taste like mints. Wow Ino said I can't believe all of them are out like that. Yeah, I thought ninjas didn't get high on the job Captain Sango said bitterly, arms folded, leaning against the door. Wee 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 don't Hanada said, Hanada's right, it was simple mistakes I made. The guy with the creepy smile? Sango asked with a raised eyebrow. Yep Tenton said that guy creeps me out, he does that to everybody Ino said with a sigh. And Naruto is already asleep Sakura said with a sigh. And I am on my way there Tenton said as she walked out of the room. Not that I can blame him, the storms were rough last night, well Sango said at least we're done with fishing, meaning the hard job is out of the way, you girls can relax. Both Ino and Sakura sighed in relief. From day one they both voiced their thoughts on fishing and more or less came up with convincing argument, more so Sakura, on why they should not fish. Don't sigh just yet Sango said as she approached the three girls they're still scrubbing the floors, keeping an eye out for a shipwreck, pirates, and other stuff, cleaning bathrooms, cooking, for which I prefer Sakura not do. Hey, my cooking is not that, Sakura began but Sango got in her face. Ooh sweetie, it's bad and it needs a lot of work, now, where was I, oh yeah, cooking, not for you she said to Sakura looking after Nishi and that green friend of yours who seems a bit more greener than usual, cleaning the windows, and the list she put more emphasis on the SSS goes on, enjoy she said as she left. Both girls sighed once more only this time it was the depressing one, Hanada looked as discouraged as usual. Well girls, get to it, it won't be till tomorrow night until we reach our destination, they heard the captain call from the hallway. Yay both girls said weakly as they moved. Sakura took one last look at the box and whispered I hate you before she threw it out an open port window. This fucking sucks muttered Hidan as he laid down on the deck and let the sun bath him in its brilliant ray being on a damn boat all day fucking suux. Quit your babbling we're bound to run into a ship out here Kakuzu said as he once again counted his money. You fucking shut it. If it wasn't for your fucking obsession with money we wouldn't have to be out here with that fucking bitch in the fucking first place. Queen, Zetsu, fucking, shut it. I have just about fucking had it with you and I am this close to breaking a nerve and sacrifice you to Lord Jashin. Ooh how scary Zetsu said from somewhere on the ship's deck. Fuck it. Skinning you in this damn heat would be too much of a damn hassle he dan grumbled. Zetsu it's almost time Kakuzu said. Zetsu just laughed and said understood. Hey, Kakuzu, what the fuck are those syringes anyway Hidan asked I've never seen them before, I thought I did but I haven't. Oh, those old things? He said as he began to neatly stack away his money, their old drugs used to make the will of men softer, it was used a lot during the wars when we had to interrogate someone, fortunately or unfortunately, depends on the way you look at it. The drug is actually made with a certain poison that can kill a man given the right dosage or if you give him too many at a time. Okay, but why are we using it on the bitch? Queen Hidan heard in a whisper. Shut the fuck up. The fucking Jinchuriki, why use it on her? Because we want her barely breathing, the Biju will undoubtedly use all of its influence over its vessel to filter it out by using every single part of the body working as a whole in order to filter out all traces of it and therefore weaken her in the process. So even if she does miraculously filter all of it out for even just a minute, it wouldn't do her any good because she would be too weak that even breathing would be too much of an effort he said as he chuckled in the end, she'd probably pass out by the end of the minute, however, if she could quickly regain her strength within a day if not given that as correctly, so beating from time to time is required. I see, that's fucking clever, but not as clever as some of us jashinist. I still don't see how it's profitable, there you go again. I say money then the rest leaves you, the way of Jashin is not profitable and I never said it fucking was. Oh Kakuzu said in a sarcastic tone then what did you say you moron? Hidan grinded his teeth together I said that some Jashinists are very profitable, like this fucktard named Gato. Gato? A fat little man? Kakuzu said as he looked at Hidan who nodded, 
I used to do business with him up until he was killed. And now you're telling me that small piglet was a jashinist. TCH he let out as he looked offended hardly. That fucking bastard just used his status for greed and forgot about the sacraments, if anything. I am glad I didn't kill that fucking son of a bitch. Jashin would be displeased if I got the blood of a useless fucker we call a brother on my hands. I can't believe that pig was a jashinist, that's right. Kakuzu Hidan said with a wicked smile we're badass motherfuckers. We can be your loyal soldier sworn to defend you one day and kill you the next. Then he frowned Gato, however, only cared about the fucking money, like you, and not Jashin. Sure his methods were one of our methods once, but he openly disrespected Jashin by using that method to make money and not killing people himself. After he died I heard that the village he held in his pocket came along quite nicely after a bridge was built. Oh and Kakuzu, do you want to fucking know what the name of the fucking bridge is? No, but you're going to tell me anyway, damn right I am. It's called the Great Fucking Naruto Bridge. Naruto? Kakuzu asked you mean Sasori's target? That's right, apparently he played a big role in stopping Gato, but the person who killed him was a hidden mist swordsman. I forgot his name though, Zebuza I think. Does it matter? Fuck no. I see Kakuzu do you know anyone in our destination that would be a good candidate to do business with? Fuck you and your fucking money Hidan said as he sighed. Hidan Senpei they both turned to see one of the pledges, the average girl calling out to them there's a ship up ahead, and it's heading right towards us. Hidan smiled widely fucking finally, something fun to do. He got up with his weapon hey, asshole of a partner of mine, ready to plunder? Why not? I've been bored myself and frankly, I need to refill my pockets he said as he stood up. Hey pledges. Hidan yelled it's time to play. I still can't believe the four of them can run this ship alone Kakuzu said as he saw the pledge scramble around looking for their weapons or doing warm ups. The perks of being fucking low rate ninjas, like yourself you mean Zetsu said from somewhere. Yeah that's right, hey, alright prepare whatever weapons you can, Captain Sango yelled at Sho who was already running. What's going on Tenten asked with bags under her eyes, she walked out of her room to go the bathroom and already the ship went to hell. Sho said a ship was heading towards us, and according to its flags, it's a very famous pirate ship. Crap, it'll get Ino and Sakura, no need, they're on deck with Hinata, just get your friends to the same room Nishi is in. If it comes down to it, we'll be the last line of defense along with Mari. Captain Sango, with all due respect, we're ninjas, I am pretty sure a bunch of pirates would be basic for us. Alright I buy that she said but what about a bunch of ninja pirates? The ship heading towards us is a rumored to be a ninja pirate ship called the Shinda Aika. Oh, Tenten said yeah that might be a challenge, he'll go get Naruto, if he anyone can take most or at least half of the crew on, it's him she said as she ran to said boy's room. Naruto was tired, dead tired, beyond life tired, he just woke up. He had a few hours of sleep, he closed his eyes, he wanted to sleep but his body wanted him up and about, probably wanted him to stick to his boast and stand the next day. He smiled, his body also supported him, too bad body cause nothing is going to get him up, sure, he had enough energy to do chores till the night came, but he didn't feel like doing it, the world could be knocking at his door with some random problem and it still wouldn't get him up. Suddenly there was a bang at his door, Naruto, yelled the voice of Tenten the ship is about to be attacked by ninja pirates and everybody else is knocked out. Fuck, he didn't mean it literally, was the world really pissed at him? Crop. He groaned. Naruto. All right it'll be on the deck as quick as I can he said as he rolled out of bed and fell on the floor ow. All right. Hurry. Tenten yelled as she ran, leaving behind metallic footsteps at heated pace. The world hates me he grumbled as he put on his jacket, he had his pants on already, he looked for his ninja pouch, it was right next to his forehead protector, shoes, 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 it really does it's right next to the door. He struggled to get them on while standing up before he said I hope these guys are talkative today and then he ran out the room. Sakura. Naruto yelled as he ran out onto the deck. Over here, Ino yelled. She was next to the railing with Hinata, Sakura, Tajim and Sho. Tajim and Sho had knives and a wrench, not the best weapon against a ninja. Crap, they're about to be in range to board Sho said as he gripped the wrench a little tighter. Hey. I guess we're lucky you guys came along Tajim said as she got ready to throw the knives I don't think any of my knives will hit the target she said, Naruto took notice of her, 
Throughout the entire time he was on board on the ship, he has never seen her tremble from anything. A lighting would hit the sea, missing him. Yes it was aiming for him cause the world just hates him. And he would be scared as hell while she would just shrug it off, not this time. The other boat began to pull in by the sides, the boat seemed to be shorter, maybe two thirds of the size of the boat he was on. You guys were in this situation before, right Eno asked as she looked at Sho. Oh yeah, well at least I was, but only on normal pirates Sho said, here's a little advice, stay out of the line of fire and knock off the grappler hooks. But they're ninjas, right Sakura said then they won't need grapplers. Oh they will, you see, we're moving with an engine, they're using winds and wave, so unless the plan on leaving all their goods behind, they'll want those hooks on this ship. Gee great, now if I survive I have to worry about fixing the hull. As the deck of the ship came into view Naruto was the first to note the two men wearing black cloaks and red clouds. Well one of them was, the other one was wearing a pink robe. The guy who was was actually wearing the cloak had pink turban on so, who knows, but regardless of whether he was or not, Naruto ran his mouth anyway. Hey you're a member of the Akatsuki. He yelled causing Hanada, Sakura and Ino to gasp and look at him. It's them yelled the guy in a pink robe the guys who took out Sasori. When Naruto saw them the first things that jumped into his heads was a memory about how the Akatsuki are going after Jinchurikis for their bijus, Tsunade telling him that Fu is Jinchuriki. Shikamaru saying they were supposed to pick her up somewhere on the border of the land lighting and snow, and the direction they came from, and finally, his memory of what they did to Gara. You bastards, you're going to pay for what you did to Gara, he yelled. Oh yeah, you fucktard? Hidan yelled back why don't you get your shitty ass the fuck down here and... Not the time or place Kakuzu yelled, what he received from both Naruto and Hidan, they both seemed angrily confused while they focused on him. We're both obviously on a busy schedules and a fight might result in both ships getting destroyed causing us to be late, time is money and I won't waste my money he explained well fight eventually but not now, we're late as it is and I am guessing so are you guys, so let's ignore each other, this time anyway, after all, a fight with numbers against strength doesn't seem like a smart thing to do for either of us, especially in these eel infested waters. Eel infested? Eno questioned as she turned to show for answers. Yep. First scent of blood they catch, they'll be all over us, it's a real hassle because it scares away the fish show replied. And we should be fine unless someone falls overboard Tajim said as she slowly backed away from the edge. BBB but they're just eels, right? Hanada stuttered out, fighting two Akatsuki members is one thing, but fighting them in an environment like this could scare anyone. One of the pirates, which is presumably a ninja, chuckled, meaning he heard their conversation. Not these ones, these eels are carnivorous bastards. Um Sakura began eel or not that actually sounds reasonable. Of course it does Kakuzu yelled because we're wasting time as it is. Naruto just stared at them before he yelled I am not falling for that one you bastards. Naruto. Ino snapped we can't take on the Akatsuki by ourselves. Both you and Sakura had help from ninjas who were trained to go up against someone their level and at the moment we don't have anyone who's capable she whispered loud enough to him. Orders to be on the lookout for the Akatsuki was already in effect even before Naruto, Sakura, and Sai left with Yamato to chase Sasori's informant. No we can't he admitted but they can't go all out on us he said, surprising both parties, don't you guys get it? These bastards captured another Jinchuriki. They gasped as the guys just chuckled clever brat, I can see why Daidera had a hard time with him Kakuzu said. Look, you guys get this boat far away from here as possible Naruto yelled as he tightened his forehead protector. What are you going to do Tajim asked as she looked him with a grim face already fearing that she knew what he might do. Naruto flashed her toothy grin and said what I do best and jumped off the boat and onto the hostile one. Shadow clone jutsu. He yelled in midair and then the next second a large random amount of solid clones came to being. Then they all landed on deck, you bastards ready for hell. Ready for hell repeated Hidan as he readied his triple sickle scythe I fucking like this brat. I don't, I can't go all out, I risk destroying both boats along with one of the Jinchurikis, we might just have our hands full this time Kakuzu said bitterly. And that's what happens when you get greedy you piece of shit Hidan smirked maybe I am wrong, you can never be too greedy in the blood currency he said with a sanguine look. You can't kill him and you can't leave me alone with him Kakuzu said as he straightened himself out. What, for fucking reals? 
he's our priority now and I can't go all, so what do you think? ARRRG Hedan growled in anger, then he turned to the other pirates pledges get on that fucking boat and kill em all. Right now? I need the fucking deck. Right. All four of them yelled, crap, Sakura said Tajim, show, run inside and tell Tenton and Captain Sango what happened, leave this guys to us. She yelled as she and Ino pulled out their kanais while Hinata got in an appropriate stance. The sun he sat under was unbearably hot, and to add to torture, he was surrounded by water, it was so hot that the small rowboat he was on was getting hot enough to cook him alive, that is if the sun didn't do first. Ah yes, nothing like fishing on a day like this, am I right Naruto an old man with a white long hair, shades, a straw hat, and wart on his nose said, he pulled a cool drink from the color that was on the boat with them. It's especially good with a cold drink he said as he began to drink his cold drink, which Naruto suspected was sake, mostly because it was a sake bottle. Screw you pervy sage Naruto said loudly as he wiped a bead of sweat that trickling down his forehead. Whoa, what's with the hostility today? I mean come on, we're out fishing Jiraiya said as he tried to cheer the blonde boy next to him. Exactly, we're fishing. We're supposed to be training. Naruto yelled at the sage how could only grin and shake his head. This is training, my young apprentice Jiraiya said in his wise voice. What? Yep, you see, in battle, it's important for a shinobi not to panic or to give in to his fears and emotions. Like how you just did, the result of such act could be very catastrophic and life-threatening, and fishing is a good way to overcome this because you are forced to wait and to keep your cool. Suddenly Jiraiya's fishing pool began moving. He quickly put down his drink and grabbed hold of his rod with both hands as he stood, and then you're rewarded with, he began to struggle, A. Eh? He then pulled his rod back as he fished a small fish out fish. He then began to unhook the fish and put in a basket see? TCH Naruto scuffed you stingy pervert, there's a perfectly good restaurant right there Naruto pointed to beach where there was a wooden establishment that began from the short to a yard or so into the sea. The restaurant was maybe two stories tall seemed like it wouldn't rank up to a five star but maybe around two stars the only reason we're fishing is because you know i am out of cash and you don't want to use yours naruto yelled as he pointed an accusing finger at his master see you never would have figured it out if weren't for the time we spent here jiraiya argued with a smile as he placed a new bait on his hook i knew that before we got on this stupid boat naruto yelled as he got a cool soda from the cooler Maybe, maybe not Jiraiya said as he casted his hook out into sea, and then both of them were quiet, Jiraiya smiled as he drank his sake while you watch a couple of girls swimming. Naruto on the other hand had a really bored look on his face as he quietly watched his fishing buoy bob up and down on the water. You know this also another kind of training began Jiraiya. Really, you're still on that? Naruto asked as he took another sip from cool drink. Yes I am, so tell me. Are you still heads over heel for the pink haired girl? Her name is Sakura Haruno and yes I am, alright, let me ask you this, have you ever been on a date with her? Yes I have, oh really, what did you do? We had ramen and we talked Naruto said with a shrug, that's about it. Let me guess, she did most of the talking and it was about Sasuke? Naruto didn't answer, hole in one Jiraiya said with sigh, honestly kid, can you call that a date? If anything you were just comforting a friend who has love sickness. Oh yeah. Well what about all those girls you pay to spend time with you, what do you call that Naruto threw back? I call it getting my money's worth and enjoyment Jiraiya said with a shrug but tell me this, have you dated anybody else? No, why would I Naruto questioned angrily as he turned to glower at his master. Jiraiya just sighed hate to break it to you, kid, but if that's the case and if you're set on Sakura, then you'll never get her. What? Why not? Because you don't have enough dating experience and you are not what she's looking for, this is where fishing comes in, you simply don't catch a big fish or the fish you want right off the bat, you need to work your way up to it, you need to start with the small fries, so to speak, then work your way up to a snapper or something. I can't do that, Naruto argued it's not right to date a girl if you're just using her. As practice, I mean sure, dating girls back home could be a problem, but dating a girl out here, well, to them it would be nothing more than an interesting experience. Not doing it Naruto said as he reeled back in his hook and frowned when he found that the bait was gone. Alright then, Jiraiya said as he smiled, how about a bet? You win. I give you enough money to buy six bowls of ramen. 
Naruto's ears perked up before he turned to face Jiraiya with gleaming eyes and asked fervently what's the bet. Now hold on, see that girl over there he pointed to a girl in with brown long hair tied to a ponytail, tanned, and low bust, wearing a one-piece swimsuit, if you lose, it'll give you money to ask her out for lunch and you can have ramen, but before the end of the day, you must kiss her no matter what, and while you're doing that, it'll see if I can score with her mom. I get ramen either way Naruto said, sure he didn't feel right about kissing the girl because of his crush on Sakura or about Jiraiya using this bet as a way to score, but still after a month without ramen, deal. Now what's the best? The next fish you catch has to be bigger than mine, or you lose. All right. It'll do it Naruto said as he quickly placed a new bait on his hook and casted it out into the sea. He he Jiraiya chuckled lightly sucker he thought in his head, Jiraiya had actually fished around the area a lot and the fish don't get any larger than the one he recently caught. Seems like things just got interesting Kakuzu said as he observed the blonde. Amen he heard from the bane of his existence. Must you do that? Yes, I have to fucking do it, and what the fuck are you guys doing? He addressed the group of people standing around quit fucking around, and with that said they began to move. Oh no you don't Naruto yelled as he and his clones chased the Jashinist pledges. Naruto was on the lower deck with the two Akatsuki members while the Jashinist pledges were on the upper deck, where the wheel was located, then he gasped as he turned his head to the pile of smoke and heard popping sounds. The smoke cleared to reveal the long, silver, haired Akatsuki member with the red tricycle scythe. Hey brat he spat out did you fucking forget about us already? Then he heard a loud explosion to his right. He turned to see that the other enemies fired a cannon with a cable attached to a hook-like thing that dug deep into the boat's metal frame and hooked on. Then he felt the wooden boat get pulled making him and the remaining clones stumble a bit. Damn he muttered under his breath as he suddenly sensed danger and quickly jumped to the side. Some clones did so too but one wasn't so lucky. Nice reflexes he heard from his left. He turned to see the guy with the pink turban as a black thread-like substance retreated into him. The said substance also left holes on the deck, and it's very interesting. What does Naruto question loudly as he and the three clones behind him rushed the guy while the remaining clones rushed the silver-haired guy in the pink robe? Kakuzu was not only able to evade Naruto's attack but he was able to counter them. He caught the original's fist that was aimed to his face, grabbed his arm with his other free hand and proceeded to spin around while pulling him at the same time whilst using him as a club against the three clones that were behind him. After he heard the satisfying pops he let go of Naruto and away he went. He landed hard on the wooden deck and thanks to the momentum of the spin throw, he was also sent rolling. Hidan saw the clones rush him. He simply let out a battle cry as he spun around with his tri scythe out with the full intent of skewering the clones only for them to jump above him to avoid the attack. Fucking gotcha. He yelled as he spun around again and was somehow able to launch all three of his blades at the airborne clones slicing all of them up before they popped out of existence while leaving behind a white smoke that quickly disappeared. As Naruto stood up while groaning in pain, he was able to see that the three blades were connected with a segmented cable that reconnected with the metal rod, once more creating a triple sickle scythe, he let go of the side he was holding as he felt the pain subside. The way you use those shadow clones of yours Kakuzu continued. Huh? Naruto said as he took a step back what do you mean he asked as felt his back connect with the wooden railing. Oh, I am just saying how I've never seen them in use like that, and certainly not in that number, though, I am sure it wouldn't be much of problem for a Jinchuriki to produce that amount, by the way, do they even know? He asked with a little amusement in voice. Naruto knew what he was referring to, his friends what's it to you? Just curious he said nonchalantly, what are you bastards doing with the bijus? Naruto asked back. Up yours fucktard, that's what Hidan yelled, worth a try Naruto said as he pulled out a kanai. You know, for a clever boy, you're not so clever, oh yeah Naruto threw back as he got his kanai in a good position to stab. Oh definitely, after all, you're taking the two of us on by yourself, and it seems you don't want to use that special chakra of yours, or is it because you don't know how to use it? He scoffed like ill tell ya Naruto spat, so it's both I take it, Kakuzu chuckled before an idea hit him, tell you what, I guess something, now you guess, which biju does our Jinchuriki have? You bastards Naruto began with a few batted breaths I am going to kill you. Ooh did we press a fucking button on the fucking baby? Just guess you fucktard, what our bitches biju? Hidan yelled back following his partner's lead, 
Kakuzu. Da fuck you on about Hidan question in his head. The Nanabi, right Naruto asked as he got a better look of the vessel he was on. Why Kakuzu began you said that rather confidently. Hidan caught on as he laughed loudly what's so damn funny. What a dumb little brat you or Kakuzu said as he too chuckled. Who the fuck said we even had fucking Jinshuriki on board in the fucking first place? After all we could have just been playing along to begin with. Though now we can guess what you and your friends were doing out here Naruto's eyes slowly grew wide for a brief moment as he realized his mistake before he gritted his teeth. You're not really bright, are you? I mean it takes both cunning and illusion to be an effective ninja. Please he scoffed I can still handle the two of you just fine he yelled confidently as he stabbed his left hand. He screamed in pain as soon as the tip dug in and then he twisted it making him scream even louder. Damn Sakura muttered as she gave battle cry and charged straight at the black haired girl and sent one of her power packed punch straight to her face, only for her to grab her arm for a brief second, spin and elbow Sakura on the forehead. Ow Sakura yelled before the girl dropped backwards on her hands and pressed both her feet on Sakura's abdomen while she was stunned. What's the matter, Pinkwad? I thought you were a ninja she spat with a glee. Oh Sakura said as she stood up just keep talking bitch. It's Ayumi you bitch. Hanada couldn't believe it, she would jab the red-headed twins with her gentle fist and then they would poke each other in such explicit manners, not sexually mind you, and somehow their chakra network would be open again. Wow that's began one twin, awesome finished the other twin with a smile. Jin, she can block our chakra network said the first. Why yes Jun, ID say she's from the Hyuga clan, a clear forehead said Jin she must be from the main branch. Oh yes said Jun good form too both in figure and in stance. Hanada rushed them again and jabbed Jin two times in the arm and three times on the side before she ducked what seemed to be a poke from Jun and jabbed him six times on the back before she backed away to a reasonable range. Ow that's very painful, Jun Jin said as he poked said person on the back while said person poked him on the upper arm. Yes, very, this is why I prefer your gentle touch he said as slid his finger up Jin's arm earning a small whimper from him. Jun not here, despite their weird conversation that constantly baffled Hanada and caused her to blush, she was able to catch on to their attack acupuncture? Similar Jun began, but different finished Jin, why why you open the chakra networks, but the way you the way you strike, you can only open them. And with a gentle touch Jun said as he prepared himself, a lot more gentle when compared to the gentle fist, then they both charged at her. Hanada was able to dodge their attacks but when she attacked they were able to counter and poke her left arm. After she got a good distance she noticed what they did. She then began to block her own chakra network Why you open up chakra pathways to the point where it would overflow and cause an imbalance as well as tighten the muscle if not treated properly. Wow, for a girl like yourself, you're very clever. Very, why? Ino whined loudly why is it that most of the cute guys are evil? Well let's face it. Darlin said the blonde guy coolly as he ran his hand through his combed hair all the girls like bad boys stressing out the Z instead of the S. Hey, Eno yelled as she was suddenly enraged and pointed a finger at him that's just a dirty stereotype. Then she whispered to herself though that happens to be true in my case. Gya! Ran in their ears as Naruto's cry of pain became audible. Naruto Sakura said as she tried to look at the boat only to dodge an attack from Ayumi. Pay attention bitch. Then she turned to look at the blonde guy Irata. Don't just stand there like a pussy, do something. Leave me alone. He yelled back as he pulled out a scroll I do things in my own pace. Naruto Hinata said as she used her Byakugan to see that Naruto stabbed himself. Then she yelled HYA. As she dodged combination attack from Jun and Jin. Looks like Sensei began Jun, is having fun finished Jin. Well that wasn't fun Hidan said as he stared at Naruto. Exactly what was the point of that? Kakuzu asked with a raised brow as he stood firm. I think the fucking brat cracked Hidan stated as he only prepared his weapon to defend against whatever a crazy Jinshiki would do. Then Naruto started chuckling which caught both of their attention then again. Maybe it's his form of calming the fuck down. Did you assholes forget already? Naruto asked as his blood dripped on the deck. Though he was talking to both of them with full attention, Naruto failed to notice the way Hidan looked at the blood with a grin that grew wider and wider with each drop, were in eel infested waters. Then he withdrew his kanai and placed his bleeding hand over the edge of the boat curled it into a fist and let the blood drip into the ocean, 
now who said I wasn't cunning? He Dan suddenly burst out laughing you fucking retard. He Dan yelled almost historically, we're on a boat you fucking dumb ass. What good are a bunch of fucking eels gonna do? Nah on the fucking ship? Naruto just chuckled which put two Akatsuki members on edge even more a ninja doesn't tell their enemy what they're going to do. Exactly. Naruto gasped as he heard the voice from the railings. Then white hand just lashed out from railings and grabbed his bleeding hand then a white humanoid creature with green hair and only a left eye emerged with it as well ha 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 ha. Laughed the white humanoid thing you know Kakuzu and Hidan, and now you know me, white Zetsu said white Zetsu with so much joy. Naruto just looked at him with wide eyes ew. What the hell are you, Dadbeo? White Zetsu's hand felt so, smooth and, weird. It sent a spine crawling tingle down his neck. Naruto quickly threw a punch at Zetsu only for him to jump up high to dodge it and land near Kakuzu and chuckle. Well aren't you rude, I was only introducing myself said white Zetsu with a weird smile plastered on his face. Yeah well, all I have to know is if you're Akatsuki or not so that I can kick your ass. Okay. Now I know you're fucktarded Hidan said there's three of us and one little bitch named you. Do the fucking math you retarded fuckwad. We got you covered and those fucking bitches you call clones are weak as fuck. That's because I was just getting warmed up Naruto lied I can take all three of you on without breaking a sweat. Shadow clone jutsu. He yelled as he crossed his fingers and then was covered by a large puff of white smoke. Then 30 clones jumped out and began their attack with their battle cry. Bring it on bitches. Hidan yelled in excitement as he charged straight into the cloud and jumped while he prepared his weapon to bring it down on whatever foe he could hit and on his way down he took took out two clones, one with his tricycle scythe and one with his feet, after that he was quickly surrounded by five clones while the twenty-five more charged at both white Zetsu and Kakuzu. He's got guts, it'll give him that, and his usage of clones are unique Kakuzu said as he sidestepped a few attacks while he redirected three attacks which took out six clones, but it's annoying. For you maybe said white Zetsu as he dodged few attacks and jumped into the smoke Kakuzu created by destroying the clones but it isn't for me. The clones quickly surround both Kakuzu and the cloud of smoke, then as soon as the cloud of smoke disappeared, Kakuzu let out a him as he noticed he was surrounded, alone. What the one of the clones let out where'd he go? Muahahaha. Some clones turned to look at Hidan who just who was staring at a clone who was struggling to stand up only for Hidan to stump on its head destroying the clone into a puff of white smoke. Even though Hidan seemed well, okay. He seemed well enough for a crazy psychopath, he still had a bruise on his left cheek, a bit blood leaking from his nose, and a bump on the left side of his forehead that seemed to be swelling this shit's fucking easy. Yeah, it is Kakuzu mentally agreed a little too easy. Kakuzu, unlike most shinobis, has had the luxury, or curse, of living for a very long time, after living for about a century. He learned a few things and one of them was a new sense of reasoning. He took another gander at the clones and their attack. They all have that stab wound on their hands he observed but none of them are bleeding. Kakusu began to dodge another barrage of attacks only to notice another odd thing. All of them have toolkits, so then why aren't they using kanais, shurikens, or even matsubichi spikes? He dodged a few more attacks before he stomped his foot on a clone's head. Dispelling it, did a back flip and kicked another clone. He quickly punched another clone while he let a few threads come out his other arm and stab two more clones. Effectively dispelling them, if this brat spent a couple of years training with a sonin he elbowed clone rushing his left a clone. As the clone stumbled one step, Kakuzu kept his momentum and did a low sweep. Because the clone managed one step back he was about to take another when Kakuzu did the low sweep. Meaning he had one foot on the ground, since Naruto didn't have a good footing. The sweep and managed to get his foot off the ground and his body falling to the side. But Kakuzu didn't stop there, he quickly grabbed the blonde clone's foot as his head hit the deck and did a quick a spin to gain some momentum and threw the clone at another one that was charging him. Clone connected to clone and they both dispelled since he's not using jutsus his skill in taijutsu should be superb. And yet his taijutsu skill is about average, he turned to see a group of clones, all growling at him. They soon braced to go rush him only to be sliced into a large puff of smoke, ha 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 ha. Hidan laughed out hysterically, come on bitches. Give me a fucking challenge. This time his right sleeve was ripped off. There were two Naruto's left, one took a step forward and brow at his fist up and said oh yeah. 
Well I ain't done yet. He quickly got in position and had the hand sign formed and just about to yell his jutsu out when the other Naruto came from behind and put him in a chokehold. The Naruto quickly pulled one arm behind the other Naruto's back and forced him onto the wooden deck while continuing to choke him. Guess who a familiar voice said to the Naruto? After that the Naruto that was choking the other quickly warped and extended its body before it turned pale white, the blonde hair dyed into a leafy green color and one of its eyes shrunk, it's me, sang out white Zetsu with a toothy smirk on his face. Fucking told ya you were retarded Hidan said as he approached the blonde while resisting the urge to kill said blonde. Kakuzu just kept staring at the blonde with confusion, something didn't feel right, Hidan was right in front of the blonde that was almost passed out from oxygen deprivation raised a foot as he yelled take this bitch. Before he stomped down hard on his face, then the body exploded into smoke, D-A-F-U-Q. Hidan yelled as White Zetsu landed on the deck with a confused look on his face. Splash. Then all members snapped their heads to the nose of the ship, where the cannon was that fired the hook with a cable attached to the other ship, was being the key word, two more Naruto stood right where it used to be, and one of those clones was bleeding from the hand. Kakuzu noticed that there wasn't any blood trails leading to where the two Naruto's were at now. I get it Kakuzu said earning the attention of his two fellow companions, he then chuckled, it's also amusing, he used the smoke cloud he created as cover while he jumped overboard and ran around the hull of the ship, then, while his clones distracted us, he pushed the grappling cannon overboard, he also ordered his clones not use any jutsus or weapons because he was afraid that he would accidentally kill us and lose any potential information on her or the Akatsuki. The bitch? Queen Zetsu said quickly, shut the fuck up, either fucking ways, what the fuck is that fucktard trying to do? Hidan asked as he readied his weapon to strike. We're on the waves and winds, Hidan said white Zetsu the other boat seems to be running on an engine, this means that both of our ships are separating from each other simultaneously. Again, the fucks will that do? For him Kakuzu began nothing, maybe an assurance that we won't get his his little friends for a while, but for us that means we can be a little looser. That's right White Zetsu said as he prepared to go on the defense, the two Naruto's had shifted their attentions on them so long as one ship is still working and the Jinchurikis are still alive. We can a little more fun Hidan said as he caught on with a smirk, then it was replaced with a confused look, hey wait a minute, I can't do anything that could potentially destroy a ship, how about you Zetsu? Nope, besides Taijutsu, I can only mimic chakra and appearances. Then how the fuck is this a fucking advantage for us? Because this means I can be a little bit more loose Kakuzu said as he smirked beneath his mask and adjusted his pink turban. Fuck you. That only works for you, dickwad. Here he comes said the white Zetsu with a little glee in his voice. The Naruto's had apparently multiplied from 2 to about 40 of them, and this time, they pulled out Kanai's. And this time's, he's serious Kakuzu chuckled out, all the clones quickly rushed them giving out large battle cries, then they jumped to their targets, 10 clones jumped at White Zetsu, 15 on Hidan, and 15 on Kakuzu, the second the clones landed, Kakuzu quickly used a jutsu, he quickly formed a seal before he sucked a huge amount of air and yelled wind style, wind pressure. All the Naruto's gave a gasp as they were all blown back by a great force of wind, even some of the deck came off, multiple popping sounds could be heard as the clones collided with the upper deck, leaving a large thick white smoke covering the area where clones landed. The hell the blonde grunted out as he and a bunch of other clones that survived stood up. Not that this isn't fun fucktard he heard the silver haired man say as he moved to where Naruto stabbed himself but I want to feel the fucking thrill of killing. So I am going to fucking end this. Naruto saw the man dip his scythe into the small pool of blood and then brought it to his lips and licked it with a sickening smirk, after that he took his scythe and stabbed himself in the gut. Um, exactly what was the point of that Naruto yelled with a smirk, he's probably an idiot a clone yelled or he cracked remarked another, Naruto knew some people were crazy but this was just new, then he heard a chuckle before it turned into a madman's laughing cackle, he then made a circle with his foot and used the blood that was spilling out of him, after that he started to make a triangle. How has he not passed out from blood loss yet? Naruto thought as he saw the scene transpire before him, then, after Hidan was done making the blood triangle inside the circle of blood, his skin began to slowly turn black with white bone markings, much to Naruto's astonishment, not black people black, but literally black. Um, 
Am I crazy or did his skin really turn black? He asked no one in particular. If you're crazy then I am crazy said a clone yeah I saw it too. Said another me too. Added another. Ya yeah, fuck like that. He Dan yelled at the clones as he raised his scythe to his face then you'll fucking love this you damn masochist. He suddenly pulled the scythe down while cutting his cheek. At that same instant Naruto grabbed his cheek as he let out a surprised yell of pain as his clones exploded simultaneously leaving a few puffs of smoke. Well how about that Kakuzu said looks like Hidan's curse can be useful other than killing people after all. Yes it does seem to not only affect the person who's cursed but also his clones, with an opponent like the Kyubi Jinshuriki, it's very effective said White Zetsu with a grin. What the hell? Naruto sputtered out while he held his bleeding cheek, not did his cheek mysteriously get cut that was very, very similar to the one Hidan has but his clones were suddenly replaced by white clouds of smoke. There was absolutely no reason whatsoever for his clones to disappear. What the hell did you do? He yelled at the sliver haired man. You liked it? Have another fucking taste. He Dan then made another slice with his scythe, but this time it was on his upper left arm, close to his shoulder. Naruto suddenly felt pain in the exact area where He Dan cut himself and quickly griped it. A painful breath escaped his gritted teeth as he felt a familiar sensation of blood seeping out his wound. Laughter soon reached his ears and he didn't need to see to know it was coming from Hidan, doesn't it feel great? Can you feel it? Oh can you fucking feel it? Yes I can somehow feel it you asshole. Just what the hell did you do to me? In fact, how the hell are you not dead yet? Because the lord, Jashin, protects me. Ha was all Naruto could say as he continues to hear the man talk so passionate about a guy or girl named Jashin. Yes he protects me. He enables me to share my glorious pain with my victims and all he asks in return is complete chaos and a great slaughter. Thousands of victims just waiting to be sacrificed for his holiness. Buhahahahaha. What the fuck is wrong with you? Dadbeo was all Naruto could say with wide eyes. I ask the same exact question every day a voice from behind him said. Naruto was only able to manage a gasp before he was forced to roll off the upper deck. He landed down hard and just when he was about to push himself up. A pair of hands erected from decks and grabbed a hold of Naruto. You should have never lost sight of all of your enemies another familiar voice said. Then a face erected just a few inches from Naruto, it was White Zetsu. Okay. This is seriously getting creepy Naruto yelled as he moved his head back Dadbeo. He then head butted White Zetsu, stunning him long enough for Naruto to break free from his grasp. He rolled to the railings and stood up just in time to see Hidan rub his head in pain. Well brat it's time to fucking end it, he Dan then hooked his triple sickle scythe into the reelings and then reached into his pink robe and pulled a smile spike that extended into a larger one, so tell me where you fucking want it, would you like in the fucking thigh or the fucking knee? Um, neither? Both it is. He Dan brought the spike up and was about to bring it down when Naruto used the ring of the kanai he had in hand and rammed it into the back of his hand as hard as he could. He then heard a cry of pain come from the now black man with white skeletal markings. He had dropped the spike and was now holding the back of his hand S-O-N-N-A-V-A-B-I-T-C-H. He he Naruto chuckled through his gritted teeth, looks like it works both ways jackass. Of all days, why'd it have to be today? Jiraiya asked as he carried his small fish while walking to their room across the beach. Ramen ramen, ramen. Naruto chanted in a musical fashion a he carried that was slightly bigger than himself and way bigger than Jiraiya's fish. Alright kid, you won, so don't be a sore winner and rub it in Jiraiya said with a depressed sigh. Well that's your fault for losing Naruto said man, I can't wait for ramen, oh, maybe I can sell this fish and get some extra money for more ramen, dadbeo. Jiraiya groaned you and your ramen addiction, mom. Both males turned to see that a woman was currently lying on the sand with people crowding around her. Especially one girl Naruto recognized as the girl Jiraiya wanted him to date if he lost the bet. They both dropped their fish as they ran down to the woman. Excuse me Jiraiya boomed with a voice of command as people looked at him and made way for him. Naruto himself was not surprised. Sure the old guy was a big pervert, but he had his moments and this was looking like it would turn to be one of them. What happened Jiraiya said as he crouched down to women and started checking for a pulse. I don't know, I was sipping my drink for a minute and the next she was like that. Suddenly, Jiraiya gasped, he quickly moved the woman's head to a certain position and kissed her, Naruto was about to yell at him, 
but Jiraiya parted his lips from hers and banged pushing his hand on her chest. Come on come on Jiraiya muttered before he kissed the woman again, after that he began pumping his hands into her chest again, this time the woman spitted globs of water out. You all right Jiraiya asked, the woman nodded and then she spit more globs of water out. Pervy sage, what do you do Naruto whispered, CPR responded Jiraiya you do know what CPR is, right? E.H. Naruto trailed off, I guess I know what's up next in our training regime. Ow. Okay. What the hell is it with you and that whip? Ino yelled, right now she had a lot of cuts on her abdomen, her shirt ripped and torn, showing a lot of skin and blood, Arata just shrugged as he whipped his whip on the deck. I am just sexual deviant who likes domination, s there's something wrong with that. Stirree something wrong with that repeated Ino before she yelled. You're cutting me up, just wait till I get my hands on you. Oh I am waiting, believe me he said with a grin, I just can't wait for you to get close enough for me to get my hands on you, then I'll smother till ya pass out he said the last few words almost in a squeal, then I'll tie you to a bed, make sure you're bound all nice, tight and comfortable, then I'll cut you up till you start bleeding and crying, just begging me to stop, then fondle your breast as I choke with my ow. He suddenly ended being hit in the head with cup that originated from Ayumi. Quit it you freak. Ayumi then dodged a straight punch from Sakura. Hey you bitch. He turned to Ayumi what the hell are you doing. Then his eyes widened and then a rustled thump was heard. Murata turned his head to Ino's now collapsed body. See you fucking freak. You made that girl pass out. Now help me out with this bitch. S-O-N-N-A-V-A-B-I-T-C-H. They all heard come from a distance. What the hell Ayumi said as she dodged a kick, she backed up to the rails until she saw something she didn't like what the hell. The boat she came in was now far away from the boat she was on and it was moving away, our boat's getting away. Wait what? Said one of the twins as he stopped his lunge at Hinata who dodged anyway. Our boat's leaving inquired the other twin, fuck, Arata help me out with this. We need to jack this boat and get to ours. She was about to rush Sakura when suddenly she was whipped on the shoulder ow. Sakura smirked and rushed towards Ayumi while she was distracted and gave her an uppercut. She was sent flying upward before she came back down to the ocean. With a splash she was in the water, then her body floated up. Sakura took the time to look over the railing with Arata to see that she had quickly regained consciousness. She then began swimming to the boat and as soon as she touched the hull. She screamed. The water around her began to turn red, soon, eels began to come out of the water and make their way towards her, she continued to scream as the eels began to sink their teeth into her flesh and severe it from her body, blood poured out and continued to stain the sea red, and then the screams stopped, the eels continued to feast on her body, ripping, tearing, and crunching up her bones until nothing was left floating except for her now ragged black hair. Sakura swallowed a bit of vomit that was about leave her throat, Sure she expected to see people die in her line of work, especially as a medic nin, but to see people get devoured by sea creatures and knowing that it was your fault, not exactly what she had in mind, she turned to see Irata who struggling to hold down his vomit, but sadly he failed and puked over the rails. You okay? Sakura asked as she felt the need to vomit rise again, Irata looked at her with droopy eyes and seemed like he was about to say something when he puked again over the rails as his legs gave out and slid underneath him letting his knees hit the floor. No way, Arata betrayed us, said one of the twins, over time, everyone who was paying attention lost track of who's Jin and who's Jun. No Jun, that blondie is a Yamanaka, think about it, Arata usually whips Ayumi in the ass instead of her shoulder, he's done that ever since we pretended to be pirate nins explained the twin now known as Jin. Hum, that is true. So the blondie used that mind transfer jutsu thingy to take over Arata's body while he was distracted. Concluded Jun no wonder she was weak. One on one wasn't her forte. Wait said Arata. Air Eno as he, she finished puking. You're telling me you guys pretended to be pirates. And I am not weak. Yep they both yelled in unison as they dodged a few more attacks from Hinata. Well Jun began one twin. Well Jin said the other. Two against three can be pretty tricky and catching up to our boat requires we finish this fight quickly before it gets sticky. Looks like, began Jun, it's time for, continued Jin, then both twins finished together. Our secret technique. Both twins yelled as they jumped several steps back. Great, 
Now what are these quirky guys up to Sakura muttered, she had to admit, the conversations the two had were, weird to say the least, and not only that, they somehow managed to evade most of Hinata's attacks, and when do they get hit they can reopen their chakra network with some form of acupuncture, and then suddenly both guys took each other's shirts off showing how muscular and well formed their bodies were. Again Era Ino began why are all the hot guys evil? We're not evil began Jun, we just have a somewhat incontrollable impulse to kill people. Yeah, it's not our fault we were born this way, I mean we have to kill people, we got to. That's why we wanted to become Jashinist where our impulses would be welcomed. And that we would be able to kill Blondie here with a bit more purpose in our lives, besides I like the way you were born, Jun. I like the way you were born too, Jin. Yeah well began Eno with a flushed face you psycho twins can shut it. We're taking you guys down before you kill anyone, and quit calling me Blondie. Wait began Jin this time, twins? Jun finished as both him and Jin looked at each other. Oh yeah, we do look like twins, don't we? We sure do. Why you're not twins? Hinata asked as she slowly made her way back to Sakura, though she seemed fine. Hinata was actually in quite a deal of pain. Every time one of the two red heads landed a blow on her, they opened up a chakra point, which forced her to seal a chakra point to balance out the chakra point the red heads opened. Nope said Jin, when we met each other we were complete strangers. I myself am from the land of snow said Jun. And I am from the land of hot springs, but I was born in the land of snow before I was adopted. My parents told me that I had a brother out there somewhere, could it be? Are we? Brothers? They both yelled in unison, then they both hugged each other and started jumping up and down while chanting in unison we're brothers. We're brothers. We're brothers. Which caused everyone who looked at the scene to sweat drop a bit. Well now let's celebrate by began Jun once more, killing everyone on board with our secrete technique finished Jin. Needless to say that this statement caused everyone to put their guards up for whatever craziness the now realized twins were about to do. Both twins pulled out some sort of cylinder-shaped containers and popped the lid. Soon they pulled out needles. Everyone was ready to dodge. Well Eno was going to run to her body and use Arata as a meat shield, but instead of throwing them at the girls, the twins started to put the needles inside themselves. WHWH what are you guys doing Hinata asked as she saw the twins sink the long needles into their skin. We're going to show you began Jun as his muscles started twitching. The true power of acupuncture yelled Jin. Then the two slim red-headed twin boys with well-formed muscles suddenly expanded, their muscles grew ten times their normal size, the shorts they were using expanded and ripped, and in the end, two red-headed hulking behemoths were left standing. What the fuck was all Ino was able to say through Urata's mouth? What the fuck was all Naruto was able to say? All around his body were other bodies growing off his body, one thing though, they were pale white, what the hell is this? There was body growing off his left arm and on his right arm, one from his back and one from his chest. It's my spore jutsu, sing-songed white zetsu as he slowly emerged from the wooden deck, I casted it on you when we shook hands the memory of zetsu emerging from the railings and grabbing his hand quickly flashed through Naruto's mind, I guess now I am rubbing off on you. Huh, another useful trick, I assume they feasted on his chakra observed Kakuzu. They still are, it took a while for the spores to soak up enough chakra to even begin to form, but they're early. That's because this kid uses chakra like water when he makes those clones of his. Thanks for making sure I was fine you fucking assholes bellowed Hidan as he rubbed his wrist. I ain't done yet. Naruto yelled as the weight of the extra bodies forced him down to his knee. You are fucking joking. You can barely move shit wad. It's fucking over, and he'll make sure it is. Naruto was able to see Hidan crouching to pick up the spike he dropped. Crap ran through his head, his wrist still hurt and he injured his right knee when he evaded Kakuzu's last attack. And right now the bodies that were growing off him were fully formed and had him pinned down because he tried to collect chakra before he heard Zedza's bit. The ones that grew off his arms kept them restrained and apart from each other, the ones from his chest and back kept him on the flat on the deck and legs from moving, earlier but the bodies made sure to keep his hands away from each other, worse was that his left hand had recently stopped bleeding, but he could barely move it, now what do I do? And then suddenly his whole body felt like someone covered it with ice, time seemed to stop, Hidan was still on his way to standing up from crouching to pick his weapon, the Zetsus growing off of his body were still restraining him, noise became non-existent, 
and all other forms of stimuli were gone. The only feeling he felt was the cold, and then searing hot pain emerged from his thigh, exactly from his pocket, the pocket that had the blue coin. What followed next was a bright light, not completely white though, there was a few red, blue, and green streaks of light that came from the center of the white light, green streak went down right sideways, blue went down left sideways, and red went straight up the middle, the streaks of light expanded until everything was white, the white soon faded to reveal a bunch of white stones. That's amazing Megumi-sama Naruto heard from his left, he turned to look a little boy who seemed familiar to him, please do it again, Plia see he begged. Then suddenly Naruto chuckled, only it wasn't his chuckle, it wasn't even a male chuckle, he could feel his hand move to his mouth to in order to stifle the chuckle, but what he felt vibrate within him, was the voice of a female, oh, alright her delicate voice came out of his lips, it was like he was reliving someone else's memory, he then brought his hands to up and found that they weren't his, they were pale and the nails were painted pink. In front of his, her hands, was a small ink container. She brought her hands over it and slowly, to him, made a few hand seals, but it was probably too fast for the boy, and not only that, but he could even feel the amount of chakra she was using, lost art. 3D seal she yelled and then the liquid suddenly started moving, she ran through another set of seals, they were fast but slow enough for Naruto to see the seals and feel the amount or ratio of chakra collected in her hands, but this time, the name surprised him, Jinshuriki. Endless seal. And then the black liquid began taking shape with a familiar spiral on the center of a star that then expanded into triangles of what Naruto could tell were simple kanjis and squiggly lines that ended with pointy triangles at the end of each arm of the star. She then picked up a stone and threw it in the air as hard she could. The stone went up before it began to fall back down, she lifted her star seal thingy that resembled a four-pronged shuriken up above her head, seal. She yelled and then the spiral at the center expanded causing the seal to expand and look like a giant flat shuriken right before the stone fell on it and was sealed. The seal reverted back to its original shuriken-like size, she then flipped the seal to the other side, she looked in front of her to see a paper bull's eye in the distant. Naruto could feel her wet her lips as she took aim, closing her left eye and aiming with her right, she used the spiral as some sort of precision dot before she adjusted the spiral to point a bit upwards before she yelled release. And the seal expanded once more and released the stone, he watched as the stone sealed through the air and then hit the bull's eye dead in the center. That's so cool the boy practically yelled, you know the girl's voice came out of his mouth as he, she smiled you're easily impressed she moved seal above the container that was recently used to house the ink she used and then in a few seconds, the seal melted into the container. Yeah I know but you can easily do jutsus and stuff without even making your hand touch. You can even do some with a single hand and I think that's very cool the kid said as he tapped his index fingers together with a small blush on his face. It was then that Naruto started paying attention. I can she admitted through his lips but it's because I know the jutsu completely. You see, hand seals are used to focus and distribute the chakra you collect. Like a seal, the hand seals then release the chakra in unique way that alters the natural world using the already existing elements in ways that are bit too unrealistic she calmly explained. So when you used a jutsu, she further explained you feel the chakra being more you use it, the more you become familiar with the way chakra is distributed and released, then, if you're experienced enough, you can pull off a jutsu with one hand, you can even do it without hand seals if you really know how to distribute it, do you understand? I kinda get it said the kid but I don't understand why you're showing me all this. You and me both Naruto thought to himself, he was sure now that whoever this Megumi was, he was reliving her memory, but how and for what reason? And besides that, where had he heard that name before? That's because one day, she began as he felt her hand begin to dig into whatever pockets she had and pulled out a small circular object I will give you this to protect she then showed him a blue coin with a spiral. A blue coin? He asked but he felt Megumi shake her head no not just a blue coin, it's a special coin. This coin will contain both my mine and my branch's legacy, and before I disappear from this world, I will give it to you for you to protect it, hero. Hero, that name struck Naruto hard, and suddenly the memory of the old man who gave him a blue can ran through his head, Hero Midori. Naruto yelled in head this kid was Hero Midori. So then this Megumi must be Megumi Uzumaki. You will protect this coin and only give it to a person with the same surname as me, that is, if you think he or she has a kind soul. But began young hero I don't, I still don't understand. 
He suddenly felt Megumi kneel down next to Hiro though his body and placed a hand on his shoulder and I hope you never have to she whispered at least not the way I am afraid of. Uh, said Hiro not really sure what to say, it's okay if you don't understand yet, Hiro, but, she suddenly hugged him I am afraid of what lies in the future, I am afraid of what might become of Uzo no Kuni, land of whirlpools. Okay, but what does this have to do with the jutsus you showed me? Cuz I felt like it way his, her honest reply, and then suddenly there was a bright light, and then Naruto found himself in the predicament he was in before the weird vision or, whatever the hell that was called. Get ready for a world of fucking pain ya fucking brat Hidan yelled with. Crap he muttered before the lesson Megumi told Hiro suddenly ran through his head, now or never he muttered as he concentrated on both of his hands, he collected just enough chakra to, to create enough clones to get the ones pinning him down off him, which was rather quick, and then he moved his hands as if they were together and performed his best jutsu, shadow clone jutsu. The clones suddenly appeared beside the other clones and immediately talked them to the ground, then quickly found that they didn't disperse, disappear, to turn to water, stone, or mud like regular clones. The Zetsu clones appeared to be real flesh and, maybe, blood clones, but the Zetsu clones were off him and that's what mattered if a bad-mouthing psychopath that could inflict damage on you by damaging himself was about to hurt himself with a spike. He pushed himself up and lunged himself at the silver-haired bastard, right arm already cocked back, and flung his fist right into Hidan's face, straight in the nose. Hidan let out a short cry as the force of the punch sent him flying backwards a few inches, unfortunately though, he was still on the blood seal, Naruto let out a short cry as he suddenly felt his own punch and was sent backwards a few inches and landed on his back. Al he said as he quickly rubbed his nose, when he was done he was greeted to the side of Kakuzu with his arm cocked back, no doubt ready to punch, he quickly rolled to the side and avoided the punch that went through the deck, sure. Using threads would have been easier but he needed to take the Jinchuriki alive, but the punch was a bit too hard, after Naruto stopped rolling he stood up in time to see the last of his clones get taken down by a group of Zetsu clones. Hum seems like the Kyubi Jinchuriki had few tricks up sleeves than we originally thought said one of the Zetsu in a nonchalant tone. So he can be serious Kakuzu thought as spared the clone a glance before he directed he gaze at the blonde in front of him, and this kid is getting more interesting by the minute. He created clones without his hands touching together, but he still performed the hand signals, not exactly an easy thing to do. By this time Hidan was already up rubbing his face and cursing to the whatever god there was that he was going to kill the little blonde fucker or he was going to murder an entire village, and not entirely for fun either, alright you blonde fucking piece of shit. I've fucking had it with you. He yelled as H moved inside the seal he created, he brought the spike he brought up with him and outstretched his arm aiming the tip of the spike to his chest, obviously aiming for the heart, his orders were to take the Jinchuriki alive, sure, killing them then dealing with the weakened biju would be difficult, but doable. Hidan wait. One of the Zetsu said in an attempt to stop him, but it was too late, he had already plunged the spike into his stomach with a smirk, then he gasped as he saw the colors of his hands, they had already reverted back to his natural skin color instead of black with bone markings. I tried to warn you, Heh <laughs> they heard Naruto chuckle you see. I made a small cut into that seal of yours with the back of my foot. But then he frowned without that seal of yours, you're not immortal, he couldn't see Hidan, his eyes were focused on both Kakuzu and Zetsu and his clones that seemed to be legit clones, so when he heard a thump of a body, he released a heavy sigh from his nose, killing still didn't sit right with him, at most he has killed, directly anyway, only a few people, but it was one of the things he accepted when he became a ninja. Sometimes you have to get your hands dirty one down, two to go. Don't count me just fucking yet you fucking brat. What, Naruto gasped as he looked at Hidan to find him standing up again and pulling the spike from his chest, the one that pierced his heart, but but you're dead. Ha ha. A gift from my god, Lord Jashin. He made me immortal. And he made me to kill. He then pulled the scythe off the rails and put the sharp end right next to his neck, if you don't believe me, fucking believe this. He then sliced his own head off with a lot of force. The head came rolling to Naruto with a shit-eating grin on its face, boo. Ah! Naruto yelled as he kicked the head, shiti. Hidan yelled as his head was sent flying and hitting the railing and almost falling overboard ow. You fucker! Hidan yelled as he hit the deck. From the corner of his eye, Naruto caught something. He quickly turned to see what it was only to find Kakuzu was with his arm pulled back. Shit! 
Naruto cried as he tried to protect his chest with his arms, but it was too late, Kakuzu delivered fast punch and fused with some sort of chakra. Naruto had never been hit with a sludge hammer, but he knew this would at least be somewhere near the equivalent, either way, you ended up with a few broken bones right. Naruto hit the deck hard again, something fell out of his pocket and it blew up into a cloud of white smoke, but Kakuzu could still hear Naruto bounce a bit on the deck before the sound stopped. You were finally useful, for once, Hidan Kakuzu stated as he observed the blonde Jinchuriki's motionless body. But Kakuzu said one of the Zetsu clones didn't you use Genjutsu on Hidan to make him cut his own head off? Yeah, what's your point? Why didn't you use it on the Kayubi Jinchuriki so that he can immobilize himself asked another clone. My Genjutsu only works on people who are mentally unstable, like Hidan he explained. I see, say, Hidan's been really quiet for a moment now said another clone. Um think that's why said the other clone as he pointed in the direction of where Hidan's head was kicked. Hum said Kakuzu as he turned, then his eyes widened what, right in front of him was one Naruto Uzumaki muffling Hidan head and it seemed as if he was tiptoeing or something. Ah crap he muttered, wait, if you're there then who's said one of the clones as they all turned to the Naruto that was lying on the floor, then the body suddenly exploded into Hidan's headless corpse that was still bleeding from the neck. Substitution. The smoke Kakuzu said I was skeptical that it came out on his own, you set it off to blow didn't you? Uh, yes. I totally did that Naruto said with a bit of uncertainty in his voice. In reality, that smoke bomb did in fact set off by accident. It was actually meant to scare the crap out of Shikamaru while he was in the shower. The smoke would come from the vent and then Shikamaru would assume something bad would happen and run out of the bathroom butt naked. But since his smoke bomb went off, he quickly used substitution and swapped his body with Hidan's headless body, the head saw him, so without puking or screaming, he quickly ran and picked up the head and used his hand to muffle Hidan, and at the moment he was debating his next move, taking into consideration all the moves his opponent have done so far and the extent of his injuries, then suddenly, all but one white zetsu fell on the floor. Hmm? Hidan let out as he looked at the bodies. Sorry the only standing white zetsu said with a shrug it turns out that they had only absorbed enough chakra to last them this long. Well began Kakuzu I can't exactly blame them, they were of very good quality, so it only figures that they have some sort of drawback. Ao Naruto yelled as he dropped Hidan's head, Hidan had bitten Naruto's hand, even bit off piece of his flesh. U-S-O-N-N-A-V-A-B-I-T-C-H, you made me cut my own head off, it'll fucking kill you. Ah Naruto yelled again, sure he held the head but he was fighting back the feeling he was getting from his stomach, so naturally he kicked it. Wait, no, Hidan yelled before was kicked. Ketch yelled the white zetsu as he caught Hidan's head. Ah crap Naruto said as he grabbed his hand, I guess things aren't over yet said Kakuzu as he plucked Hidan's head from white zetsu's arms via the long hair. Ow, 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 you fucker, my hair. Naruto knew he was running out of time and if the guy really was immortal, then maybe all they had to do was to sew his head back on the body, though Naruto doubted that would work because of the severed nerves or the vein going to his head or something like that, and the fact that the silver psychopath would inflict damage on his opponents by damaging himself was something Naruto didn't want happening to him again. So Naruto brought his hands together and focused every drop of chakra he could into the technique, multi-shadow clone jutsu. He yelled as a bunch of clouds of white smoke appeared out of nowhere, the smoke surrounded Kakuzu, Zetsu, and Hidan. Hell, the entire boat was filled with the damn blondes. Well, this is going to take a while Kakuzu said as all the clones began to charge him. Naruto was breathing heavily, he didn't know how much chakra it took to make one of those real clones white Zetsu made earlier. But he knew each one took a lot out of him, he leaned his back against the wooden walls of the boat and let out a groan. After Naruto had created all the clones, he quickly ran inside the door he saw when he was outside. Figuring that if the Jinchuriki was on board the boat, he or she would be inside, Naruto could just imagine it, all of his clones dying by the hands of both Hidan and Kakuzu, he cursed the fact that he had such a vivid imagination, normally, when he didn't think about his clones, he would imagine anything, but when he does think about them and how they get dispelled, it's always so vivid like it was actually him. He started moving when he sensed a few clones dispel, he could always sense when his clones destroyed, even in which direction they were destroyed in, 
Why couldn't all Jinchurikis have the ability to find each other? Naruto questioned in his head. Naruto quickly checked every room he came upon. So far he found a kitchen with a small square table, rooms, what he figured by the smell was an outhouse, and a room that had a bunch of whips and other painful things that led Naruto to believe it was sex torture room or something. Damn it where is she not oh cursed? He had checked all the rooms and he didn't find anyone. He kept moving when he found hatch that goes down to what he assumed was the ship's lowest deck. Then he felt a huge wave of his clones get destroyed. And then he smelled smoke which led him to believe that one of the Akatsuki members used some sort of fire jutsu. Crap I am running out of time. Naruto made sure to add in a few clones with enough chakra to make more clones but even with them. Time is limited. What's our bitches biju? Hidan's voice echoed through his head. That's how he knows it's female Jinchuriki the have captive. Well that and he was slightly able to hear Kakazu's voice after he pushed the cannon with the cable attached to the hook that's embedded into the ship his friends were on. So he assumed that the Jinchuriki must be on the lower deck and that it's a girl. When he opened up the hatch and jumped down, he immediately noticed the darkness. The air was warm and damp and had a foul smell to it. The deck inside the ship was dark enough already even with a few windows opened. But the lower deck was pitch black, the only source of light came from the hatch it opened. Meaning it wasn't much, Naruto was forced to look around with his hands in front of him until he got the idea to use his half-assed Rasengan. The one he can do without a clone, as light source. It wasn't much, but time was short and he needed to bounce, that's right, Naruto finally realized he was outmatched, did he like it? Did he want to run away? Hell no, he wanted to stay and fight, but he couldn't summon any of the toads, he was out in the middle of the sea and there was a chance he could accidentally kill the Jinchuruki. Where are you Naruto said as he kept searching before he found a barrel, huh? It was opened and filled with black stop wait this is. He trailed off as he picked up a bit of the black stuff and found that it was a bit powdery. Then he moved his Rasengan forward and found a lot of barrels he assumed were filled with this black stuff. Well they are pirates Naruto said to himself. Then he gasped as a felt a huge wave of clones get destroyed. Hell he even felt the vibration of the attack. What the hell are they doing up there Naruto questioned out loud as he shivered. He could only imagine the horror his clones went through, vividly. Crap I need to find her quickly. He yelled as he began to move around frantically. He would make clones but he was low on chakra as it is and didn't want to have to wait around and gather chakra just to create shadow clones. Knowing his opponents are S-rank ninjas, he needed every advantage he could get, so he just wandered from one end to another as his chakra supply slowly refilled. Granted it was faster than others, but still slow and it was partly due to Naruto's improper control of chakra. He was trying to hurry because he really wasn't sure how many clones he made but he knew he was quickly running of both clones in time. Not here he muttered, damn it, where the hell is she? He kept moving around, looking for her, then he found her. A figure barely visible through the lights of the half-assed Rasengan. As he got closer he could tell that she was chained to the hull of the ship and brutally beaten. Bastards he muttered as he got closer to her sender figure, on closer inspection he noticed something around her lips force fed he questioned. Then he noticed a syringe along with silver briefcase next to her. He picked up the siren and noticed that it was empty, pretty much getting the picture of what happened. He began to look around for a key or something to get her unchained. Ino dodged another attack from Jun while carrying her own weight, apparently the twins knew about the Yamanaka clan and tried to kill her, well not the body she was using, Arata, but her actual body which was unconscious at the moment which she was carrying, there go, her own weight. Damn it, when you need a mon's help, they're never around Ino complained as she dodged another blow. Oi came Jun's now deep voice that sounds really weird when you say that through Arata's tender lips. Well your voice sounds really weird, Eno threw back with an index finger being pointed at him not to mention, you comments make you sound weird and gay. Well I can't help it Jun said with a muscular shrug it's the effect our secret technique, as for the comments, I am metrosexual. Eh, yep, both Jin and I heard that girls are into twins with homosexual tendencies, and that the same holds true for the opposite sex. That's got to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard, Eno yelled with all of Arata's might. Though I think that if you weren't overdoing it or fighting me, I might have been interested, Eno muttered. Ow oh, damn it! Yelled Jin as he was hit by a punch from Sakura that landed on his lower back as well as gentle fist to the neck that freaking hurt. 
It's no good Hinata said as she dodged a swipe from Jin by jumping backwards where Sakura met her. I can't black his chakra network, let alone harm him. His muscles are just too thick. Yeah I know, and my punch barely moved him, I swear. Chakra or not, it's impossible for scrawny guys like them to gain so much body mass. According to Hinata, the twins were able to open certain chakra points with extreme precision and enough force to release an unnatural amount of balanced chakra that greatly increased their overall muscle density, so basically, their technique was simply something so impossible, but it still worked and turned them into hulking monsters with very thick muscles. Damn it how do we beat them? Sakura yelled as she pulled her hair, so far they've been at it for a good while, she spared a glance at the ship that was a mere minuscule dot in the distance, the ship Naruto was on is now in the distance, even if she ran all hyped up with food pills, she would be too burned out to put up a decent fight, that is if she caught up to the vessel, for all she knew, they could have just planned to have ditched their crew and just sail away with Naruto. Then she noticed how Jin was struggling a bit, she looked at Jun who was currently resting on the wall of the ship that led inside the ship. It didn't take a genius to figure it out, now she was sure that her theory was correct, she knew what their weakness was. Chakra exhaustion. Sakura announced as she caught everyone's attention, you guys can only open chakra pathways but you can't close them, and this technique of yours requires a balanced stream of chakra to keep those muscles intact, because of this, both of you are forcing your body to squeeze out every bit of chakra you guys have in order to sustain your muscles. The twins gasped at her revelations and not only that, it's hard for you guys to stop this technique, so I bet you guys have to meditate to lower your chakra levels to point where you can get the pins out or you guys wait until you run out of chakra and pass out, not to mention that those oversized muscles burn more energy and require a huge intake of oxygen, which from the looks of it, you can't exactly supply. Crap she figured it out Jun said as stood straight again as he took another deep breath of air. We need to finish this quickly Jin said quickly as he took in another deep breath. Indeed a new voice said as everybody turned to see the voice's origin. Shino Hinata called out in surprise as she saw said person by the door. Wait there's more of them Jun said in surprise before he heard a roar, he turned to look at the source only to find a white and black lion attacking him, what the hell? He yelled as the lion began gnawing on his arm, he yelled as he punched the beast only to find a puddle of black liquid left in its place. Sai Sakura yelled as she spotted the pale guy with his brush and scroll out. Hello Pinky Sai said with a weak smile and a weak wave. Sai, he'll deal with you later Sakura said angrily. Yes, we must first deal with two soulless gingers. Hey, gingers have souls. Jun yelled as he charged Sai only for a swarm of bugs to rush him. Ginger 1 taken care of, now for Ginger 2 Sai said as he began to draw something really fast super beast imitating drawing. And then suddenly a bunch of giant black and white snakes jumped out of Sai scroll. Hey don't call what the hell. He yelled as a bunch of snakes coiled around him, more specifically his chest, he tried to break free, and he was successful if the ink on his arms weren't evidence enough. But Sai kept making more and more snakes, but at an unusually slow pace. I could use a little help Sai said I am feeling a bit under the weather. Sakura, getting the hint, ran to the redhead with snakes and punched him on the legs, repeatedly. Hey quit it. Jin yelled as he tried to kick Sakura only for her to jump and deliver a high kick to his chin. Ow. Hanada rushed and delivered a blow to the back of his neck oow. Okay, that stung. Hanada that want work Sai said as he kept drawing necks have muscles too and his muscles got stronger, just make as many cuts as you can. Ow. My ass. Jun yelled after Ino whipped his ass, literally, Jun was trying to squish the bugs on him but they kept evading his overly muscular arms, Shino was doing his best by directing his bugs to move to a certain direction to avoid causing any damage to the ship. That makes sense Sakura said blood carries oxygen, no blood no oxygen she said as she pulled out a kanai and Hinata did the same, Ino ran to her body and grabbed her kanai from her body's ninja pouch, Sai, think you can make blood sucking leeches? Ill try, shish shit Jin said as he struggled to break free because the ink snakes are wrapped around tightly on his chest, his lungs barely have room to expand making it a bit hard to breath. Both Sakura and Hinata began to slash him in few soft spots. It'll take time to actually do progress but both girls were determined to stop the redhead at all cost. Sai began to create leeches along with his snakes except he sent the leeches to Jun whose muscles were starting to deflate, sure, 
Shino's chakra sucking had a hard time sucking out the muscles of its chakra, but at over time they did their job and softened the muscles enough for the ink leeches to suck his blood. Of course Sai sent one or two leeches every once in a while to the soft spots Hinata and Sakura found on Jin's muscles armor. Pretty soon the muscles on both twins began to deflate, and their body began to weaken, their muscles began to turn to normal, they groaned for a bit before they both got to their knees, within two minutes the twins were back to their normal selves, except the needles were missing, and finally they both hit the ground, and they were about as pale as Sai. TT they're dead began Hinata errant errant they? Sakura just put hand on Hinata's shoulder and said just don't think about it, they were psychopaths that felt an uncontrollable need to kill people, people like you, me, Neji, and Naruto. Sai approached Jin's pale core and noticed wet pieces of clear paper rolled up like a needle, he picked one up, unrolled it, and held back a gasp. This is, say thoughts began, hey Eno yelled would someone mind tying me up? Oh Eno I didn't know you were like that Sai remarked with a fake smile as he crumpled the wet sheet into a ball and let drop. That's not what I mean and you know it she yelled with a blush and besides that, I am in guy's body who likes to cut girls up. So you would be okay being tied up in your own body then? Yes. Wait I mean no, by the way Shino began where is Naruto because my buds can't find him anywhere on the ship. Crap, Naruto is still on the other ship Sakura yelled. And with those Akasuki guys too Ino said as Sai gasped. Naruto. Hanada yelled as she quickly turned around and ran to the end of the ship. Hanada Wade Sakura yelled as she chased her, worried that maybe she was planning on jumping off the boat and following the other in eel infested waters. Everyone else followed behind after coming to the same conclusion as Sakura. Hanada you can't Ino began but Hanada cut her off. Look. Hanada pointed to the distance. Everyone squinted trying to find a ship or an orange enigma, so far their search came up empty, that is, until they saw something bouncing up and down the water, then they all began hearing something. I-H-Y, hey do you guys hear that Eno said, ek. No, trailed off Sakura as she put a hand over her eyes to see if she could see whatever Hinata was looking at. Ek, E-C-H, wait, I actually do hear it, is that a flying fish? Sai asked as he pointed to a figure that was bouncing up and down. No it's bouncing on the water Sakura said, no Shino began see the way it goes up and down at the same height while getting closer to us, it's jumping. Oh yeah I see it now Eno said as she squinted to the figure in the distance that was rapidly approaching them. Can anyone understand what that thing is saying? Him I believe it's saying Sai was going to finish but he was interrupted. Itchy. Well I was going to say hickey but I guess that works too. I see hy. Yelled the figure again. Okay now I can hear it Sakura said. I see hy. The figure yelled as it got closer, itchy, itchy, after a minute the figure started to become distinguishable. Wait, is that? Sakura trailed off as she began to recognize the figure. I see hy 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 I see hy. The figure jumped letting out a big I T C H Y Y Y Y Y. Before it landed on the ship, making it tilt a bit which caught everyone off guard and off balance and caused them all to land on their asses. When they recovered they were able to see the figure that lay before them, it was a giant toad they all recognized as Gamakichi, Ichi. It bellowed one last time before it disappeared into a cloud of smoke, then they all heard a loud thump followed by a groan, Naruto's groan to be more exact. Naruto. Hanada yelled as she rushed towards the smoke as everyone else followed in pursuit. The smoke cleared to reveal Naruto lying on his back with a girl on lying on top of him, and by the looks of it, she was unconscious. Naruto all you alright Sakura said as she got close to Naruto and when she looked at his hand she saw that it was covered with ink. Naruto groaned one last time Sakura Naruto said weakly as said person along with everybody else got next to him. I am here Naruto. But who is? She trailed off as she took a better look at the girl. The girl was roughly as tall as Naruto, young but probably as old as Neji, and she had blonde hair, her clothes were ripped and soiled with many stains and her body was covered in bruises, hell, her shirt was ripped to the point where you could see her right breast. Forget me Naruto gritted through his teeth, he himself wasn't looking too good either help her first. Naruto, who's the blonde girl Sai asked as he pointed to said girl. I isn't obvious he struggled to say she's the Jinshuriki those Akatsuki bastards captured. Kosapur Villa the smell of smoke covered the room. 
But it wasn't like that in the morning before she left. A tall woman with dark purple long hair that was braided down to her lower back. Had dark onyx eyes and tanned skin. She looked for the source of the smoke and she was not surprised when she found it. It was guy with a slight tan, black hair that looked like it was gelled back to look a bit spiky and he only had one eye, no eye patch. Right where his left eye should be there is a patch of skin and it kind of looks like a burn mark. The guy wore a black t-shirt and black shorts. He was currently sitting down on the room's table smoking a cigarette while drinking a mug of coffee and there seemed to be three more on the table. When she sat down he slid another mug towards her. Thanks she said as she took a sip of the mug and looked back at him. You had another nightmare about that night, didn't you? Even though it was asked as a question, it was more of statement. TCH the boy scoffed as he stood up and walked to his room. The woman just sighed as she took another sip of her coffee good thing that this one damn good cup coffee. She heard another door creak open and this time a bold guy with glasses wearing only boxers and a sweatshirt came out trembling. She watched him walk to the refrigerator and pull out a tomato. She took another sip of her coffee before she spoke. Nightmares about being force-fed ramen by an orange clown again? The guy simply nodded as he grabbed one of the mugs from the table and walked back to his room. She sighed again as she took another sip of her coffee, damn good coffee, and then she heard another door creak open. This time it was a girl with mint green hair wearing only a white nightgown. The girl has caramel skin and her hair was cut short, but it covered her eyes for some reason. She walked to the table and sat down and grabbed the last mug on the table. And then there were two the woman said as both her and the girl took a sip from their respective mugs. Let me guess the woman began choked again by the cosmic owl. The girl nodded. What the hell is a cosmic owl anyway? A, a an owl made of golden light. You know you can fix that nightmare issue by actually sleeping on a bed and not when the walls are on a tree. I know, but old habits die hard she said meekly. The woman sighed right. They both sat there in silence for a while. Geez, we're all united together again and none of you have smiled, not once. Thanks for watching.